I, I feel like I've been wrongly painted with this Sabonis thing. All right. <laughs> we'll we'll get to that. We're going. Welcome into the Insiders. I am James Ham. Joining me today, we have Chris Biederman from the Sacramento Bee and, of course, the Candlestick Chronicles. What's up, Chris? What's up, man? I appreciate you reaching out and, and, and having me taking a risk, honestly. This is my first ever appearance in a studio hosting a radio show for, for m multiple hours. I've done plenty of radio hits, but uh, I appreciate you sticking your neck out for me. All right. All right. I just, uh, hopefully Jesse has his finger on the dump button in case Chris says something. <laughs> Chris, if you don't cuss, you'll be just fine. All right. <laughs> That's right. As long as you don't say the bad words, we'll be okay. We can, we can sit here and fight. Like we can go back and forth here. I, I'm not phys <laughs> physically going to fight Chris Biederman. He's a, a, uh, a big dude and I'm not going to physically fight him, especially with all my ailments. But I certainly uh, like we don't always get along. Well, well we, we get along. We get along. We don't always see eye to eye. Yeah, that's fair. There's healthy debate. Yeah, there is healthy debate. Yeah, I I think um, it me and Jason Anderson used to have the same thing. Yeah. Uh, Jason, not so much anymore. He's so beat down by the job <laughs> that, that I don't think Jason's got any fight left in him. Might maybe because of me. <laughs> Uh, given, given that he is, he's my sports editor. So yeah, that, that could be possible. Yeah, it is possible. Um, so maybe Chris Biederman is beat up Jason Anderson behind the scenes. <laughs> I'm a lover, not a fighter. There we go. There we go. Uh, well, uh, that's exactly what the Sacramento Kings look like last night. Lovers, not fighters. <laughs> uh, they fell to the Oklahoma city thunder by a final of one twelve to one Oh five. Uh, Chris, another 20 point lead blown another mm -hmm. team that you had on the ropes and didn't put away. Another really, really brutal loss late in this season. Just what were your your first uh, takeaways watching the game last night? Yeah, it was a little bit similar to the New York game last week that that I was at, and um, against the Knicks. And and I think what's become apparent, you know, with Malik Monk out, the Kings are, you know, the the offense is still good, but they're they are a little bit easier to defend because they don't have a lot of guys who can beat or who can win off the dribble one on one, right? So. Mike Brown preaches, you know, touch the paint and spray. And I think that can work to an extent. But when it gets to crunch time and when you face a really good defensive team like the Knicks were or the Mavericks are or um, Oklahoma City, when they ramp it up to 11, um, the drive and kick stuff doesn't always work. And you just need guys to get buckets. And, you know, Malik Monk is the, the Kings second best guy at, at just getting buckets off the dribble. Um, so they're really missing that. And their offense, I think, is a little bit one note. Um, when when they do, they don't have that dynamic and they don't have the two man game with with Malik Monk and and Demonis Sabonis and and sometimes I think they're they're too heavily reliant on De'Aaron Fox, um, particularly with Monk out. So I, I think, you know, I, I I'm not fully on board with what Mike Brown said after the game, like talking about guys passing up open shots. I, you know, they took 58 threes. It was you know that's they a lot they, of threes. They took a ton of threes, right? So. I think it's, you know, that that's going to happen. Like, that's the value of defense, right? If we zoom out and say, okay, what have, what's been the Kings' biggest issue over the last couple of years? We could make a good case for it being defense. Now, it's been better the last month or so or since the All-Star break. The defense has been markedly better, particularly with Keon Ellis in the starting lineup. Um, but the value of defense is proven when OKC can turn it up to 11 and put the clamps on you. That's ultimately what helps you win in the playoffs and against good teams. And the Kings, while they've been able to play better defense and stretches, they haven't played defense that really changes the tenor of a game. And I thought Oklahoma City's defense changed the tenor of the game more so than what the Kings weren't doing. I just think when you don't have Malik Monk, the offense is more limited and you're more prone to getting clamped by a good defense. Is like That's my opinion of what happened last night. Yeah, and I agree. I, you and I were discussing before we, we came on the air I agree that um, that the Malik Monk losses is probably like it's just something that they can't sustain with without him. They they can't. They can beat some teams, but you're not going to be able to play a 48 minute game. And uh, I personally believe that it's Sabonis who's impacted the most by Malik mm -hmm. being gone because he does get 
he gets Sabonis in different actions. So I think no one should be happy that Sabonis took seven shots last night. No one should be happy that he turned the ball over six times. His double-double streak ends at 61 games. I actually think that's a good thing, Chris. To be honest with you, the double-double streak seemed to be weighing on him in a weird way. And, you know, at the, at the end of the day, it, it's just some arbitrary number that's floating out there. No right. one really, really cares, like, how many straight double-doubles you have unless you're part of some record-breaking run. Now it's like, hey, get back to the basics, get back to who you are. But again, not having Malik to break down defenses and to feed him while the defense is collapsing on someone else, it just changes the dynamic completely. And, and I think that the Kings have done the best they can. I think Mike Brown has done the best he can to try to find pieces that will work and you know to try to slide guys in and give guys opportunities. I think Keon Ellis has been just outstanding. Yeah, it's tremendous. Yeah, I mean, it's not every game, but I think uh, we'll get to this a little bit later, but when you see a young guy go off for 26 points, it all of a sudden changes your your idea on what a ceiling might be. Just like when early in the season, Keegan Murray goes for 45. All of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, maybe there is something different here. So I was excited to see that. Um, but overall, I, I think it should be disappointment. It should be that the Kings have this thing where when when you talk about when the defense goes to an 11, uh, how do you how do you score? What yeah. do you do? And and to be honest with you, the Kings stop relying on the basics of their offense and they start going to weird stuff that doesn't make any sense. And then sometimes they just miss four three-pointers in a row in 15 seconds. Sure. Yeah, and, and I think too, like, obviously, look, when you when you lose one of your best players, other guys have to step up. But I think it also highlights some issues that the Kings have with roster construction. Of course. Right? Like, Keegan Murray might end up becoming an all-star, but he's just not there yet. And he's, you know, he's in his second season. It would probably be unfair to expect him to be, you know, the second leading scorer on a contending team at this point in his career. But Harrison Barnes can have games where he scores two points. He has games where he can score 24 points. But I think the inconsistency with that three spot and the fact that the Kings don't really have a true small forward who comes off the bench. Right. Like they have they have two basically three or four guys who play three and four in Keegan Murray and, and Harrison Barnes. And those are really the only threes that they have in their rotation. Yes. When they go to the bench, it's a lot of small guards. It's Trey Lyles, who is a very good player and, and great for his role, but he's a four or five. And then they have a bunch of one and ones and twos. They need they need more strength i think they need more athleticism on the wing like what kessler Ep edwards represents is what the kings need of course but kessler edwards isn't there yet to consistently earn rotation minutes in my opinion so you know that'll be interesting to see in the offseason can the kings get more athletic um and can they you know and we'll talk about malik monk's future and what demonis abonis said uh, about keeping malik monk too but uh, it you know they, they need bucket getters when you look at the rest of the west right when it comes to the playoffs, you're not always going to be able to run your offense, particularly late in games and crunch time. It's just going to be up to your guys to go get buckets. Mm -hmm. And right now, with Malik Monk out, it feels like De'Aaron Fox is the only guy that can do that. And so that's a, that's a huge challenge for the Kings, particularly when they go against these teams that are really good at defending, like Oklahoma City, like Dallas, like the Knicks, like Boston, um, which, which we've seen all recently with Malik Monk out, right? So... That I think is is going to be something that we can talk about in the off season for sure. Um, but for now, it's you know, can you can you survive with Malik Monk out, and is Malik Monk going to be able to to come back maybe for the plane or maybe this weekend? Um, that's something we can dive into later in the show too. Yeah. Um, well, the Kings lost, and I, I think everybody out there is is feeling a little bummed out by that. But at the same time, the Suns got destroyed. Uh, they made it close later in the game, um, but they were down one point. I think it was like 53 to 13 or something. It was something so lopsided that I had to like dive into the box score and be like, okay, this can't be real. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, it, it was. They they were down tremendously early in the game. Um, and that's big because now you've got a game coming up against the Suns. You trail the Suns by one, uh, one game in the standings. You train... Trail the Pelicans by two games in the standings. You also have a game against the Pelicans. Like the six seed isn't gone. The six seed is is teetering. Um, but then, man, Chris, you got these other two teams that all of a sudden are biting at your heels. So yeah. you, you got the Warriors, you got the Lakers, who are now just a game back in the lost column of the Kings. 
And Sacramento has to continue to win to get through this. And uh, it this sets up like the craziest weekend of chaos that I've ever seen in the NBA, whether it's the one, two, three fighting it out, or it's the six, seven, eight, nine, ten fighting it out for a playoff position or play in position. I, I think this is going to be great, great theater this weekend. Yeah, I mean, you have no idea really like what th there are kind of endless possibilities when it comes to the plane and the first round of, of of the playoffs, right? Like it's the Kings could go to Phoenix and have to play the Suns and they win and, and they're the seventh seed or they could fall into 9-10. They have to play either the Warriors or the Lakers and then they have to win another game or to get just to get to the eight seed, right? So yeah. like they and then when you have the one, two, three seeds, Three teams are separated by one game and the Timberwolves and Nuggets are tied Wild. from a record standpoint. So the Kings conceivably could play. I mean, if they get out of the playoffs or get out of the play and they could play three different teams, Minnesota, Denver and OKC. I don't know who you really pick in terms of like if you could pick your matchup that would give you the best shot shot at advancing if you're Sacramento. Um, but that's. That's the I think that's a good thing about the playing tournament, honestly, because how how often have we looked at the end of the NBA regular season and there's just not a whole lot on the line and we're all just kind of like, man, just get us to the playoffs. Yeah. Get us to the playoffs. Teams are resting, guys. Teams are tanking. But this is this is a very interesting dynamic. And ultimately, I think it's it's been pretty successful from the NBA's perspective. Yeah, I think it has too. And and we can look at, you know, just uh so people are out there. The Timberwolves, right? The Timberwolves are are fighting it out. They're tied for the one seed. They play at Denver tonight. They play Friday against the Hawks. And of course, the Hawks are getting Trey Young back. Uh, Minnesota might also be getting Carl Anthony Towns back. Mm -hmm. And then they finish on Sunday with the Suns. And so it sets up like this. <laughs> what in the world? Like every single game matters. Every single game has this heightened like feel to it and you know phoenix is in the same boat phoenix plays the clippers again tonight then they they play the kings on friday uh and then they play of course minnesota on sunday like this is going to be a battle it's just a, a bare knuckle everyone is fighting it out trying to get position i think it's it's brilliant brilliant theater and hat tip to adam silver and his group for coming up with some sort of way to enhance the regular season to eliminate some of the tanking uh, and to to make this such high theater coming down the stretch. All right, we're going to step aside. We got to take our first break. When we come back, we'll have six quick thoughts. We'll dive deep into the Sacramento Kings loss to the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, after that, we've got we've got all kinds of stuff. We're going to talk A's. We're going to talk Rivercats. We're going to talk Sabonis. We're going to talk Niners because Chris Biederman is a Niners guy. Uh, you are listening to The Insiders. I am James Ham. He is Chris Biederman filling in for Kyle Madsen. Brought to you by Jiffy Lube. See you in just a minute. Now we're loose. Hey. Hey. Uh, Ramsey, I think you got the belt. Is that three days in a row, Ramsey? I think that's just being selfish. Is that what that's called, Ramsey? Let's go this Wednesday. That's three days in a row. Have you guys had someone take it all five days of the week? No, someone always beats them. See, someone, that's like, what I'm trying to say. Yeah, we, yeah. see if he can do this. Let's the go, Ramsey. Close it out. Can Ramsey close it out? That's what it's going to come down to. Do I need to make a uh, an Ohio State Buckeyes burner account just for this, just for the chatty house? You probably do. Yeah, you probably so do. I can go at it with uh, Michigan Wolverines in here. There we go. <laughs> yep. Uh, he had a run here. He had a good year. He had a good year. Um, I was going to bring this up too. uh, Emmy, Emmy is our, uh, our Bulgarian friend who lives here in, in California. She's sad for Sasha. Mm. Hey, Hey, look, uh, don't be sad for Sasha. Um, he's learning, he's healing still, still. And he also knows like what every single one of these games means. So whether he could play or not in these games, I think he probably could. But, um, I, what I don't want to see is. Sasha Vizenkov on Jalen Williams. <laughs> I, like, like that's not fair to him right now, like health wise and everything else. Yeah. Jalen Williams is an exceptional athlete. And that's the type of guy that we've been talking about, Chris. Yeah. I, I think like for Sasha, you know, being around the team a little bit this year, it's been a really rough go for him. 
um, he goes from a situation where in Europe where he's the guy. The uh, well, not only the guy, he's a superstar. He's a superstar in Europe. Yeah. He's the MVP. He's the MVP of the league, and then he comes here. He's fighting for minutes, um, and when you're fighting for minutes on this team in particular, you know you might play 15 minutes one game, and you might sit for a week, and then you might play 15 minutes, and then maybe 20 minutes, and then you sit for a week. He's had to deal with that, and then the injury, which has gotten worse um at times and gotten better like there was the, uh, I, I think it was um, maybe february and one of the road trips one of the long road trips that kings were on I, I was talking to him a little bit and i was asking about his recovery and he was just saying like some days it's better some days are better than others and it's not a it for him it wasn't a linear recovery it was kind of a roller coaster and it felt to me, my read on it was it was kind of wearing on him mentally. Like, yeah. man, I, I just really want this ankle so I can at least be in position to get minutes. Um, and the ankle injury really cost him that. I do think he could provide the Kings, um, obviously, more shooting. I wonder how how well-rounded his game is going to become um, because he's not like a someone who can win off the dribble or play, you know, great defense at this point. Oh, uh, we're coming back. So. Welcome back to the Insiders. I am James Ham. Kyle Madsen is hanging out in jolly old England. Uh, have you talked to him? What's he doing? He's doing some Harry Potter stuff. Oh, that makes sense. He's drinking. He's drinking some beer, as my guy is prone to do. Yes. Um, I haven't spoken to him beyond a few text messages, and we're we're in a we're in a couple group chats. So okay. Um, we we fire some jokes off and stuff, but with the time difference, it's like he's wake up and see 10 texts that are all basically reacting to everything that came in the night before because he's just waking up so yeah because even right now it's six o'clock in the afternoon where he's at so right yeah 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 so uh we always have the the serial connection here in the chat um he's very much intrigued by serial uh and he he always wants to know what is your serial of choice for all of our guests um i keep it pretty simple honey nut cheerios See, I grew up on Honey Nut Cheerios because my mom wouldn't let us have sugar cereals. And then my best friend had all the good stuff. Like he had sure. Cocoa Krispies, he had Fruit Loops, he had Tricks, but we got Honey Nut Cheerios. Honey Nut Cheerios is probably a sugar cereal, isn't it? Well, not really. It's well, not, not like, like one of the big, sure. you know. Not like Fruit Loops or Apple Jacks. Or... Yeah, but I did grow up just like grabbing a handful and just eating them all day. Yeah. Yeah, just like. Can't go wrong. Yeah, you can't go wrong. Um, all right, we got to get to six quick thoughts. Uh, we'll we'll dive deep into this Kings game now. Jesse, cue music. How'd yesterday's Kings game go? Kings insider Not great, James Bob. Ham has six notes you need to know. Here are James Ham's six quick thoughts. All right, let's get thought number one, James. Let's dive into this thing. Um, oh, that's weird. I can't hear myself all of a sudden, Jesse. Uh, the Keon Ellis game. Uh, out of nowhere, the Sacramento Kings had Keon Ellis go absolutely crazy. Uh, he goes 8 of 15 from three-point range, career best 26 points, seven rebounds, five assists, three blocks. Best game as a pro. Chris, your thoughts? Have you seen Keon Ellis shoot up close like during pregame? Uh, yeah, I think so. He's probably the best shooter I've ever seen who's the rotation on the ball as he shoots is sideways. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I like I saw that and I was like, there's no way this guy's going to be a good shooter in the in the NBA, but he he has been. So he throws a knuckleball. Yeah. Well, it spins sideways. It's, yeah. It spins left to right. I wonder if he's on to something. I wonder if just the world didn't know that uh, a market inefficiency. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> um, all right. Let's get to quick uh, six. Quick thought. Number two. Uh, De'Aaron Fox came to play. He started cooking from the outside early. Uh, 21 of his 31 uh, of his 33 points came in the first half. He had an eight rebounds, six assists, two steals. He, I, I thought he brought energy. I also thought he faded when things went sideways. Yeah, I think it's just it. Like, like I said, the Oklahoma City Thunder have a lot of defenders who who can credibly guard De'Aaron Fox. Mm -hmm. Um, whether it's Lou Dort, whether it's uh Shea, whether it's um 
you know, even Giddy, like they, they just case and Wallace, they, they have a lot of guys. Yeah. Jalen Williams who, who are athletic enough so they can throw a bunch of different looks at him. And I think that's ultimately the best way to guard the Aaron is just have a bunch of guys with length and athleticism that you can throw at him. I also thought, you know, first of all, he shot a lot of threes. He goes seven to 17 from three. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and at first I was like, well, the reason why he's not getting to the free throw line is because all he's shooting is threes, but he had 12 other shots that weren't threes. And I do think he got battered. And yeah. I do think that he did not get the respect that Shea was getting. And I think it got under his skin. And I think he started getting chirpy with the officials, which never helps. And I also think that played into sort of a lack. Well, an overall, the team concentrating too much on the officials and not enough on the game uh, through stretches in the third and early fourth quarter. And so I thought that that was a bit of an issue. Yeah, I have thoughts on that that we'll get into in the 11 o'clock hour um, because there was a lot of of that kind of conversation on the on the last road trip that I had with some players and, and even Mike Brown. So, um, but yeah, I, I think what, I, what I'll say right now is I think a next level of De'Aaron's game, right? Like a level that De'Aaron took this year was shooting more threes and shooting shooting them efficiently mm -hmm. i think next year it's going to be about getting to the free throw line more consistently i think that's the next step in his you know star star rise yeah i think it's interesting because he used to do that like he yeah. his free throw numbers have come down um not just percentage wise he's up to 73.3 percent which isn't great uh but it's better than it was earlier in the season um, but you know, he's a 5.8 free throw attempts per game. A couple of years ago, he's at 7.2. Yeah. It's partially because of the officiating, the way the game's being called, but it's also, uh, I just don't think that he, he's not selling it, Chris. So we'll get into it later. Yeah. Well, uh, I have thoughts on that. Okay. Uh, bolt of lightning, uh, Davion Mitchell has gone from a fringe rotational player to a key cog in the matter of a couple of weeks. Uh, most of that is because of Malik Monk. I thought Davion in the first half was so incredibly impactful attacking the rim attacking the paint so fast flying all over the court he had eight points but then again he's one of the guys where it just dissipated like what happened and i'm not sure why that is but it's been a couple of games in a row where we see the burst of energy early and i think it plays into a bigger conversation of being malik monk is much more difficult than you think it is yeah, like the, the big difference between Davion and Malik Monk is Malik is the most confident individual, like one of the most confident individuals I've ever been around. In oh, yeah, yeah. And Davion, like his confidence can come and go. And I think that was part of the issue early in the season when he fell out of the rotation was his confidence wasn't always there. And it's been there lately. That's coincided with Malik Monk being out. And that's been a huge reason why he's been scoring. Um, but, you know, the, the key for him going forward in his career is going to be maintaining that confidence and being confident no matter what his role is. That's going to be the step for him as, as a, you know, as he continues through the league, in my opinion. Yeah, I love talking to Davion because I, I don't it's I think confidence is a weird thing. Like and I think someone could say, what do you mean he's not confident? And I, I think it means that he doesn't feel comfortable in his surroundings sometimes, which is something that I see on the court like mm -hmm. he he. He feels the same way that I see him. Like there are so many moments where he looks like he doesn't fit in with the other four players on the court. Sure. That there he's not part of the flow. I think he feels that and he he doesn't know why it is that way either. And then all of a sudden we see him just like go, go, go. And it's like, okay, there you go, man. Stop hesitating. Yeah. Stop, stop having that little bit of doubt in the back of your mind. And I think that's what you mean by confidence. It's that little seed of doubt that that uh like sort of seeps in. Um, let's get to number four. Um, woke up third quarter is becoming Keegan Murray time. Uh, he struggled early, uh, like most of the Kings not named De'Aaron Fox, Keon Ellis or Davion Mitchell. You know, there was a point two minutes left in the, in the second quarter, um, Chris, where Keegan Murray hit a three. That was the first basket made by a King not named De'Aaron Fox, Keon Ellis or Davion Mitchell like the first 22 minutes of the game were only those three scoring. And it was totally bizarre. I think they started, the other guys started 0 of 14 from the field. Keegan got it going though. Uh, we need more, uh, but I do like the 15 points and 10 rebounds. Um, I wish it would have been, you know, 22 points and 10 rebounds, but I think we're getting there. We're getting closer. Yeah. And I don't want to heap too much pressure on Keegan Murray, but to me, the Kings trajectory over the next three, five seasons is all about how good Keegan Murray becomes. Yeah. 
because if he becomes an all-star, okay, then maybe we talk about the Kings as a consistent top four, top five seed in the West. If Keegan doesn't become an all-star and he becomes, I don't know, name, name like an average wing player. Or maybe um, a really good defender slash okay scorer. Yeah. Um, the, guy, the guy's name in Philadelphia is, is uh, eluding me right now. But anyway, if Keegan's an all-star, that's huge for the Kings. If yeah, Keegan's yeah. not then that's that's kind of problematic given how given how much they feel like they've invested in his development you mean tobias harris yes tobias harris okay yeah 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 yeah. i think that that's the question does he become and i'll just keep throwing other names out there does he become like the rudy gay of of the kings sure. like and i'd say the same thing tobias harris caesar um and even harrison barnes right like these are non-all-stars there but they're they're close they're they're the step right below all-star I think that that's okay, but if that's going to be who he is, the Kings have to find someone else. Yeah, because those guys are expensive. Like those guys ultimately get contracts that are commensurate with all stars, right? Like Tobias Harris makes a ton of money. Well, yeah, I mean, we could do pocket watching, and <laughs> and I, I can guarantee you that uh, that Harrison Barnes' uh, career earnings would like. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's jarring. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's made court, uh, close to a quarter of a billion dollars. Right. So if Keegan ends up getting, I think what I'm saying is like Keegan's trending towards getting that type of money so if the kings maximize what keegan becomes by you know him becoming an all-star then he's worth that money if he just gets that money and then he kind of just like you know peters out and or levels out mm -hmm. and is doesn't elevate who they are then that's that's where you start looking at the contract and be like man that's not that's not a great use of resources exactly it's uh there was a point where harrison barnes making 25 million dollars a year in a time where $25 million a year meant a lot and yep. it wasn't a $25 million player. Exactly. Um, okay, the streak ends. That's our, our number five. Uh, Demonis uh, Saponis put up big numbers against Chet Holmgren all season, but it wasn't the case in this one. He struggled, man. Uh, he turned the ball over six times, eight points, 13 rebounds, five assists. It just was not... You could see the angst on his face and the fact that he understood that he was struggling and that he knew that it was hurting his team and it, it was getting under his skin. Yeah. And that there were, you know, a couple shots, I think, as as the broadcast was going to commercial, you know, he's arguing with Mike Brown and, and sort of Malik Monk. Or Jordy. Or Jordy about something. And I don't know what it is. I don't want to make it more than it is. But it's just, it, it speaks to him being frustrated overall. Yeah. And and I wonder, as a leader of the team, and we can have a, a bigger discussion about King's leadership, maybe. But, like, as a leader of the team, you know, you want everyone on the same page. You want that guy to be a galvanizing force and not and and you don't love to see in a big moment him arguing with an assistant coach or him needing to be calmed down by Malik Monk, who's in street clothes. Right. So um, that was super notable to me on top of just the, the performance overall. And I think, you know, Domas, I, I mean, Anthony Davis aside, he's dominated Anthony Davis. But I think the best way to match up with Domas is with length. And Chet Holmgren obviously has that. He's not the strongest guy. And that was an issue in their matchups earlier this season. But it seemed like Holmgren defended him a lot better last night. Yeah, Holmgren is growing. Okay, we got to get to this last one really quick. Uh, we had a strange night. Harrison Barnes was, wasn't was a non-factor like he had been in normal games. Um, but he was one of eight from the field. But then eight of ten from the free throw line. He grabbed six rebounds, which is a good thing. But overall, um, Harrison Barnes had another basic Harrison Barnes night. Uh, quickly, Chris, any thoughts on Harrison Barnes? I mean, the fact that you would call it a Harrison Barnes night, I think, sp speaks to what the issue might be overall with Harrison is that it, it's a roller coaster. Sometimes it's great and you win a lot of games when he's good. And then when he's bad or not scoring, particularly without Malik, then, you know, it's problematic for you. Yeah, definitely. All right. We're going to step aside. When we come back, we have a Jiffy Lou player of the game to give away. Uh, that's awesome. We also, we're going to dive into this Sabonis slash Monk conversation that we've got kind of hanging out there. So we are the insiders here on ESPN 1320 brought to you by Jiffy Lube. See you in just a minute. All right. What's going on, Chatty House? How are we doing? I think Paul makes a good point saying Sabonis has been struggling offensively without Monk and Herder. Well, that was something we talked about before we came on. It's just like they're, the Kings are so reliant on Domas for the dribble handoff game and Monk and Herter are such big parts of that, that, you know, it's it's definitely been an adjustment for him to try to figure out how to get his own buckets. 
and how to set up other guys who haven't been involved in that action as often as those guys. Yeah. And I would also, it's, um, we've talked about this a little bit on the air. Um, there's such a, uh, a like huge variant on how guys attack that DHO. Mm -hmm. And I know basically with Kevin, when Kevin takes a DHO, he runs like four steps. It's sometimes it's a travel. Sometimes it's not, but he gets way out wide yeah. and he draws the defense towards him. And it also frees up Domas to go. Yeah. Right. With Keegan, Keegan likes to like get around it and then settle in right on his back hip mm -hmm. and pull up from there. We're seeing Keon Ellis is very similar. Sometimes Keon likes to take a dribble and then a reverse dribble and bring it back around. So he sets up the, the screen guy really well. Yeah. But again, there it's the same play, but every player is different how they feel comfortable in it. And nobody can do it like Malik does. Malik will get get the ball in his right hand and he can either continue driving with his right hand or he can throw that bullet pocket pass. Yes. That is always in the perfect spot. And like there's no one else on the team who does it like he does. Yeah. And it often leads to a to a layup or a dunk. And I think Domas is seriously missing that. Yeah, even Davion doesn't, I, I don't even, he doesn't really know how to play in the pick and roll all that well at all. Yeah. Every once in a while, we'll see a lob from him, but it's just, that's not who he is as a player. And and that's kind of an issue. Yeah. Yeah. It was in, uh, interesting. I, like Keon Ellis, uh, again, how many times does Keon Ellis get to uh, um, go off like this and go like eight of 15 from three? It's just wild, man. I mean, you talk about like, you know, there's always discussion before the trade deadline, but like, what did we say the Kings needed at the deadline? It was like they need a three and D guy, somebody who can who can guard on the perimeter, maybe take some of the onus off Fox, who can hit open shots. Yep. And Keon's been that guy to a T. Just raised his hand, said, "I got you." Yeah. Yeah. And they didn't have to give up anything for him. Yeah, and then and I'd also point out that I mean the fact that he took 17 shots that's a big deal. Like the Kings need him to continue to be that because. If he can prove that he can hit the three like that, you're going to see defenses adjust. And once they adjust, that's going to open the spacing back up. That I think that's one of the biggest things the Kings are missing is just the spacing that Herder and Monk provide. Um, whether they're hitting or not, it doesn't really matter. Keon is up to, he shoot, he's now shooting 41.8% from three on the season. Wow. Um, yeah, pretty solid. Everyone says like he's one of the best three point shooters that they have, like behind the scenes. Yeah. I mean, it's hard it's hard to argue with the results. And I, I just think the value he brings defensively, the fact that you you can have somebody who can credibly guard SGA, you know, like get the length, the athleticism, mm -hmm. like that, that's huge for the Kings because you know, De'Aaron Fox, his offense, I would argue, would take a hit if you were like, Okay, we need you to score thirty five. And we also need you to guard SGA. Like that's that's just not something that would be sustainable. And the fact that you could have somebody come in and credibly guard an opponent's best player is is a huge boon for the Kings. Yeah, I think so too. We should be saving all of this for the radio, but hey, why not? Uh, John Poles asks about uh, thoughts on baseball and sack. Uh, I'm writing a story on that currently. I've done some reporting on it, including this morning, and we we are going to talk about it later in the show. That's right. We're going to talk about it in this segment after we get through the uh, the Sabonis. After, oh, back in five. Welcome back into the Insiders here on ESPN 1320. I'm James. Joining me, Chris Biederman. We're doing ham and side dishes this week. Um, <laughs> Chris is like, what in the world did I just get into? Uh, on Monday, we decided that Jesse was mashed potatoes. Uh, yesterday, Jerry threw us for a loop. Yeah, what did Jerry say he was? Turnip greens. I don't think I've ever had turnip greens before. Turnip greens. He said they have them at uh, the Cracker Barrel. Plus, you know, like he's from backwoods, Indiana. Is like it, they have they turn up greens out there. I, I guess. I mean, I like Jerry grew up well, like with the dirt floor. Like, I, I mean, mm -hmm. Jerry grew up in a like they had like the party line. Like, so if, if your neighbor was on the phone, you'd have to get on and say, hey, I need to use the phone to call somebody. And they'd be like, hang on, give me a few minutes and then I'll let you go. Like, yeah, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and of course, Jerry grew up with Larry Bird, uh, who was really close with Jerry's younger brother. And so, what, what was the crazy? Oh, the crazy story he told us yesterday about Larry Bird. He, he told Larry Bird, just like, man, you are such a great rebounder. He goes, he's like, you're averaging 11 rebounds a game from the small forward position. He goes, oh, no, no, I'm a really bad rebounder. He's like, what? He goes, yeah, you know who's a great rebounder is Kevin McHale. He's like, yeah, but Kevin's averaging eight rebounds a game from the power forward spot. He goes, yeah, but see, Kevin only goes for like 10 rebounds a game, and he gets eight of them. He's like, (laughs) I go for every rebound all night long, and so I might come up with 11, but I tried for like 35. And I thought, all right, that's a good story. Yeah, it's a good story. That's interesting. So going back to the side dish thing we assign ourselves we say what what we are as side dishes yeah what what do you think you you would be as a side i've given this zero thought how about um how about some like barbecue baked beans with like chunks of bacon Uh, see that makes perfect sense you think that's good no that that is exactly yep okay that's a good one that's a good one no i'm a big big, big, baked beans guy that might be the best answer so far this week oh yeah we also got kyle madsen in the chat shout out kyle he's in here what wow from five thousand miles away uh kyle is the ultimate side dish uh i don't know what that is but uh Pause. yeah there we are <laughs> thanks kyle we're doing great we're, we're making it friend we're making it um of course kyle madsen our friend is in the chat right now as uh from from jolly old england which means he's probably he's probably had a few beers i'm just saying i could only hope i told i gave him a couple recommendations um for, for his time in the UK. So hopefully he's enjoying himself. I, I hope so too. Um, all right. So let's get to this conversation. Um, we had this. Uh, so first of all, you were on the road trip. Um, you talked to some of these guys in New York a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, Mike Scotto from Hoops Hype was also there. Uh, he's a friend of the show. Um, he's a good dude. I, yeah. I really dig Mike. I liked, I enjoyed meeting Mike. For sure. Yeah, he's, he's definitely a good dude. Uh, we communicate a, uh, quite a bit. And he actually sent me... Um, a piece that he wrote this morning about this, uh, about, well, it was a quote from Sabonis. So, and it's funny because you, he was with you in the locker room and you had some of these conversations and then he followed up afterwards after you left and had his own conversation. Um, I miss being on the road because man, the conversations are so much better when you are like one-on-one and there aren't six cameras running. Yeah. Um, the, the access on the road is a lot better, particularly pretty game because like, I mean, you know, Put, pulling the curtain back, I don't know if you've talked about this on, on air that much, but like when the Kings are home, the players have so many places to be that aren't the locker room yeah. to get, you know, massages or stretched out or do some weightlifting pregame, whatever. On the road, they're all kind of confined to the locker room. So yes. when when there is access pregame to the locker room on the road, if you need to get somebody, there's a really good chance that you're going to be able to get them, which is not always the case at home. Um, so yeah, some of the best access you get is on the road. And so I was able to get Um, I was able to talk to Malik a little bit about his recovery. That was the first time I think he spoke publicly since the injury. Um, and, but yeah, being on the road is in terms of access is, is great. Yeah. I would even say right now, just so people know, I go in the, in the locker room and pregame and, um, for some reason, my friend Chris is not in the locker room and pregame. We won't get into that. (laughs) Um, I'm usually by myself. Sometimes there is one other reporter that will pop in or two other reporters, but I actually like Chris, I have to do that. Like, yeah. I have to stake our claim mm-hmm. because if we, if someone doesn't do it, yeah, they're going to take it away from us. Sure. And so yeah. I, I'm like, Hey, no, no, I, I'm going to stand in here. I'll be the man on the moon with the flag, like holding it up saying, Hey, we've been here. Yes. Um, but if we don't, they're slowly going to take it away and take it away. There's usually one player, maybe two players in the locker room at any given time. Sasha Vizinkov usually comes in and, and he sits. And that, that's why I talk to Sasha, just like you've talked to Sasha. Yeah. On occasion, Alex Lim will come in. Domas runs in at uh, for a couple of minutes. Uh, my friend Doug Christie comes in and sits down and we chat for a few minutes. Uh, De'Aaron comes in and gets changed really quick and then goes out. And then he comes back for like the last two minutes of that session. And then Malik Monk will come in. Um, but it's more like hanging out with Malik. It's and yeah. Yeah, and that's what I I like to do. I like to make sure that they know like we're part of their their world. And yeah, so I mean yeah. the 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 best thing to do with athletes really at any level is just to just like con- like have conversations with them about normal stuff that's not related to basketball. Yeah, and then be like, all right, hey, I I got to do this story. Like, can I ask you about this? And then they'll be more inclined to talk to you. Yeah, if exactly. like your entire 
existence in their world is not just, hey, prodding them with questions like, no, you're a human. You experience things outside of basketball, too. Like, what's that like? Exactly. I had a moment with Malik where uh, he was talking about he was going to go golfing the next day. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, where are you going? He goes, I, f- I feel like you're going to stalk me or something. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, like I have no back. I can't I can't golf at all. Like at, not anymore. Like I, I used to golf. I've, I've golfed all over Sacramento. Yeah. I used to golf with Doug. Like I, like I know golfing in Sacramento. I'm like, where are you going? I, I don't care. And he laughs and he like he goes on. You know, a lot of times he tells me and Sean and the rest of the media to f off, but not using the f. Uh, like, I get I get plenty of that too. Yes. Yeah, and and it's all in fun, mm-hmm. and, and it's just his way of like playing and like being friendly. Um, but let's get to this this quote that we've got from from Mike Scotto. I. Uh, Sabonis told Mike Soda from Hoops Hype, um, we better keep him about Monk. I think there's no excuse. I'll talk to Monty. I'll talk to Vivek. Uh, we need to keep him. He's a big piece for us moving forward. I mean, I, I think that's everyone's sentiment in Sacramento. It might even be Malik's sentiment, but the dollars and cents are really difficult here. And, and I don't know. I mean, you did you go to Orlando? You were in Orlando. Yeah, I was in you? Orlando. Yeah, and there's a buzz there, right? I mean, the media folks who cover the team would not stop talking about the idea of Malik Monk being uh, being with the Orlando Magic next year because he's sort of represents exactly what they need. And it's the same reason why you hear Clay Thompson's name linked to linked to Orlando, too. Um, and then Malik went out and shot Ofer. He was bad. <laughs> <laughs> had, had one of his worst games of the season. I don't know if it was related or not. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, you can explain it better than me, but you know, in terms of there being no excuses, I think there is a pretty good excuse. It's that the Kings are limited in what they can offer Malik versus what he could get from another team on the open market. Yeah, they can offer him $17.4 million starting salary with an 8% raise, and it works out to like a four-year $78 million contract. Um, it can have an opt-out after year two, but not after year one. Mm-hmm. So it, so basically, he would have to take like a two-year, like probably $35, $36 million contract and then opt out and then sign a longer term deal. And yeah. it's because he's on early bird rights. He's not on uh standard Larry bird rights. So you can't exceed the cap. And I've talked about this, Chris, there's, there's really nothing else they can do. Yeah. Like they can offer him that, or they can give away, they can try to give away Harrison Barnes, Kevin Herter, and maybe Davion Mitchell and drop like $32 million under the cap at well drop shave 32 million bucks off. And then maybe they can get up to a contract at twenty five million dollars a year for him. Yeah, no, and, it's it's tough. And at that point, like, I don't know if Malik would be the type because essentially he would be taking a discount to come back. And I don't know if he would be if he if at this point in his career, this might be the best chance he gets at a at a maximum payday, right? At, or not yeah. a max, not a max in terms of max contract, but this might be the best chance he gets to cash in in the league, like a hundred million dollar contract, like a hundred million dollar contract, which he could potentially get from Orlando and then not have state income tax and Toronto and Toronto and lose half of your money. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. The good but, people of Canada steal all your money. <laughs> <laughs> they do. It's like, hey, fifty percent. Yeah, They're just like yeah. cut your check in half, and we'll take the rest. Yeah, healthcare and all those things. Um, yeah. but there's, you know, like it, it would be about if Malik came back, it would be about his relationship with Fox, and it would be about his relationship with Mike Brown. Which, you know, I've had a lot of conversations with Malik about Mike Brown and his and his relationship, and we see them go at it frequently on mm-hmm. the floor. But they do have an ability to bury it and like have an adult conversation man to man and not let it get personal. But you do wonder at some point and we've seen, you know, we see that with other players and coaches where the dynamic is good, like Draymond Green and Steve Kerr, for example. Right. Like they'll they almost come to blows, but they'll like, you know, fight for each other a a, a day later. Right. Yeah. And then Steve Kerr will enable him. We're we're right. Absolutely. Um, (laughs) But so I like it would be on the strength of the relationship between Mike Brown and Malik for Malik to be willing to take a discount. And Malik knows he could be here and be a really important piece on a playoff team versus going somewhere else. Maybe the team's a little worse, but he has an expanded role, makes a little bit more money. It's a you know, if it's just about money, then Malik's gone. If it's about maybe maximizing his career and what he could be 
on a playoff team, maybe his best opportunity is to stay. So that's that's ultimately going to be Malik and, and his camp's decision. Yeah. And like, look, I know some people said, hey, is there a way for Domas to give some money back? No, there's not. And, and it wouldn't <laughs> matter either way because Domas would have to give so much back that it would change the dynamic. Like, look, this is the way that basketball works. When you have good players and they, if you get a budget player and, and they play well above who they are as a player, you have to pay them if you want to keep them or you don't and you got to start over. And, and so it's really difficult to keep look at, I mean, the golden state warriors paid like before the Corey Joseph trade, we're paying like $186 million in luxury taxes here. Yeah. Like the Kings have not, they have yet to pay a luxury tax. And I know that that irks some people that like gets under their skin. Why aren't the Kings paying? Why aren't they spending more money? Like there are limitations on how you can build a team and how you can pay. Right. Right. And, and the key is, that you draft players, they become better. Mm -hmm. You have to pay them again. And then it's the third contract that kills you. Yeah. And that's where the Kings are heading with De'Aaron Fox. It's the third contract that is going to kill them. I mean, like there will be a point where De'Aaron Fox makes between 60 and $70 million a year. Everyone sees the Jalen Brown contract, right? That's the same exact contract, except for it's a year uh, or two later, which means it's going to be even higher than Jalen Brown's because the salary cap goes up incrementally. So like, look, I, I think this is going to be a real test for Monty. It's going to be really te uh, like a test for Vivek. Yeah. There is no way to like buy an Island and, you know, slide the deed into, uh, into M Malik Monk's name and say, Oh, we bought you an Island with a golf course. Um, <laughs> that, that doesn't work. Uh, and you also have to be, if you're Malik, you have to be super cautious. I mean, he's learning right now. I think the worst thing that could happen to the Kings and their hopes of keeping him is for him to have a knee injury because it puts it all in perspective. Yeah. This is your payday. This is your moment. You have to do what's right for you and your family. Mm -hmm. And and that's how I always look at it. Like, I would love to have Malik Monk here for another like seven or eight years and have him finish his career here. I just don't know that that's, that's possible just because of the dollars and cents. Yeah. I agree. I agree 100%. Um, and we're seeing, you know, the, this since he's been gone, we're seeing a different way to evaluate how valuable he is. Mm -hmm. When you don't have him, look at everything you're missing. Um, and that's a scorer who can get buckets against really good defenses at times. And the Kings last night against Oklahoma City just were really missing that. Yeah, it also shows you the type of player that you need to add in the offseason because you can't go through another stretch where if you lose one him or Fox, that you got nothing. And, and that's yeah. not to call out a Colby Jones or a, or Keon Ellis, like who have played really, really well. And the moment, the moments they've been given, it's just a reality of the situation. Like you have to have multiple, multiple players that can do multiple things. Um, all right. We're going to, we're going to shift gears a little bit here. Um, we've got plenty of time in this segment and Chris is looking at the clock because this is the first time he's done something like this where he's been in studio. <laughs> yeah. Chris, we still have 11 minutes. In okay. This block. Uh, and you know, I think, I don't know this to be. The, are you an A's fan, like Kyle? Or For, formerly, I so I I renounced my A's fandom once the uh, I forget even which off season it was, but once Olson and Chapman were oh were traded, that was I just decided enough is enough. Oh no! See, I'm still a um like I I have uh, what is it called when you're you're held by your captive? I've got Stockholm syndrome. There sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 And it's one of those things where I've kind of just been like. Okay, you're you're gonna keep trading, guys. At least you're still here, and you know, like I wish it wasn't the case, but um, well, it used to be they would win those trades. You know, they mm -hmm. would they would trade some of them. They would oh, yeah. trade Dan Heron and get Carlos Gonzalez back. Yeah, you know? but then, yeah. And, but but then it's that they just stopped winning those trades. Even so, it was like okay, it used to be okay. You're shipping out a superstar. You're probably gonna get three or four really good players back. Now it's like, oh, you're shipping out a superstar and you're not getting anything back and you're going to be one of the worst teams we've ever seen ever, ever. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've I'm I'm currently working on a story um, about just, you know, the A's coming to Sacramento and what it could mean uh, for baseball in Sacramento long term. And, you know, Vivek came out and said it on the announcement day last week that you know, Sacramento's in pole position for an expansion team. And this is an opportunity for the A's to showcase um, or for Sacramento to get showcased through the A's as as a viable baseball market to Major League Baseball. Um, I don't think the A's 
I don't think the level of success the A's enjoy at Sutter Health Park is really going to have much to do with Sacramento becoming an expansion possibility for Major League Baseball, based on the reporting I've done so far. I think ultimately what's going to matter to Major League Baseball is Sacramento's bid um, and whether or not they can get the money together and they can showcase a good enough financing plan for a new ballpark that is competitive with all the other expansion possibilities, whether you're talking about Charlotte, Montreal, Nashville, Portland, um, and even Oakland now, right? So it, to, from, from what I've gathered, the the thing I take away from the reporting I've done so far is like the, maybe the A's sell out every game until 2028 in Sutter Health Park and Sacramento shows out and it's a great vibe and every like, you know, the crowd's crazy and it and it proves to be just like try it, it, the A's drive a ton of fan interest, right? That's not going to be the end all be all, which gives the A's a possibility at expansion. It's going to be do they have viable ownership? Who can come up with one to two billion dollars in an expansion fee and make it clear that they're going to have a turnkey plan for a new stadium ready to go? Right. So I so basically what I've gathered, the A's could be really bad and there could be two thousand people at Sutter Health Park at night, or they could be really good and 14,000 that sell out every game that, that, that they have here. It's not going to matter when it comes to expansion. The owners of Major League Baseball just want there to be legitimate ownership and legitimate and a legitimate plan for a new ballpark. That's go, Those are going to be the deciding factors, not how successful the A's are at Sutter Health Park. Okay. I'm going to, uh, there's a couple of things I'm going to take on there. Um, number one, uh, like I, I've been in this community forever. I, I'm just going to say it doesn't matter whether the A's are good or not. They they will sell out every single game from here until they're not here anymore. I, I guarantee it. If it's 2025, 26, 27, and 28, every single game will be sold out. All 81 games. Okay, I, that's I have, bold. I have complete faith in that. I don't okay. think that people are going to care because that's what the River Cats did when they were when they were new, when it was all new. And the fact that you're going to be able to go out and watch the Cubs or the Red Sox or the Giants or or the Dodgers or the Yankees, all of these teams, like there are, this is a, it's a transplant city. There's so many people that come here from other places because of the capital, because of, you know, the community that's here, but because of the Bay area, because a lot of people end up in the Bay area from somewhere else. And then they end up in Sacramento because they can't afford to buy a house in the Bay area. And so I, I do think that this is a vibrant baseball community. The weather is great for baseball. It is a baseball town. There was professional baseball many, many, many years ago in this uh, Salon, Salons, 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 uh, Salons. There we go. Yes. Um, anyway, this is a baseball town, and and I agree so, with that. Like, I think Sacramento could be a major league market, but that's not what this conversation is. No, I, I totally agree. Um, and then, but I keep saying, like, you're gonna need. I, I I've put the number at two billion. I think you'll need two billion for expansion, and you have to remember, baseball is really complicated because it's not just owning the major league club you have to own all of these other things so not only do you have to have two billion you're gonna have to have like another billion and a half to build a new stadium you're already gonna have to have either whether it's yolo county or it's sacramento county or whoever's gonna come up with this money somebody's gonna have to have the the private public partnership the public is going to have to pay whether that's 400 million like what they're doing in vegas or, or even in Oakland, or it's going to be 800 million, whatever it is, you're going to have to start coming up with that now. You're going to have to start piecing them together now. And if not, an owner is really, they're going to have to have like $3.5 billion to do this. And yeah. Vivek is, is a very, very rich man. He's not that rich. Right. He's not that type of guy. And so who else comes in and how do you build this? And I do think if there's not a team in Oakland, it makes Sacramento probably the most viable market out there because it's the number 19, number 20 in, in television market is a bigger market than Portland. As far as television market, it's got a vibrant fan base. It already has the triple It's proven with years of selling out triple a ball games that it can be that city. Yeah. And I think just the, the marriage between the Kings and whatever that team is could just be brilliant. Yeah, I, I agree a hundred percent, but it's going to, like the yeah, it's going to come down to money, and there's going to be a lot of competition, and there's going to be a lot of Silicon Valley money coming in competing, and there's going to be Joe Lacob potentially coming in competing. 
for expansion or if the A's become for sale. And I know that's the second part of this I wanted to hit on too. There's this idea that because Vivek is doing this for John Fisher, he's going to have the inside line to potentially buying the A's. And maybe he does. Maybe maybe Vivek, maybe there's some unspoken agreement that when, um, if and when John Fisher decides to sell or if and when Vegas falls through and he decides to sell, that Vivek would be the first guy that John Fisher sells to. Well, that's complicated because from what I've been told, in order for, for that to happen, like Major League Baseball has made it so a new you a, an owner cannot sell a team to somebody in a different market with the intent of moving them without there being a drastic approval. Like it's exceedingly difficult. It's been described to me as like really difficult to borderline impossible to get that approval. The only way you can sell a team is if you intend to keep it in its existing market. So it can't, it's not going to be a situation like if the A's were to stay in Sacramento, it would be Vegas falls through. And if Vivek is involved, it's most likely Vivek buying, buying into the A's as a minority owner, helping fund that way. Like it's not John Fisher selling directly to Vivek and John Fisher stepping away. It's John Fisher remaining principal owner and Vivek coming on as a minority stakeholder. And then they, you know, reapply for relocation and Sacramento get goes through the same approvals that that Vegas just went through, which that wouldn't be the hard part. But there it's it's not going to be a scenario, I don't think, based on what I've heard so far, that the A's are just that John Fisher, if the the Vegas deal falls through, he's just going to give the team to Vivek and then step away like John Fisher would still have to be involved. And even then, if John Fisher were to sell, there's you know, major league, the ma other major league baseball owners will be looking at the entire pool of candidates who want to buy the team and they'll have influence on picking out the best one. Right. So it won't just okay. be like fish. Fisher could say, I want to sell to Vivek, but it will not be as easy as Vivek just being the only guy. Vivek would need to get vetted. And obviously the relocation, like the, you, like I said, you're not allowed to sell to somebody with who has the intent of moving the market, moving the team to a different market. So it's extremely complicated. Um, but the the point here and it is just like based on the reporting I've done is just Vivek coming out and saying that Sacramento's now in pole position for an expansion franchise because they're getting the A's. I just through my reporting, I don't find that to be true. OK, no, I mean, it, it's an interesting like I don't know how it's going to go, it, but I, I it does help that Vivek is vetted through the NBA. Yes. And it does open up like Sacramento has now thrown its name into the hat in terms of expansion candidates that yes. that has happened, but it is not Sacramento is now in pole position or guaranteed anything beyond having the A's play at Starter Health Park through 2028. OK, yeah, it's it's intriguing. And I expect Vivek to start lining it up right now. Like I'm mean, yeah, seeing will... like the way that Mark Cuban went out and sold a good portion of the Dallas Mavericks. Um, there's money all over the place. We've seen Vivek go out and he tried to buy Juventus. Like yeah. he, he's tried to buy, like he's been sniffing around NHL teams. Yeah. He's got, he's got huge ideas about what he wants to do and how he wants to, uh, to grow not only Sacramento, but like his own brand as an owner. And like, why not? He bought a team for a valuation of 535 million. It's now worth 3 billion. Right. Like you did. Okay. There, you did. Okay. There, Vivek. So, um, I wouldn't doubt that that uh, he's going to start lining things up very quickly. Um, I think it will depend on like how much space is there in in, in West Sac. How how much money can you get of of public money to go towards it? You're going to have to get some of it. Yeah, and part I, of it. I've talked to the mayor, the, the outgoing mayor Daryl Steinberg, about that specifically. Sacramento doesn't have a huge appetite for public tax dollars being spent on sports venues but that's what they say and then they help out right but so it might be yeah. through bonds or there might be some other avenues but yeah, it's yeah. not going to be like it's not going to come to a vote where you know sacramento residents are voting on whether or not they want to support throwing their tax dollars at john fisher to build a stadium here that's right all right hey we're going to step away uh you're listening to the insiders on espn 1320 brought to you by jiffy lube uh when we come back we're going to talk we're going to talk Niners. We're going to talk Niners because Chris Biederman, he's a Candlestick Chronicle guy. And Candlestick Chronicles. There we go. There it is. Uh, we'll so see you in just a sec. Not to be a wet, wet blanket, but I, I, you know, just. No, I mean, I, like it's. 
I, I think there are like what you're saying is correct, but I also think that there are other pathways here. Yeah. That Vivek is already I mean, if Vivek can go in and make an offer for Juventus, that means he's sure. he's already got a plan in place for two billion dollars for something. It it would likely take a group of people. Like Vivek well, would be a course. leader of a large of a group. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's what he's done here uh with the Kings. I mean Vivek only owns I, I think it's fourteen percent, fifteen percent. Uh I don't was know. it that little? Yeah, it's okay. he may have picked up a little bit more. But you have to remember that they diluted a lot of the minority owners down. Mm -hmm. So basically what they did is they 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 put it all like in a bucket and said, OK, you own this percentage. You own this percentage. We're going to adjust percentages for yeah. the new whatever. Yeah. So um, at least that's what they tried to do. And then they there was like a Bob Cook stake went to bankruptcy court and mm -hmm. like seven percent of the Kings. Um, they went in, uh, Vivek went in and bought it out of bankruptcy court. Um, that was years ago. Do um, we know who bought, who bought Nagels? Uh, Vivek kept, cons well, I, I would say Vivek, but it's Vivek and his group kept yeah, consuming. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Na and, and Nagel is still a minority owner, but not in the same way. He had like a 5% stake or something like that, but he is under, the Sacramento local group now, which includes yeah. uh, Phil Oates and guys like that. Yeah. It's my understanding that Nagel divested in the Kings and used a lot of that money or all of that money to buy Huddersfield town. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So no, that makes sense. Michael, he's reporting. He, he actually is talking to people. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to say like very like, look, people can can have opinions and all that stuff. Right. But when Chris or or myself, we talk about things that we're reporting, it's that like our what we're telling you goes beyond like what we read from other people. It goes into like it, it's phone conversations and quiet conversations off the record and a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I, I, I don't take anything personally if people don't agree or like what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, but I, I just think, you know, it, it's, it's up to, it's up to a very select group of people like owners, owners compose leagues. Like the major league baseball is a group of 30 owners. The NBA is a group of 32 owners or 30, 30, 30 owners. The NFL is 32 owners, right? Yeah. Like the owners are the league. So it is essentially a fraternity. It's not always what's, what's best for baseball as a whole, as a fan sees it. It can, it's how are, you know, how are 30 business people, high level business people viewing a decision? I can't imagine anyone, anyone in major league baseball wanting John Fisher to remain an owner in professional baseball. No one. Yeah, uh, but they he might have friends there. They still don't want him to be an owner. Yeah. And but owners don't want the precedent of your team sucks and fans are unhappy. So now you have to sell the team. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, this is like if you're you live in a neighborhood where all the houses are a billion dollar house. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Welcome back into the Insiders here on ESPN 1320. I am James Ham. Joining me, Chris Biederman from the Sacramento Bee and the Candlestick Chronicles, which is a spectacular 49ers podcast. Spectacular. Spectacular. Wow. Which, wow, I appreciate that. Which Chris uh, shares with our friend Kyle Madsen, who is, of course, on vacation in jolly old England. And he actually was in the chat at some point at today, which... I hope that he's not in the chat too much because Kyle and, he, and, and his uh, his lovely wife need to enjoy England uh, and their bad weather and bad food. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to refrain from commenting on the food in the UK, but I will say the weather is probably not as good as as parts of California. Yeah. What are we looking at today? It's 68 degrees and sunny and gorgeous here. Yes. This is a perfect day to take a very long walk. Um, Chris, 
uh, you are known not just for your coverage of the Sacramento Kings mm -hmm. and your hatred for Demonis Sabonis. <laughs> uh, you are also <laughs> just kidding. You are also known uh, for your work covering the San Francisco 49ers. And like, if we're going to have you here, we got to talk Niners, especially during the off season with, yeah. there's been a lot of movement, man. Whoa. Yeah. What's your takeaway so far? Um, I think it's been a pretty good off season. Like I think the off seasons get harder and harder, the better your team is um, because you have more highly paid guys and you have to, you, you know, you're, you're under more strict or you're under stronger financial constrictions to put a good team together. Um, but ultimately this is the off season of one, no quarterback controversy, which mm. is a breath of fresh air for yes. the first time since 20, since I mean 2019 really like does it uh, so like it, it's nice to know that we we don't have to talk about Brock Purdy coming back for an injury or what Trey Lance means um and can does Trey Lance still have a shot to be the starting guy or Jimmy, Jimmy Garoppolo or Jimmy Garoppolo warming up on the side field at training camp um and, and then ultimately becoming the backup like it's it's Brock Purdy's job, so the 49ers have some stability there, and they still have Brock Purdy on that rookie contract, which pays him less than a million dollars, which is, I think, inarguably the biggest bargain in the entire NFL. Mm -hmm. um, but what that means is the 49ers have money to give out elsewhere, and then you know Brandon Ayuk is obviously the guy that the 49ers have to take care of this off season. Um, because I, if you're Brandon Ayuk's agent, you, there's no way you're reporting to training camp without a new contract and playing out the the last year of your fifth, or the last year of your rookie contract, the fifth year option year, which pays you 14 million dollars guaranteed, when he could potentially get twice that average um, on on his next deal. The issue becomes: Do you want to pay Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel 50 million dollars combined? Well, the way NFL contracts work and the way a lot of 49ers contracts have worked is that they backload these deals. So when guys sign new contracts, their first cap, the first cap hit is five, six, seven, eight million dollars. And then as the contract matures, then those cap hits grow to the 28, 30, 32 million dollar mark. Um, so there's an opportunity for the 49ers to, to have Brandon Ayuk on another contract with Debo Samuel currently on his contract, which is near the top of the market and have those guys for 2024 20, and have it work totally fine. Beyond that, that's when things are going to get interesting. And this time next year, we are going to be talking about Debo Samuel nonstop. It's going to be, do you trade Debo Samuel? Do you try to sign him to an extension because he'll be entering the final year of his contract in 2025? Or do you draft his replacement? And that's what makes this year's draft interesting. Do the 49ers decide to take a receiver in a class that's highly regarded at the position to brace for the eventual departure of Debo Samuel? Because in my opinion, I think Brandon Ayuk is staying no matter what. It's Debo Samuel's future that is far more up in the air, in my opinion. Um, so that's that's what makes this draft interesting, right? Like I think... You know, there's a chance that the 49ers do what they always do and take a defensive lineman, whether it's an edge player or an interior guy, with their 31st overall pick. And maybe they identify somebody and trade up, or maybe they like someone early in round two and trade back and get more picks. Um, but to me, the way free agency is shaken out, basically all the additions have been on defense. You know, Leonard Floyd, Devondre Campbell, Malik Collins, who they came in the trade for, from Houston um, to replace Eric Armstead. The 49ers have supplemented the roster on defense through free agency, and I think they're going to go heavy offense in the draft. Okay. And so does that mean it's it's offensive tackle? I'm a little dubious of offense. Like, I, I know a lot of people talk about this year's offensive line class being really good and really deep. I just don't know if any of these guys at the back end of the first round are going to be good football players who help you right away. I think there, there are a lot of those guys are projects or a lot of the tackles who are expected to go at the back end of round one are probably better off at guard or center. And so to me, I wonder if like the 49ers are big on like this gold helmet prospect, right? A gold helmet guy is somebody, whether it's round one or round seven, it's a guy that you really believe in the person, like who he is from a character standpoint, like Fred Warner, George Kittle, those are like gold helmet guys, right? Like Talano Hufunga, guy like guys, that's like what your philosophy is that allows you to be successful in round five. 
when you get Trey Greenlaw and Talano Hufunga and guys like that, you're looking for like special character guys who also have the traits that you like. So I wonder if like somebody like Jackson Powers, um, uh, the, the center from, of course I come on the radio and then the guy's name eludes me right away. Uh, I cut the center from Oregon, <laughs> the center from Oregon, um, Jackson Powers, Johnson. I, I would, I didn't want to call him Johnson, Jackson Powers, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jackson, Jackson Powers, Johnson from Oregon, a center who some people think is a top 20 talent, but who might drop in the draft because of positional value. Would he be available at the back end of the first round? Would the 49ers jump to like 25 and go get a guy that they think could start right away and potentially be what Alex Mack was to Kyle Shanahan's offense? Because you look at where the 49ers have really been exploited in their biggest games, in the Super Bowls against the Chiefs, in the NFC Championship game against the Rams, it's interior of the offensive line. Yeah, Philadelphia. And Philadelphia, too. Yeah. So whether you have Jackson Powers Johnson play guard um, in the short term and then have him replace Jake Brendel, who's 31 years old and on a very, you know, a, a, Jake Brendel, I think his cap hit is like three or four million dollars. Maybe move Jake Brendel to right guard and have Jackson Powers Johnson play center. Maybe that's the upgrade you make along the offensive line. But if I were John Lynch, and I'm definitely not, but I would look hard if Jackson Powers Johnson is available at 24, 25, 26, and all it costs you is a third or fourth round pick to move up from 31 to get somebody who could be a high level starter from day one. I think you try to get that guy. Whereas a lot of these tackles just feel like projects and the 49ers, given where their championship window is, I don't know that they have time to wait around on a project like, you know, Amarius Mims or Taylor Guyton, Tyler Guyton, um, JC Latham, those guys. I just think that the 49ers need a plug and play guy who can start and play at a high level from from the jump. And I think Jackson Powers Johnson is is most likely to be that guy. OK. Yeah, it, so I like that idea because I've been asking for years, like, why aren't they addressing the problems on the offensive line? Even last year when Minnesota was giving away one of their starting guards midway through the season, you're like, why are they not jumping on this? Like, this is, you don't have the depth that you need. I also think that the, the 49ers probably need to do what you're saying right there. Like, go get a, like, a legitimate, long-term, like, uh, basically what they did when they did Mike Iapati, yeah. uh and, or... uh was it Davis? Um, Anthony Davis. Yeah. When they went out and, you know, that one draft where they bulk up everywhere, you're like, okay, this is what, this is how you build a team. Right. But I also think that they do need to go find that tackle uh, yeah. in the second round, the third round. Don't give up everything to move up because you're going to need that player as well because it's not like uh, Trent Williams is getting any younger. And it's not like your right tackle is a, is a bona fide starter on, on a championship team. So you need to kind of do both. You do. You need to spend all your money on that side of the ball, it feels like. Yeah. Or, you know, if you if you like Jordan Morgan from Arizona and you think he can be available with the 35th or 36th pick, maybe you move out of round one, get a, you know, get a third round pick or something like that. Yeah. And then draft him because maybe you like him, but you don't like him at 31 and you can get more assets. Um, there's also receiver, um, which I mentioned is is interesting that would you be have wild it would be a lot but like somebody like lad mcconkey who aside from having the name lad mcconkey i it's think mcconkey son right <laughs> yeah I, he the the receiver from georgia um i think he could be really interesting because he has a lot of the skills that kyle shanahan covets in terms of run blocking um but also shiftiness and like the 49ers haven't really had an elite slot receiver and if they're going to lose Juwan Jennings after the season, maybe Lad McConkey, somebody who can stick in the slot alongside Brandon Ayuk long term, and then would give you a replacement for Debo Samuel, albeit with a very different skill set. Okay. Yeah. All kinds of things going on. Uh, just tons, tons of things going on with the Niners. Um, you know, I like this discussion. Maybe we'll, we'll dive back into this uh, after the break. So we're the insiders here on ESPN 1320, brought to you by Jiffy Lube. I'm James. Chris Biederman filling in for Kyle Madsen today. We'll see you in just a minute. Yeah, Lad McConkey is is Phil McConkey's son, right? Oh, he's not. He's not related. Wow. Gene and Joseph McConkey. There's other McConkeys in the world. 
so are you not many... old enough to to know who Phil McConkie was? I, it's not ringing a bell. It's the New first York... time I've ever heard that last name. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So he was a uh, like a crazy. Who's the the wide receiver that played uh, like an Adam Thielen? Mm. Maybe not that good uh, for the New York Giants in the late eighties, early nineties. I'm I'm actually like I'm. That's crazy that he's not related to Phil McConkey. Yeah, Lad McConkey is a. Uh, I mean, shout out to the parent just naming your your kid Lad. Yeah, that's that's bold. <laughs> that's bold. Okay, so Phil McConkey is wow, he's sixty seven. Man, I'm dating myself with this one. Um, 1984, 1985, 1986, New York Giants. Uh, came back and played 87, 88 for the Giants. Um, finished his career with Phoenix and San Diego. Um, third wide receiver, but a dude who probably got hit harder than anyone that you've ever seen. Yeah. Like, and I'm not making, and it's, you know, I'm, I'm not making this comparison to say that I think Lad McConkey would be this guy, but in terms of the role that he would have within this offense, like think Cooper cup with the Rams, like just in terms of role, I'm not yeah, saying he yeah. would have, you know, become statistically one of the most productive receivers in the NFL, if not NFL history, but like that's that uh, that is how it would work. And you like Debo Samuel in the running game is, you know, you can you can make a passing game. That's sort of an extension of the running game with a bunch of short passes. Right. Yeah. And maybe that's what Lad McConkey gives you instead of handing off to Debo Samuel. Maybe it's Lad McConkey running a slant like okay. both like seven yard plays. All that makes sense. I... I'm surrounded by McConkey's. That's yes. <laughs> yes. See, I get that, David, especially with your Lord helmet. Uh, little that your avatar. Darth helmet. I'm not trading Brandon Ayuk if I'm the Niners, unless I'm getting a, a pick that would put me in range for a star. Yeah. Yeah. For Roma Dunes or one of those guys. Yeah. Top, top 10, top 12. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not either. Which is why, like, if you're another team, why would you trade that pick when you could draft a young guy on a rookie contract instead of, you know, paying Brandon Ayuk $25, $30 million a year? I get that, but you always have the worry that wide receivers bust about, you know, like yeah. they're a 50 50 proposition, even in the top of the first round. Sure. So, I mean, so many of them. Uh, Matt Mayoko, uh, the 49ers scheduled a pro day. Maxwell Anderson, Chigozi Anusium. I don't know how I said that name. Isaiah Avery, Armand Bailey. Uh, oh, it's a punter, Travis Benham. Jermaine Braddock, wide receiver out of Portland State. I'm offended they would even consider looking at a punter. They've got two punter, Alex Weir out of San Jose State. Maybe take him in the third round. <laughs> Goddamn third round punter picks. Travis, yeah, wow. There will oh. be there will be no Mitch Wisnowski slander while I'm sitting in this seat. <laughs> I love me some Buddy Lee, man. Andy Lee was a star. Oh, he was good. Yeah. <laughs> is he still is he still in the league? He was. Yeah. Andy Lee was like the cockroach of NFL punters, just never going away. Uh 2004 to 2002. He's 41 years old. He did not punt last season. Okay. Back I'm in five. Welcome back into the Insiders. Look at that. Chris likes uh, the intro. This is all Kyle's music. You know that. Um, I saw Post Malone with Kyle last summer, and it was a joy. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I could see Kyle like having a good time there. Big, big Post Malone guy. That and I, like him and I could see him at a K-pop concert. And uh, he's He's been seen at K-pop concerts. Yes, he is. Say. He is a big K-pop guy. He's uh, he's actually got me to listen to some K-pop. Uh, he also made me. <laughs> who did I have to Schoolboy Q? I had to listen to the new Schoolboy Q. That mm -hmm. that didn't go over well. Sure. I mean, there was some stuff I was like, okay, this is interesting. I, I like the mix. I, this is okay, but um, other stuff, I'm like, okay, I can't deal with this. I, I just can't. Yeah, yeah. So, I have a. Uh, yeah. 
Kyle's mostly got good music taste, but I haven't I haven't hopped on the um the K pop train with him. Okay. Just yet, but you know, maybe one day he'll convince me. I like it as intro music. I think it's cool. Sure. Yeah, I just don't know that I'm gonna sit there and rock out all the time to it. Um I you know what, we were gonna jump into the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh we're gonna push that back a segment. Uh, because I, I I like the Niners talk that we're we're going through right now. So we we've talked about their need to to bolster the offensive line. Um, we also like this wide receiver thing that's hanging out there. Um, we know that they're going to burn at least one third round pick on a running back because that's who they are in their soul. Um, but don't they have a lot of lot of draft picks this year? Uh, I'd have to go back and look. Admittedly, given like uh, being on Kings road trips. Um, and all of those things. I have not been as locked in on 49ers stuff as I would like to be, but we do have the Google machine, and I know this is great radio. Um, all right, so... Oh, 10. They have, yeah, they have picks in round one, two, three. They have four fourth-round picks, Oh, a fifth, two sixths, and a seventh. Okay, so what do you think... Uh, like, I don't have the chart. What do you think it would take to move from number 31 to, say, number 24, where you're talking about selecting somebody? Um, well, they have three forts, so I would start there and, you know, I, it probably a couple of those mid round picks, a couple of those day two picks. Okay. So or, like, or, uh, sorry, early, maybe, maybe your third round pick and maybe one of your fourth round picks. Okay. Okay. That's you, what you think it would cost you. Yeah. Which I think, you know, look like this isn't a team that is rebuilding. This is a team that's trying to win a Super Bowl next year. So, you know, given that the hit rate on a fourth round pick is, is probably, 25 percent at best like i would have no problem doing any of those picks yeah and you also have a very packed roster already yeah like i mean this isn't there there's no room for 10 picks to make the the 2024 um san francisco 49ers squad yeah i would agree with that like that all of their starters on offense are back right the only additions that they've made really on offense they got josh dobbs to play back a quarterback and Brandon Parker to potentially compete for the swing tackle job. Um, so, you know, and Patrick Taylor potentially to play running back, even though, you know, they have Christian McCaffrey and Elijah Mitchell and Jordan Mason. So like, okay, they, all of their, all of their start, they brought back John Feliciano, obviously, but all their starters that just got them to the Super Bowl um, are still there. John Jennings, they tendered. So yeah, um, they had that, but they do need to, I mean, to your point there, there aren't really any starting jobs up in the air. Maybe, um, yeah, I don't think maybe if you draft a corner in the first round and then you, you move Diamador Lenore inside full time, okay. maybe that's, that's how you draft a starter. I just don't know, like aside from interior of the offensive line, I don't know that there's a spot where you're drafting a surefire starter in round one. Okay. I, I still, um, like for me, the most important player on that team, bar none, like I, for me is Trent Williams and like yeah. you have to, I would want someone as his understudy for the next year and hopefully two years somehow get him to play one more year after this coming year. Uh, to me, that would be the the perfect situation where you literally have somebody who's learning from the, one of the greatest left tackles in the game. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's where I would kind of attack. Uh, yeah. Like all kinds of good stuff. Uh, we're going to have you on more this summer as we, get through 49er season uh, as we get to the buildup and, you know, get into the draft and everything else. I know yeah. uh, there's a week where James is take going to take off in, in June uh, where maybe you even come up and hang out with Kyle for a little bit. Candlestick Chronicles hits the, hits the radio airwaves. That's right. Oh, man. I, and I think I'm going to do something silly like the buildup to free agency. So you guys are going to be like flying solo, like in the week, Okay. before free agency starts so well, yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes um maybe the kings will be playing in the finals um yeah that's that's always a possibility <laughs> yeah because that that will take you into uh the second week in in june i not the third week where i'm gonna take off and go to okay. cabo all right so you'll miss the parade yeah i, I well <laughs> see i might have to change the cabo plans if that's if that's the what what's happening? Can you imagine? Yeah, babe. Because I um got to change the um vacay. Kings out to the final somehow. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, the wife would go. Okay. Like she would go with the boys, and I would meet up later. Yeah. <laughs> it it would be the way it is. Like she take she take our sons and and potentially their friends. Uh, we'll we'll see. Um. <laughs> let's sounds... get, go ahead, Jesse. 
Oh, I thought you were going to say something. That was me. I was just going to say it sounds like a very solid family dynamic. Yeah, we're all good. You're good. Yeah, yeah, we're all good. Um, let's get to let's bust through this good, bad, and the ugly really quick. Um, for me, uh, the first thing I have for my good coming out of this game was that uh, Keon Ellis played out of his mind. And it's not just the three-point shooting. It's the seven rebounds, the five assists, the three blocks. I thought he was absolutely brilliant, and he's he's showing you the potential for him to be not only a rotational player, but maybe even the starting shooting guard next season. Yeah, I would agree. I think I think Keon's been a revelation, honestly. I think if there's one, I think he's the most positive thing to take away from the season so far. Oh, that's it. I, I would agree. Because like like we talked about earlier, like when you looked at what the Kings needed at the trade deadline, they didn't go get a three and D guy, mm-hmm. but they got one internally without giving anything up who's playing at a higher level than probably they could have expected anyone they would have gotten in a dra- in a trade. Yeah, and not only that, but they've got them locked up for pennies on the dollar for two more years. Yeah. Uh after this year. Uh what was what was your good from this game? Um mine's just Fox's three point shooting and it's more zooming out to like season long and and you know what it means for for his career. He's taking almost eight attempts per game. Um and he's shooting it at you know almost 37%. Uh, he shot 37.1% in his second season, but that was on three attempts per game. And now he's at eight. Um, so just that efficiency has been a huge leap for his overall offensive game. Um, and like I said, something he needs to, I I think he needs to add to his game to take it to the next level is the ability to get to a free throw line, the free throw line at an even better clip. Yeah. I think if you're able to establish yourself as De'Aaron Fox, as a, like a knockdown three point shooter, what that does for your game going forward, especially if you have players like Monk, if you have other pieces around you that are three and D pieces that can take some of the weight off you. Uh, yeah, it just provides like, like how do you defend him? Like if he's again, the 7.9 threes per game and shooting 36.7, I'll take that. I'll take that all day long. I, I wish his overall field goal percentage was higher. Like it was last year, last year he shot 51.2, which is maybe an aberration this year. He's at 46.2. Um, but overall, like just his play has been tremendous and, and it's hard to take that next leap as a score to go from 25 to like close to 27. It just is the consistency that it takes to be that guy is really ridiculous. Um, let's get to our, our bad. Uh, what do you got for bad? Yeah, I think it's just the inability for them to score on an elite defense without Malik Monk. Mm. Um, I think that's that's a, a, a just super apparent. Malik's Malik's value to this team in particular is underscored by how much of an issue they have scoring against elite defenses. Like yes. OKC has, like the Knicks have, like the Mavericks have, um, Boston has in, in these games that they've lost. Um, so that that to me is is the main thing. They just don't have the horses right now to be able to make up for Malik Monk's absence. I totally agree. Uh, my quick uh, bad for the game was Harrison Barnes. He just has to play better. Uh, you know, one of eight from three. I know he got to the f- uh, the free throw line, which to me was such a welcome sight. I know he had six rebounds, such a welcome sight. Number one, get to the free throw line every game. Number two, get get a rebound every game. He's under three rebounds a game on the season now. And for a guy who who's averaged five and even six a couple of seasons in his career, to me, it's not acceptable. Even if you do have Demontis to bonus, it's just not acceptable. He's got to do more if he's not scoring and he's got to do it across the board. Uh, let's get to the ugly. Uh, what do you got for ugly? Yeah. So I, I think, you know, Mike Brown always talks about, and you've heard him say this all the time, like control the controllables, effort and energy. Mm-hmm. I think the Kings, and I think it starts with the coaching, have let the officiating hijack their energy. Like they are, they are so focused on the free throw disparity, and you know the fact that um, that Luka Doncic outshot the Kings from the free throw line by himself in that loss a couple weeks ago. The fact that Jalen Brunson did the same thing against the Knicks. Um, It's obviously not what you want. But it cannot be something that you're harping on in a way that I think is is allowing you to get emotionally hijacked by the officiating. And yeah, the Kings never get a good whistle. And I understand it's a like the officiating thing dates back a long time and there's yeah. very good reason for it. I understand that completely. But for the Kings to be to get to the level they want to go, 
they need to listen to Mike Brown and Mike Brown needs to listen to his own advice, control the controllables. They cannot control the officiating. Yeah. So I think, you know, effort and energy, they're letting their energy get hijacked by the officiating and the fact they're not getting calls. They're a small team. They don't have guys who are great getting to the free throw line. They need to accept that fact. They have players. Well, I talked to De'Aaron Fox and Keegan Murray about this in New York after the Jalen Brunson game. De'Aaron Fox is not going to be a guy who baits referees into making calls. Like he's he talked about how he doesn't want to do that. I would argue maybe he probably should incorporate that into his game. Be a foul but, grifter. But yeah, well, not e- not even grifting, <laughs> but just having that like sh- like Shea Gilgis Alexander gets the line a ton, and it's a huge part of why he's an MVP candidate. Frankly, like it's a huge part of his offensive game, and it helps him out a lot. And that was apparent last night when he dropped forty points on the Kings and he beats the Kings. Yep. So I would just say it goes twofold. Don't let the officiating bother you. Just let it be. It's going to be what it is. In the offseason, get your best offensive players to get better at getting to the line. Okay. All right. Uh, mine, we're going to cut this really short, though. Uh, like I, I just said, Sabonis, like he just didn't, he wasn't able to come up in a huge moment. Eight points, 13 rebounds, five assists, six turnovers. Uh, only two of seven from the field. Uh, like he should have taken them to the woodshed. That's who he has been against that team. I know there are reasons, but uh, just a really, really uh, not great game for Sabonis. Watched his uh, his double double streak end at sixty one. All right, we're gonna step aside. When we come back, we're gonna do a Jiffy Lou player of the game. Uh, we're gonna talk about where this whole thing went wrong, and uh, I think we probably will have a handoff today. So you're listening to the Insiders on ESPN thirteen twenty, brought to you by Jiffy Lou. We'll be back in a sec. Sorry about that, Jesse. Do we go over? Yeah, we'll just have a short final segment. Did I yammer too much? No, My no, bad. we're all right. My bad. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> yeah. SGA 16 to 20 from the free throw line. 16 to 20. Uh, Should say, um, I know Mike Brown talked about it being a travel, that one shot. Like oh, it's horrible. Davion, Davion locked him up. I thought it was an offensive foul. Yeah, he took the elbow and moved Davion out of the way with his elbow and got the shot off. I After mean, it was he took six steps. It was a travel. His pivot foot definitely moved. Yeah, yeah but yeah. I thought the more egregious thing was not calling the offensive foul there than the well, travel. And that was the one. That was the the shot that gave them the lead. And you know, again, if that goes the other way, the Kings have the ball with a shot with an opportunity to 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 take a lead. I think the game was tied when that happened. Um, and it and I don't think the Kings scored again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and like I talk about the free throw stuff because like I know the Kings want to play fast, yeah. but so often in the NBA, you see opponents go on these runs where it's 18 to two and you can't hit a shot and everything they're doing is going in. You just got to sometimes you just got to slow that up by getting the free the foul line. Well, that and even like it, it plays into that moment where like they're the game is hanging in the balance and they take four threes in the span of, I think it was 15 seconds. Yeah. They kept getting the offensive rebound, kicking it out. Davion Mitchell missed the first one, got a rebound, kicked it out to Davion again. He missed the second one, kicked it out to Harrison Barnes. He missed one. I think Trey Lyles missed one. It's like, man, just attack the rim. Somebody between Harrison Barnes, Trey Lyles and Davion, they went two for 14 from three. Mm. Um, You know, the Kings are a high variance team. Right. Like we see him do this any given night. Yeah. A lot of it's just because of the three point shooting. They're so reliant on the three point shooting. Three point shooting is by definition high variance. They're going to be a high variance team in terms of win wins and losses. Yeah. So if they can get guys, you know, if either, you know, they can get Keegan to be somebody who's better at attacking the rim, getting to the line. If De'Aaron can get to the line more, I think that would be huge for them. Even if they can find somebody in the offseason that that gives you something different uh, i'm definitely uh i'm i'm definitely more looking at this roster and saying i, I want three and d guys i want the support pieces for sabonis sure and i want i want you know long athletic three four somebody that can block shots at the four um uh, you know because that's what again it's how denver does it you know like denver they go out they draft zeke and Najee, and they they work with him for years trying to build him into that player but it's, they also have Aaron Gordon, yeah. who is that guy who can block shots, who can play defense at like an extreme level. Aaron Gordon is the guy I watch the most who I think, man, this guy would be perfect on the Kings. Of course. Well, you think that because he looks perfect alongside Jokic, who's yeah. 
like the jumbo version of but like of if Sabonis. if imagine if Harrison Barnes could guard one through five at a high level. That's what essentially what Aaron Gordon is giving the the, the Nuggets. Um, Brian, this isn't true. <laughs> Just so you know, it's not. Um. Well, he's being respectful about it, so. They, yeah, as long as you're being <laughs> respectful about it, yeah, uh, that that's not always true. And and every GM is different, but that's not always true. The current GM does not shy away from talking to reporters. He just doesn't do so on the record very often. Yeah, like I, especially lately, he's been around quite a bit more. Yeah. It used to be he was around a lot more. Yeah. But here late in the season, like he's been around. And the assistant GM is around all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Whether we tell you that we talk to somebody or not. Yeah. That like. Yeah. There's all kinds of conversations that are had. It's always a thing with reporting. Like you don't say every, you, you don't say publicly everything you hear. You say publicly what you feel comfortable reporting or that you've heard credibly from enough places. Yes. Yes, yes. Well, not only that, but um, like there are times where we we disguise where we're getting information. <laughs> yeah, like that's that's typically how we do it. So I don't know. Oh, look at that! The Spurs will rule Wimby out for tonight's game due to a right ankle injury management. Oh, we're back. Welcome back into the Insiders on ESPN 1320. I'm James Ham. Joining me today, Chris Biederman from the Sacramento Bee and Candlestick Chronicles. Make sure if you, uh, wherever you're out there, um, check out the Candlestick Chronicles. Find it wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, make sure to uh, give them a rating review. Subscribe to their channel. All that good stuff. I appreciate uh, you, man. Yeah, you and Kyle do good work over there. Thank you so, so much. You do. You do too with all your King stuff, of course. Yeah, it's it, we're all over the board. Like you, you got to have all these different avenues now. It's just you can't just have one avenue for uh, for what you do as a sports media member anymore. Um, let's let's do something that we we should have done earlier in the show, and that's give away a Jiffy Lube player fast break player of the game. Um, so if you're sitting somewhere where you can access computer uh go to oh no i'm gonna have to yes you're gonna do this but maybe jesse can help me out here i don't think i told promotions who the fast break player of the game is <laughs> so do what you want to text me and i can let them know or do we want to just say it out in the air and i'll go let them know uh how about uh i text you really quick and then we come back to this in like five minutes sounds good um let's see does where... it rhyme with eon kellis yes all right. <laughs> oh, see, this Sorry, is... Sorry, uh, I hope I didn't just blow up your spot. No, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> we are, of course, without Kyle here, uh, we are producing on the fly, which is always uh, which is always fun. But hey, it's been a good week. Uh, ham and side dishes. It's, it's been fun, right? Uh, let's, let's, uh, let's get to the big question today that I have written in here that I... I like, I don't think that the wheels have completely fallen off the bus. But I do feel like this season went wrong somewhere where we now have got to a point where I think all of us can see how good the Kings are. We can see the ceiling. like, And that's something that I don't think that you want like heading into a playoff or heading into a play-in where all of a sudden I sure do feel like this team is hard-capped like on who they are as, as, a, as a group. And partially that's because of the injuries to to both Malik Monk and Kevin Herter, but I think it's also like you see it. You see yeah. you run up against one game after another where you're good enough to compete for half. You're good enough to compete for maybe three quarters, but there are going to be certain teams and that you can't get past. And unfortunately, some of those teams 
uh, well, all of those teams that you're going to struggle with uh, are typically playoff teams. Yeah, I mean, so I think there are a few different ways to look at this, right? Like if you look at the expectations coming into the season, um, I think the Kings over under, according to Vegas, was 44. Um, and they've already surpassed that with a few games left. Right. So from that standpoint, it's successful. If they win their final three games, they'll have the same record they had last year. Um, but I think what what we're learning a year later is last year was a little bit different from the standpoint of, you know, in most seasons, the record they have they had last year, 48 and 34 is probably good for like a five, six, seven seed. Right. Not necessarily a three seed. I think their record last year spoke to how down the West was overall. And I'm not trying to take anything away from what the Kings did last year, but I think that's just a reality of it now that we're a year removed and we see how much better the West is this year than last year. I kept saying it the whole time last year, yeah. like a, a typical 48 win team. That's that's a, a six seed. It's a seven seed. Yeah. I mean, there was a year where the the Phoenix Suns won 48 and didn't make the playoffs. Yeah. And it wasn't that long ago, like yeah. seven years ago, eight years ago. Yeah. So I, I think like progression isn't always linear. And I think, you know, the, the Kings are now and Mike Brown talks about this all the time. The Kings are now dealing with expectations. They're not sneaking up on anybody. And the challenge of going from bad to good is a lot easier than the challenge of going from good to great. And they're learning the hard way of how difficult it is to go from good to great. And maybe they can get there. Maybe. Darren Fox becomes an MVP candidate next year. Maybe Demona Sabonis, you know, elevates his game to where you have to consider him for a first or second team NBA spot next year. And he starts scoring more, right? And he improves defensively. Maybe that happens. Maybe Keegan Murray takes a step to becoming an all-star. Um, but this year is sort of a transition year, in my opinion. And, and I think the Kings hold that view. Like you talk to you talk to people with the Kings and they'll say, well, you know, you look at the Nuggets, the Nuggets didn't win didn't become contenders until years, you know, four, five, six mm -hmm. of the Michael Malone era in Denver. And the Kings are in year two of, of Mike Brown, uh, Mike Brown here. And that's still a relatively young team. So if you're trying to be positive about the Kings long-term prognosis, you could say, all right, maybe this team just gets better internally the same way, a similar way the Nuggets did when they elevated themselves as champions. Really like the only guy they added was Aaron Gordon. It wasn't like they brought in a whole bunch of new guys. It was mostly guys that they drafted and developed. Maybe if Keegan becomes an all-star mm -hmm. and De'Aaron and, and Domas continue to elevate their games, the Kings get there. And I think that's what the Kings are banking on, that this is year two of like a four, five, six-year-long process rather than, you know, I don't think they're going into the summer if, if they don't advance in the playoffs being like, oh, we got to blow it up. This seems never going to work. Yeah, I'm hoping that that's not the case, right? You yeah. always hope because there is a volatility to this franchise that's, that's still there, right? That where you're hoping, hey, please don't make a giant mistake. And whether that's coaching, whether that's, you know, front office, whether whatever it is, don't make that mistake now. Like, no, 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 stay the course. You're, you're, which I, I keep coming back to this. Like people who, who remember the great era of Sacramento Kings, eight year run where they were phenomenal. They, they forget that it was a 27 win team coming out in a 60 game, uh, like a, a shortened lockout, shortened season. It was a 44 win team in year two. Like it wasn't until year three where they took this up to 55 games. And again, there was no Doug Christie on that first team. There was no Mike Bibby on that first team. You know, sure, you had Peja, you had, but you had a young Peja, just like you have a young Keegan Murray who developed into something greater. You had, a veteran in in uh, Vladi Divac that like held down the fort. You had a a, a piece in uh, in Chris Weber that you could really compare right now to De'Aaron Fox as far as like the where they stand in the league, their stardom, like who they are, all that stuff. Like all of these things, you just think it was one eight year stretch. Just like if you go back and you think about the two thousand two Western Conference Finals, all those games bleed into each other. Mm -hmm. Right. And you, you start thinking about when Mike Bibby gets elbowed in the face and gets called for a foul and Kobe Bryant play uh, the Samaki Walker three pointer that shouldn't have counted at at halftime. Um, the the tip out to Robert Ori, all these things kind of go into each other and uh, and you forget that, like, realistically, there Bobby Jackson didn't come till year three. And it was Tony Delk and it was Vernon Maxwell. And then you get to, you know, like, again, the Corliss for Doug trade. 
the team that you see in year one and year two of, of a typical playoff run is not the team you see in year three and year four and year five. Yeah. It's totally different. And so whether the Kings take a huge step back here and by huge step back, I mean, they've been a playoff team all season long. If they don't make the playoffs, it's almost situational. Like I, I kind of feel like even if you look at the last two weeks, like I don't think they lose both teams to Dallas with if if Malik Monk is there. I don't think they they lose a game. Well, well, maybe you lose to the Knicks, maybe you don't. Maybe you lose to OKC, maybe you don't. Maybe you you lose to the Celtics, maybe you don't. But those things, if you had Malik Monk, I don't think all of those things would have happened. Yeah. Like, and so I think, and if you give this team one more win, you give them two more wins. This is why we kept talking about all these crappy games early in the season where they lost to a Charlotte, they lost to a Detroit. We we bring these things up all the time because it matters. Yeah. Like when you get to this point, they're literally a game behind the Phoenix Suns for the number seven seed. There are two games behind the Pelicans for the number six seed. They're right there, but they're also just barely above these other two teams. And And part of it's because... You, you failed in in moments that you couldn't early in the season and i think like more so than what the kings can do from in terms of like adding guys like the kings are not going to win a championship unless De'Aaron fox just becomes that dude like there's there's no number of moves that monty mcnair could feasibly make that make the kings a championship roster that doesn't include De'Aaron just taking it to a hall of fame level mm. right so that that to me is the most important thing is that like is the Kings' best players continue to elevate their games and then become some of the best players in the conference because that's their that's the most reasonable path to getting to contention. No, I, I think it's a it's a really good point what you bring up. And not only that, I think the other point is you have to continue to support those players in the right way. So yeah, it's not just saying, hey, De'Aaron Fox has to do this to carry the team. It's well, the team also has to do this, this, and this to support him in a way that allows him to become that player. Because as of right now, I think you've kind of capped what you can do with him until you, again, you add a key on Ellis that does what, what he does and, and has that impact and, and allows him to not play defense on the toughest defender on the toughest offensive player every single night that you have other players that can, you know, set screens and do things like Domana Sabonis does. We got Kenny Caraway coming in for the handoff. This is awesome. What's up, dude? Let me turn my mic on. There we go. There we go. Let's let's add you here, uh, Kenny. Before we do that, we we have to give away our Jiffy Lou Fast Break Player of the Game. Sure. Um, it was my fault. I forgot to call. Uh, forgot to walk down to promotions and give them a name today. Uh, so if you're out there in the wild, uh, go to ESPN1320.com right now. Uh, there's a big giant Jiffy Lou logo sitting right there for a contest. Uh, click on that and uh, enter to win. You're entering to win not only a $100 gift certificate to Jiffy Lube, uh, which is amazing. We're we're running low. We we had 82 of these things to give away at the beginning of the season. We only got, uh, I think, counting this one, four left. Um, but also on top of that, uh, to you're entering to win a Sacramento Kings jersey. Mm. Uh, we have one of those left to give away uh, that we're going to do right after the season. So. The password for today is, of course, uh, it, to me it was clear, the Jiffy Lou player of the game was Keon Ellis. So go again to ESPN 1320, type in Keon Ellis. Two words, K-E-O-N-E-L-L-I-S, Keon Ellis. That is your Jiffy Lou fast break player of the game. There we go. What's going on, man? How are you over there? Oh, man, I'm all right. I'd be doing a lot better if they uh, would have pulled out that win last night. That yeah, was tough. That was tough, man. And 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 I, I'm talk about a little bit on the show, but um, a lot on the show. We got four hours, but uh, <laughs> you do have four hours. <laughs> but um, I don't have four hours today. I know. I know a lot of people are are upset with blowing that lead and uh, the amount of threes they took and everything. Last night, to be honest with you, after that game, I, I felt bad for those guys. I felt bad for them because we we can nitpick losing a lead and all this other stuff and the threes. I thought they played their asses off last night. I thought they really worked to try and get that game. And however they had to do it is however they felt they had to do it. But, man, they 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 really played their asses off last night. And, and it's it's tough when when you see a team play that that hard. And, and, and they're under man. We always forget. We always forget that. An yeah. under man team um, was trying to go into the team that may be the 
uh, record-wise, end up being the best re- team in the Western Conference and tried to steal one last night. And they were this close. They didn't get it done. And I, I just, I as a, you know, every, I'm not telling anybody how to feel about it, but as as a competitor, as a, you know, athlete who's been in those shoes, I saw them working. I saw them grinding last night to try and get one. And uh, they just came up short last night. That was that was tough. I felt bad for those guys, man. Yeah, I think the one and three trip, it's it's going to come back. It'll be like etched on their gravestone. This is the one that they got away, but I think we saw it against the Knicks. They were highly competitive. We saw it against the Celtics, whether we believe what happened against the Celtics or not. Like I, I'm not one who prescribes to, you know, a team that basically sits everybody in the final seven minutes. You go on a 21 two run, whatever it was, it would, it still showed the heart that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And then of course this game where again, you're just right there and you just don't have enough. And I, I you know, we have people who like don't believe in the coaching or don't believe in this or that. Like, look, man, what are you supposed to do when you throw Colby Jones out there? And this is not a knock on Colby Jones. Mm-hmm. He played great against Boston. He he even played really well, you know, in between. Like he's he's played really well, but at the same time, you're counting on somebody who is a, a rookie second round pick who hasn't played the entire season. He's been the Stockton Kings most of the entire season, but that's what you're down to mm-hmm. at this moment. And I, I don't know, Chris. What do you think about how Mike has sort of handled the adversity here? Because I think that's Mike always talks about adversity and he's the one who is dealing with adversity as much as anyone else. Yeah. I mean, what, no matter how this season goes, like to me, this is going to be a growing experience. Like if the Kings get to the promised land next year, two years, three years down the line, we'll be able to look back at this season and a few guys in particular, maybe Colby Jones, maybe he evolves into a core rotational piece on a, on a really good contending team, mm-hmm. right? We will look at this season as, hey, this team grew a lot here. Like this group grew a lot here going through adversity. Because like I said earlier, like as much as last year was a giant step for them organizationally, there wasn't a whole lot of adversity that they dealt with. Like the adversity was like the organization not being to the playoffs in 16 years, but that's not really weighing on the players because they haven't been here for 16 years. Like they haven't been the ones who have been coming up short. A lot of those guys have been here only a handful of years. Like the adversity they dealt with wasn't really tangible. This year, they're dealing with tangible adversity with Trey Lyles missing time, with Malik Monk and Kevin Herter missing time. So like they're going through that. And it's what Mike says all the time. Like, you know, the the Nuggets, Nicole, he cites Nicole Jokic saying basically like you have to go through stuff in order to get to a level where you can achieve what you want to achieve. And the Kings are going through stuff. Mm-hmm. And so can they get to that level that they want to get to, that the Nuggets got to? That remains to be seen. But this is an important step in their development, I think, no matter how the season turns out. Yeah, I'm with you on that one, man. And like I said, you know, they 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 had an opportunity. You know, they were up 20, and they had an opportunity to win that game. I don't – I know people talk about, um, you know, the Kings aspect of it, of like how they're, they're going to blow a lead and all this other stuff. That was one aspect of it. In my mind, I was like, all right, well, OKC ain't going to let it. They ain't going to lose by 20. Their defense was like, incredible in the second yeah, half. OKC going to turn up. Shea going to turn up. Like, that's going to happen. The Kings are going to have to be able to weather that, and hopefully they can still still get a W. But they 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 act like they just playing the blind sisters of the poor, and they was going <laughs> to let it be 20. Like, OKC, a good team. You know what I mean? So it's it, 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 was, it was a terrible, terrible loss last night. Um, that was a gut punch and a number of gut punches in the last month or so. Okay, so the thing I would point out to you is, like, it's not just the Kings, right? This is the NBA. The West is brutal. Mm-hmm. The NBA as a whole right now is so incredibly talented. And what we're seeing, like, I I was, I turned on the, I was looking at the box scores. I was looking at the the ticker last night. And I'm like, okay, that, that score can't be real. The, the Phoenix Suns, who are in the exact same position the Kings are in, the exact same position, they trailed 37 to 10 after one quarter last that night. That was crazy. <laughs> 37 to 10. And you, Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, Kevin Durant, Grayson Allen, and Drew Eubanks. Like, you can take Drew Eubanks and whether he can play or not, like, that doesn't matter. The fact is, that's who their starting five was. Mm-hmm. They got molly whopped. A- and then, you know what? The final score, they they were down at one point. It was like 53 to something. It was like 53 to 13 or something. It was like outlandish. They trailed by 37 points, the Suns did. And they ended up losing by 13. Mm. 
So that shows you that, like, look, the NBA, like, leads come and go. Mm -hmm. 37 down to 13. Like, like, they come and go. And, and so we don't want to talk about it like it's, oh, it's the Kings keep blowing 20-point leads. It's a, the omen of death. They're up by 20. You're done. Mark Dagnalt said something in his post-game press conference last night that I hadn't even thought of, which I thought was fascinating. It was a 27-point swing last night, right, from the Kings leading by 20 to OKC winning by seven, right? Mm -hmm. So 27-point swing. Like the average, Mark Dagnalt said the average swing in an NBA game is like 20, 22 points. Mm -hmm. So like those swings just happen mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a, it's a matter of managing them, you yeah. know, like throughout the year, you just got to learn to manage them, which is why I keep harping on Kings need to get to the free throw line to stop those runs. No, it's totally <laughs> um, true. I mean, what do you guys got coming up on, on the show? There's a whole nother situation. We'll talk about that. <laughs> I mean, the man shot 20 damn free throws. Yeah. Fox didn't take his first free throw to the, to the fourth quarter. That's true. The hell's going on uh, here? <laughs> so we'll talk about more about that though. We'll talk about Kings, 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 man. That's, that's what's going on today. There's a lot to dissect. Um, they got that hoop type article with with uh, Sabonis talking about Monk and Monk talking to uh, hoop type about you know his future. So we'll get into those as well. But damn, Kings Kings lost one man. That's tough. Tough one. All right. Uh, thanks everybody for tuning in today. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Uh, we have Jake Gaden from CBS 13. Jake. Uh, so we'll we'll be back. Uh, ham and side dishes. What we're calling this week. <laughs> uh, Thanks to like Chris Biederman from the Sacramento Bee and, of course, Candlestick Chronicles for jumping on. You have a good time? Yeah, I had a great time, man. This kind of flew by. I uh, appreciate you having me. Go All blue. Right. <laughs> All right, so uh, we got D'Lo and Casey coming up next. You've been listening to the Insiders on ESPN 1320, brought to you by Jiffy Lube. See you in a little while. Awesome. Yeah. What up, Chris? How you What's doing? up, man? I'm doing good. Thanks, everybody out there. Guy? Um, first, the oh, first, there we go. You guys, if you don't mind, thumbs yeah, up would like be button. thumbs up would be amazing. Soren keyword was um Keon Ellis. Keon Ellis is the keyword. Keon Ellis. Yeah, Drew Down. I I can guarantee you what Jake is about to be yelling about is stupid Yukon. That's what he's gonna be yelling about. Stupid Jake Gaden. <laughs> Uh, you're disappointed in me. Yeah, uh, you were saying something wild out there, Zay. You were you were saying something wild. I, I don't even know what, but it was wild. What's that? Oh, Chris said he appreciates everybody out there. Every team in the league is losing 20-point leads, Zay. That's what you're all upset about. Every team in the league is is blowing 20-point leads. Come on now. Oh, Zabo. We got a we got a battle. Let's let's do it. Zay versus Zabo. What do you think uh Jake's
thing about this too is that there's only one team in the league that leads them. Um, that yeah, only one team in the league that leads the that stat as far as losses with twenty point leads. What's up, guys? What up, dude? Vibe check, vibe check. One, two, one, two. one more time for the good time. Vibe check. What's good? What's good? What's good? Welcome into the Wednesday, April 10th edition of Dealing with KC. I'm Damian Barling. The ultimate needle mover in God mode himself. He is the Kenny Caraway. Yes, sir. Acknowledge me. Right, we right, early looks of it, they ain't going to be happy with me. You're gonna be happy with me today. Give a little preview of how I felt on the oh. on the handoff, and they, they weren't happy with that. I, they didn't want to hear that. I was catching up on. I was I was getting some KSFM things settled. I missed it. I'm 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 anxious to hear this. Uh, catch me up. We know no, what you happened. You may not be one to hear this. Jesse may not be one to hear this. After yes, I don't want to hear nothing. Well, I tell you right now, Jesse don't want to hear. It. <laughs> well, I'll say this. Um, we sat in here. Doing our afternoon drive show over at 102.5 KSFM. Shout out to everybody who checks us out over there. We appreciate you. Like a couple of jackasses screaming at the television. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, just keep the lead at 12. Don't go to 20. Then we get to the point where it gets to 15 and Kenny Caraway utters that old familiar phrase of, well, now it'd be disappointing. Walked into a meeting after the show. Looked at the phone. King's up 19. Mm, mm. Tribal chief looks me dead in my eyes and says, well, that means they'll lose by seven. Mm, mm, mm. Tragic. That team goes up 20 and everyone loses confidence. <sighs> Kept saying, what's going on here in the first quarter? Oh, they're just hitting threes. This is bad. This is bad. Why is it bad? Because it's not realistic. What I didn't count on is them just deciding they weren't going to play basketball any other type of way. 58 threes yesterday for the Sacramento Kings. That's a lot. In route to blowing their league leading fourth game that they led by 20. Mm -hmm. The second time on this four-game road trip. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The second time on this four-game road trip that they've blown a 20-point lead and lost. Mm. I don't think that's a Malik Monk problem either. There's a lot of problems, and my God, we'll talk about all of them. But tell me how you feel. I missed it. Again, I was, you, you know, we had a, a couple of complications uh, with a girl, Tasha, in the middays over at 102.5. Mm -hmm. Shout out, so Tasha. I, I, didn't get to hear, uh, I didn't get to hear the handoff, so, so catch me up. No, nah, man, I, I basically said last night how I felt, and today hasn't changed about how I feel about this team or that performance or what happened last night. Man, I felt bad for them last night. I thought they played their asses off last night. I thought they played hard. I thought they 
they was out there scrapping, trying to get it done. And they fell short. They fell short. They didn't get it done. They didn't make two more threes on the night or whatever. But I thought they played their asses off last night. And the fact that they weren't able to get it done, that's tough. That's tough. Okay. I, I didn't think I didn't think losing the, the lead, like people talk about like losing the lead. And I, I get all that, you know, losing a 20 point lead, but they, it's they, not they weren't they weren't playing um you know Cal middle school last but it's night. not I don't I don't think I'm not I'll speak for myself. It's not losing a 20 point lead. Mm-hmm. It's losing another 20 point lead. You did it to the Bulls too, right? But yeah, but Bulls but this uh, is this, Phoenix, this is what and New this, York and last this, night. this may be where the frustration comes into play. They're not related. I don't care. I, I don't believe they're related. Yesterday was a singular game that they lost a 20 point lead. It's not. Um, I know everybody likes to think, you know, and I, I have the same feelings. You talked about what I said, but because they lost a 20 point lead three other times doesn't mean they had to lose or didn't have to lose. They're singular games. They're not related. That's fine. So let's go to let's go to let's go to uh the Charlottes mm-hmm. and the Detroits and the Portlands. And then let's fast forward to DeMontis Sabonis stealing the ball and, and, and against the San Antonio Spurs mm-hmm. and 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 beating the Spurs. I think it was 131 to 129 or something like that. Mm-hmm. Everybody remembers that game, right? Everybody remember what Domas said after the game? That was the game where he said, Oh no, here we go again. Mm-hmm. We can think they're not related. Mm. You don't think there was an oh no, here we go again moment last night? Again, again, four times over an 82 78 game season. Uh-huh. That's, 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 uh, okay, that's not a high percentage. It just happened a couple of days ago. What what I'm saying, and no, you I, have the most in the entire league. What 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 I'm saying, n- let me clarify it. Okay. It shouldn't be related. Okay. Like if I was there, Mike Brown, Jordy Fernandez, or whatever, or any other player. All right, you didn't lost a, a, a 20 point lead a week ago. Mm-hmm. That has no bearing on today. Mm-hmm. Like that is it's not a rule that because you've lost it two, three well, times of course before it's not. that you here we go again. Like get that out your mind. This is a this game is not related. But it's not that easy. Well, it's I mean, like people it's talking like, like it is. But, well, well, but, but it's not people but talking like, like, hey, just finish the game. But we but, well we, we've we've We've, I mean, people talk we like saw, everything else is easy. That that should be easy too. Well, whose people? The chat, the streets, the, 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 the streets, <laughs> the chat, everybody. Oh, uh, just go to the basket. Stop shooting threes. Like, well, yeah, let's go play outside. Let's go play at the Caraway Compound. You just go to the basket, and I'll knock your shot into the into the neighbor's yard. Like it ain't it ain't just that easy to just go to the cup. Kenny acting like he has neighbors. That was cute. Well, Kenny acting like he's having nets up too around like, his like, fence. It's, like it's like, going just back to the, the court. The next neighbors like. Four acres away. It's adorable. None of this stuff, like, none of this stuff is just do it. But, so there's a, there, there's, there's a lot there. Obviously, you go out by 20. It's not a hard and fast rule that you have to lose. Like, that's not, that's not a, it's not a thing. But I think. You probably shouldn't. <laughs> well, I think when Kings fans see, like, it's, it's, it, it's, it, it, it's a cycle of behavior. Mm-hmm. It's like the free throw shooting. The free throw shootings never, it feels like this year. I'm sure there are instances, and we can, I I don't think it's worth going back and looking, but free throw shooting isn't like a bad game. It's a bad stretch of like 10 games, then it goes away. And then they hit 80% for like 10 games, 12, 13, 14 games in a row. Mm -hmm. And then it dwindles down. Oh, this is 78, 76, 74. All right, now it's like 60. And then all of a sudden you're in another 10 game cycle of them not hitting free throws. I think the same has been true. Uh, uh, three point defense. Three point defense was a big thing. And then it wasn't. And now it feels like it's becoming a thing again. And everything that we're seeing right now over this stretch of basketball from the Sacramento Kings are things that have been there all season. But there is a glaring difference right now. And this is, I think, what Jesse was talking about. This doesn't feel like uh, a Malik Monk problem. And it's not. However, Malik Monk and Kevin Herter not being there are a major part of this story. Right. I, and I, and that maybe that's what I'm getting at, where, to me, 
lumping this in with the other ones isn't the same. You don't keep saying you don't have like 25 with the potential of 50 points. They they play, I thought they played their ass off last night. They had 23s. De'Aaron Fox had 33. Keon had a career but, night, and they got 105. Uh, I wish you tell the whole story. I wish you tell the whole story. Go, go ahead. You didn't need Malik Monk to jump up against 20 against the Knicks or the or the um yesterday against the Thunder yesterday. Yeah. And I'm not gonna give you guys Kevin Harder. That dude, it was not good all season. Well, like, like maybe he creates spacing you, and stuff like that. But as far as like the Kings, my whole point with these 20 um leads or whatever, and going off the last two, team was good enough to like um get to those get to that spot. This team has no composure. They don't hold leads at all. It is fine. Like four of them have um, resulted in losses. There's the Toronto game where they were up big and um, won that one short. Like this team yeah. doesn't just have the composure to hold leads. And that's 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 fine. I, I want I want I want to I want to get back to this. I want you to I just bookmark this. I I, I do not agree with the Kevin Herter part, and I'll explain why in a second. But go okay. ahead. That's all fine. The reason why I feel how I feel with this team last night that played, and I'm talking about they played their asses off. They tried everything they could last night to win that game. They scored 105 points. They don't have enough with these two out. They don't have enough with these two out. They tried everything they could. They did everything. Nobody was perfect, and Sabonis could have scored more. Dre Lyles could have what scored more, all this other stuff. But they scored 105. Is that a lot? No, it's not. It's no, not I'm, a lot. I'm, 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 they I'm, I'm tried confused. everything they could, and they only got 105. But, and they haven't scored. What was what was Willsey talking about yesterday? But, they don't have enough with this group. But did they try everything they could, or they, did they just kept hoping the three would fall? They, now we're getting into 11 straight games with them scoring what under 110. They don't that's have right. enough. That's that's where I'm looking at this team, and I'm looking at Davion. I'm looking at Keon. So they I'm couldn't. looking at they, no, they don't have everybody. So, just go to the bucket. Who's gonna go to the bucket? Who's gonna go create? Besides the Aaron. Well, I think you just named three guys who can create. Keon he, he cannot create. I think Davion can create. Da Davion did. He's too small to do it on a consistent basis. Keon, that's not his game. What about Keegan? You? That's not his game. What about your boy Forty? Do, do, he'll stumble around somewhere or. Throw his hands up and lose the ball out somewhere half the time. At least he took eight shots last night. I'm happy with that. But he had 10 points. I will say your All-NBA center didn't really do anything on the offensive end either. And if he shows up a little bit more, like, we're not talking about them losing either. Like, like you have it. You have it. You have it. Like, I get Monk isn't there, but you have it. You have opportunities to win these so games. Th so here's, 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 like, and I wanted to hear what you had to say, but the truth is, I, uh, some of this, I agree with you. Mm. The Kings are stuck in purgatory right now. They are, you could maybe fairly make the argument significantly better defensively. But they're not good enough defensively to win you basketball games. Mm -hmm. They still have to win basketball games with their offense. Hence the 58 threes. And they can't. And, and so, and that's going to be a conversation for today. Is that the way Mike Brown feels this version of the Sacramento Kings can win? Because you just said they hit 23s, mm -hmm. and I hit you with a very bad Doc Rivers impersonation. No, it was actually pretty good. That's I kind of walked past it a little bit, but no, it wasn't bad. Do it again real 20, quick. I, don't, I can't do it on command <laughs> like you do. It was 20 of 58. Like, that's the, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. 23 is like, all right, but they did it on 58 attempts. So 58 attempts, if you're – shooting 58 times i'm really hoping you're closer to it what the warriors did last night sure how many threes did the warriors take last night mm -hmm. i know and and, and I, I don't know that i know they made 26 i don't know how many they took though but i'm guessing they didn't take 58 mm -hmm. and that's where we'll talk about it mm -hmm. we're here um we've got a lot to talk about today we We'll open the phone lines for you right now, 916-909-1320. You can vent your frustrations. You could talk. Uh, you could be Captain Positivity if you want to. Uh, there's three games left in the season, and my feelings that I expressed yesterday are exactly the same. If you missed it, I'll explain it to you again because that reality is in front of us or will be in front of us here very shortly. We're just getting started. We know you're frustrated with your basketball team, but we're very happy that you are here with us. It's Dilo and KC brought to you by Sky River Casino here on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. 
Thank you, Dave Garcia. It has to. It has to be in the. It has to be in the flow of the game. I don't want to start chucking up shots <laughs> trying to get. We don't get enough that. Macho Man from you. I'll say though. No, no, that's, that's, that's very that's underutilized. Point. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, it's I'm right there, the, sitting for us. I'm not the impression like uh, Casey. <laughs> no, I do bet hard from time to time. If you got it, you got to try. Uh, it's right there, sitting for First us. First name Macho, last name Man. Uh huh. You see, they ask me to do these stupid voices on command, and I don't do it. I don't do it as well as Casey. Uh huh. <laughs> Brothers, look in the eyes. In the <laughs> eyes of the macho man. Uh, so good. You know man. whose promo so I used good, to really man. love was Jake the Snake's. Jake the Snake. I remember this one specific promo. I don't remember. I don't remember what it was. I don't even. It wasn't like Mania. I just think it was a TV show. Jake the Snake was talking like this. He, he did a good job of that. He would talk like this, and he would tell you about Dana and the DDT. And then all of a sudden, he'd raise his voice and he'd say, I have so much power over you, I made you turn up your television. I made you walk closer to the screen because you wanted to hear what Jake the Snake had to say. I was like, oh, this dude is good. No. This dude is so good. No, Jake. Hey, did you guys see that clip I tagged you in? I had never seen that. The, the, the tranquilizer time. <laughs> I had never seen that before. I have I said, seen what that. What the hell? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Kurt Angle, Kurt Angle shot, uh, shot Big Show with a tranquilizer dart. That yeah. shit is funny. How did that? I mean, was that a, obviously no like poison, but like that was a real dart. He I don't know how they did that. <laughs> that dude really shot him in the back, though. I know that. That was funny. I'm throwing a question mark. Are you biz? Because he's got to get back to get back to his job or whatever. He wants to know if you guys still have faith in the Kings going forward and all that. Yeah. Mm hmm. I'll explain why. We'll do, we'll do that. That'll, that'll lead into what I was talking about right there. That was Ebiz? Yeah. Mm -mm. Y'all hit the thumbs up while you're here. I know we haven't been talking about that as much, but it goes a long way. Also, uh, just thought about something this morning. Mm -hmm. Go to dlonkc.com. We got merch. We got shirts. Need t-shirts for the summer. Yeah, I haven't I haven't created some of our our new our our newer designs on t-shirts yet. Um I'm going to uh get those done for everybody. I, I promise. It's a busy weekend with the uh Chris Weber engagement and then of course the final home game on 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 Sunday. But I, I I give you my word, guys. I will I will get that done. Not only will I get it done, I'll get everything on sale. By the time we take the air on Monday. So as Casey just tells everyone to go to DLoanCasey.com, don't go yet. I mean, you can. You can pay full price. Those full price ones, they go a long way. But um, I'm going to I'm gonna get us set up with some of the new um, Dave Garcia designs that we don't have up there. I was shocked when uh, Jay speared Jimmy off the stage. That was crazy. That's yeah, a that long caught fall. that caught me off guard. Damn. Then when they showed it, it was like, oh my god, he almost missed. Mm. Made up for that match on Saturday. Yeah, that match was <laughs> yeah. They 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 missed. They did not. They 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 missed with that story. <laughs> you know what, AK? <laughs> I might do that. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Get twenty percent off. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Twenty percent off for four All days. Right. <laughs> All right. That's funny. We're gonna do that right now. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna do that right now. T-shirts be damned. I'm gonna do that right now. That's funny. No, nah, I need a second. Everybody was getting their jokes off. Now I got to get a sale going over at DLoandKC.com. That, that was a good call. No, it was good. I tell you what, when the Kings stink it up, there's always a sale on DLo and KC to well, follow it. It's <laughs> not wrong. Not wrong. <laughs> AK said he was a promo code. Here we go again. 20% off. 20% off your merch. Oh man, I'm sorry, Kings fans. You let you gotta laugh to keep from crying. Sometimes that's what it is. You man. gotta you gotta Sometimes laugh. Sometimes that's from what crying. it is. Let me 
I'm, I'm, this is a shoot. I'm doing this right now as we speak. As, but, as we, as we talk though, I know Manny, cause I, I use this uh, phrase earlier as well. When I talk, cause I, my, my whole basis, my feeling, and I'm not telling anybody how to feel. If you want to be mad, if you want to be disgusted, you know, if you want to throw your hat, like I did after the Bulls loss, yeah. do that. Like I get that. I'm just telling you how I felt after that game. Mm -hmm. I felt it was a gut punch and I felt bad for those guys because I thought they played really hard last night. I thought they tried everything they could to pull that one out mm -hmm. and they weren't able to do it. They lost it, you know, late in the game. Because even when they, you know, when they when they blew the twenty point lead, I mean, that was in the th late in the third, early in the fourth, or something like it that. Was, it was like the middle of the third, yeah. And they they were there. They answered. They kept fighting they back. They kept. They uh, I think it went know, to two. Taking lead. Yeah, I think all it this got back stuff. to ten, maybe eight or ten. So to a certain degree, understanding like what you that's a bonus quote you you made. I get it. Mm -hmm. um but they didn't just say oh here we go again we're gonna lose they came out there like nah man we let's get after it let's work they dug deep last minute they had some tough shots and weren't able to pull it out but I, my thought from that game and i'm probably just as tough if not tougher on how to execute a game plan and all this other stuff than most of you guys i thought they played hard last night and i felt bad that they weren't able to pull that out um, that's how I felt about it. And, and then Manny and other people got upset, I, which I don't know why, because I said, yeah, they, that was an underman game, underman team last night. They were trying to gut it out. I don't know what part of that isn't true. No. You guys are forgetting. They are without, I think there's an argument. It's made Monk is the second best player. We talked about that's that fine. early throughout the year. I the second, second, okay. the second best player. Okay. You know, on that team, I'm not disrespecting what Sabonis does. And I'll make the same argument to say Sabonis is the, the second best player, right? I think it's just at losing Monk is just as important as losing DeMontis Sabonis. That's how I feel. They're without that guy. And That's I think, true. unlike other people, I think Kevin Herter, and I'm not talking about Jesse, he's not, he's far from the only one. I think Kevin Herter losing him is a big factor. You want to talk about two pointers mm -hmm. and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. You're taking two guys right there that people sleep on what Kevin Herter does in the mid range mm -hmm. coming off that DHO coming downhill. He'll get mid range shots. He'll get to the bucket. Malik Monk on that pick and roll. And you talk about Sabonis and, and, and his lack of production as of late. It's no coincidence that he doesn't have his pick and roll partner, that his numbers are starting to go down as well. Mm -hmm. So you're losing all that. You are under man in that situation. Then you're going up against a team that may end up being the best team record-wise in the Western Conference, at the very least top three. And they've got a guy who may win the MVP on that team, another guy who might win, well, he's going to be on the all-rookie team. He ain't winning rookie of the year. But, like, that's a good team. Mm -hmm. And they tried to get to the finish line. Mm -hmm. And they came up a little bit short. I felt bad for them about that because I didn't think last night was a, a lack of focus, a lack of effort or a lack of heart from that team. I just thought they just lost the lead. I think you, well, no, I, I hate when people talk about like lack of heart, lack of focus. Like that is, that is a, I mean, we saw that people talking, they it, was weak. It's like when weak, people say, uh, where'd you hear that from? And they say the streets. It's well, like the, the same be talking. thing. It's the same the thing. The streets be talking. Well, uh, if you're in the streets, you know what the streets are saying. you in the streets. Yeah, you here with me eight hours a day. you in the streets. <laughs> I got, then you got two kids to go home. I got connection. I got connections to the streets. So then you, the streets then you got saying. the shooting gun that you spend four <laughs> hours on, and you telling me you in the streets. I was able to get a hundred shots up in fifteen minutes. That what was, was the percentage? Uh, like eighty something. Oh, from three? No, no, no. I was oh. just shooting. I was just shooting around. Um, mid range mostly. The thing about Kevin, I think. I hope, tell me, tell me if you understand what I mean by that. You could have sustained the loss of one of them. I don't even Malik. Mm -hmm. I don't think you you can't sustain the loss of both of them. Mm -hmm. Like you lost all of your depth and you lost two threats. Mm -hmm. That's what team is that realistic for? Especially a team that's already kind of in the the middle part of this. This isn't, you know, Minnesota 
who's losing Carl Anthony Towns, mm-hmm. but you got the Ant Man and, and Rudy Gobert combination. We saw what Anthony Edwards did last night. It's not that. It's not. It's not. It's not the Boston Celtics with uh, Derek White and Jalen Brown taking the day off, mm-hmm. where you got Jason Tatum and Al Horford and the rest of that well-oiled machine. It's not the same thing. It's a team that is built on. I don't mean for this to sound stupid. Operating as a team. Mm. And while De'Aaron can be otherworldly at times, part of the reason he's able to be otherworldly is because of what Malik does Mm -hmm. and what Domas does. And as you just laid out, part of the reason Domas has been able to do what he's able to do is because of the likes of Kevin Herter and Keegan Murray. Now teams, hey, Keon, salute. We're going to talk a lot about Keon later. That's one of one right now, though, for Keon. That's one of one. Mm -hmm. Now, does it get uh, New Orleans' attention? Maybe. Does it get Phoenix's attention? Maybe. Mm-hmm. But if I'm Frank Vogel or I'm uh, Willie Green. Mm-hmm. Shout out Willie Green. <laughs> okay, bro, do it again. <laughs> do it again. Because mm-hmm. you did it and y'all lost. Mm-hmm. Do it again. And I think that's kind of what urged me about yesterday. Is like, yeah, you got that game from Keon Ellis where like you're missing the production from Monk. Ellis gave you 26 points. You wasted that. Sabonis no, you gave didn't you, waste it. Like, you did, though, because Sabonis gave you nothing. Your other yeah, all NBA, like, the, like, it is a waste. Because if Sabonis a, gives you more than 12 points or whatever, you win that ball game. You did have enough yesterday. You did. I get what you guys are saying, but why, in this game, you did have enough. You had, you, but, but. Why, why you, was. But you, but you, but you didn't. Why was Sabonis so limited offensively? Was that Oklahoma City or was that him trying to get the ball from the paint? To the three point line, a little bit of both. If okay, a little bit of both. All I right. mean, I, I think OKC did a good job of swarming him, but I mean, he was also more of a distributor. Which, it which, felt which like is, he was looking is, to pass a lot, which is his natural game. Though. But yeah, sometimes like, you can't do that. Game. Sometimes, like he said himself, he did. Not Mike, not me, not you. Mm. He said, "I got to be more aggressive offensively with Malik out," mm. and. For the most part, he hasn't. Maybe, maybe, maybe a little bit. He certainly wasn't last night, mm-hmm. and it was a tough night to to not be aggressive last night. Let's let's get Manny in here. Uh, let's start talking with y'all, man. Phone lines are open for you. Nine one six nine zero nine thirteen twenty. By the way, it's a shoot. Twenty uh, percent didn't feel like a strong enough of a discount, so we did thirty percent. You don't have to use the promo code. Here we go again. Uh, it's an automatic <laughs> discount on your receipt. It'll say. Here we go again. Uh, but everything is on sale right now until the end of the season, whenever that may be. We're going to add new merchandise over the weekend. You can make new orders. You can do all of that stuff. We got the spring T-shirts and the tri blends and all of that stuff on the way. But grab your hoodies. I'm going to filter out some of the ones that aren't selling. Remember, the the the, the FJF hoodies are still up. You can mm-hmm. rock those mm-hmm. to the Sacramento A's games mm-hmm. uh, and do all of that. that too. I, don't know. I don't know if I'm talking about it on the show or on the stream, but I got thoughts. We'll, we'll get to it. Okay. D-Lo and KC.com. I'm always finding out what KC get thoughts about live on the show. Let's go to, uh, let's start with Manny. What's going on, Manny? Okay, fellas. KC, I don't, I don't have an issue with you with as far as the effort part, because I get that. I think more of what people have a gripe with is, and the whole here we go is, is every time they lose one of these games, it's in the same exact manner. It's the, they're hot in the first half of the three-pointers, so you know now, that's all they're going to do in the second half. And you have to pray that they continue to be high, which most of the time doesn't happen. So, and with that, it's, that's fine that they played hard, but it's not like they played hard. And then it was like, well, the other team was better. It wasn't. It's you continuously have taken still chunking up threes, still continuously playing the same way when you can't win like that. Like you're not golden state. You're not the old golden state. You can't, this isn't stuff like, as much as you say, like, they're missing Herder and Malik, and yes, Malik is one of those guys that, like, he's great going to the hole. He gets to the cup. Like, I'd rather see them get to the cup and get their stuff thrown because it's showing the effort of that than to continuously keep chucking up threes, especially when you see yourself missing at that high rate, high rate and volume as they did in the second half and just say, well, just well, chuck it up to that's what happened. Well, Randy, I think that's ridiculous. Like if if you got it, like we saw Davion Mitchell 
go to the bucket late in the game, try that little lefty over, no disrespect to him, but smaller Davion Mitchell. So let me get this little lefty floater up here in the lane because people want me to take it to the hole. And what did Chet Holmgren do to it? But KC, that's one play though. Like that's that's one out of the fifty plays in that second half. Like okay, cool, he finally went to the hole. Like, but you can't just do it one time, two times. And I'm again, I'm not saying they're going to be successful all the time doing that. But they weren't successful shooting it from the threes either. So at some point, something got to get take a mid range, go the, to the hole. To say they're not successful, I mean that's all relative too. They were as a tie game, one hundred five, one hundred five with a minute to go. But Is that not, not successful? Play though. Huh? You know what I'm saying? And, and even with the like at that Fox three, it's like, and I'm not going to criticize him. But I'm not going to criticize him like everybody else and say, bro, like he played the game of his life too. But at the same time, I was like, ooh, on that play, I know you're tired because you've been holding up this team this whole second half. See, with you know, you're one of the few that that showed up tonight. Wait but a man, minute. on that play, work it to uh, give it to Sabonis, let him kick it back to you for that three. De'Aaron Fox didn't play the game of his life last night. Like De'Aaron Fox, De'Aaron Fox pretty much did what he had to do. He mm-hmm. scored 33 points on 29 shots. Mm-hmm. He took 17 threes last night. Like that's not the game of his life, but it's the game of what it's, it's probably the way things have to be right now. De'Aaron's probably going to have to shoot 29 threes. He knocked down. What was it for when we looked, it was like his first four or five. Yeah. Yeah. At that rate, you got to keep shooting them because you're making up for two guys who consistently hit threes. Mm-hmm. And even if Kevin Herter was inconsistent in the threes that he hit, we always say it's a tw- it's 25 with the with the with with the possibility of 50 mm-hmm. because those guys can put up points. Someone has to put up points for this team. I'd rather as frustrating as it is. I'd rather De'Aaron take 29 shots or 17 threes than I don't. I, I'd rather watch that than Harrison Barnes fumble around with the ball. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, another guy who couldn't get going last night was Trey Lyles. Trey Lyles has been incredibly important uh, to the Kings since returning to the lineup. Uh, He was influential in a couple of the games that they won here uh, at the Golden One Center. He was influential in them being in a couple of the games uh, that they lost. He was never a factor last night. Sometimes things line up. It really boils down to Keon was white hot. De'Aaron Fox was white hot. That, unfortunately, is the end of the story. There's nothing else after that. There was a point where the Kings, I don't remember, I don't remember the number, but Casey and I were still together. We looked at it. The, the, the Kings had hit a certain number of field goals, and only one of them wasn't a three. And this was at least this had this if this wasn't a quarter into the game, it was damn near a quarter into the game. Mm-hmm. Where it was like, okay, this is tough. This is a tough look because they're it, it, which one are you more likely to believe? They're going to shoot a historic clip or it's going to taper off. Mm-hmm. And it tapered off. And it tapered off in the third quarter in a dramatic way. And I think where a lot of people had frustrations is it felt like once it tapered off, what's the adjustment? I think, don't correct me if I'm wrong, your argument is there's no adjustment to be made because the guys who you would normally lean on to make those adjustments aren't there. Mm-hmm. And is that is that I fair? Mean, yeah, and there's that and the guys that you have like Cuz we talked about this. This was this 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 was ignored for the first couple of games. Malik the playmaker. Mm-hmm. We talk about scoring and all of these different stuff or I'm sorry, not Malik the playmaker. M- Malik the shot creator. Mm-hmm. We talked about the playmaker part, we talked about the scoring part, but the way Malik scores is different than everybody else with the exception of De'Aaron. Mm-hmm. And this is one of those games where it bites you in the ass. Yeah, and, and what what I was saying to that, looking at this team is, and I'm not saying you should take 58 threes, but like where where are you going to get the other? Say say uh, Mike Brown says next person that takes a three, I'm taking you out. Don't take no more threes. Well, you can't do that either. But but I'm that's what but, people want. Well, well, that's what people but that, want. But that, Okay. And that's, I don't and that's mean, what I don't I'm mean challenging. This, I, I don't, I'm not challenging you. No. I'm challenging what they're saying. No. Like, don't take no more threes. Just no. go to the but who's gonna who's gonna do that? No, I don't I don't mean this in any type of way. Like, that's not it. Like I the, the there has to be, I think part of the issue has there has to be a balance in the game a little bit. Mm-hmm. You've gotta you you you've gotta at least have the threat to do both. You talked about the Davion play. That was the fourth quarter, right? Mm-hmm. There you go. You go. 
Oh, oh, he's inside the three-point line. He's going to the basket. There's no other option. They literally haven't done anything else all game. Chet could read that. Chet's also nine feet tall. He can knock it into the third row. There was no threat of anything else there happening. And so the idea of, okay, don't take any more threes. I'm taking the next person out who shoots a three. That doesn't work either. You've got to be able to strike a balance. The balance allows the three to be a little bit more threatening. The problem was it guarded or unguarded. I don't know. Wilsey got those numbers. There just was, it just stopped falling. Mm. And the next three games might very well be a live by the three die by the three stretch. And we talked about this yesterday. E biz called. He couldn't, he couldn't uh, stay on during the commercial, but he asked, do you still have confidence in this team? And, and, and I'll, I'm going I'm to take his, 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 his question and take it a step further. I'm assuming he's talking about, do you still have confidence in this team to make the playoffs? Make the top six? Absolutely not. None. None whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But give me a seven or eight. What they got? One game. One. To make the playoffs? Yeah, give me that. Mm -hmm. Because it's one. I don't, this team right now today, as constructed, it, 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 it might change. I'm not going to count on it. It could change should a playoff series get here and get to game four, five, six, seven, so on. This team is constructed, cannot win a series. Mm. They absolutely cannot win a series with, with a starter in your sixth man of the year not playing. And they're already trying to erase Malik Monk's year. Shout out to everybody working extra hard to pretend like he didn't play 70-something <laughs> freaking games this year, and right. they're trying to erase what he right. did. But this team can't win a series. But can they win a single game? Absolutely. Because they. it doesn't have to be 10 of 13 hot. Mm -hmm. It has to be, you said 23s. 20 of 48 mm -hmm. instead of 20 of 58. They can do that. Mm -hmm. That number can win them a game. That I think they can do. They can have one of those performances. I think they can have one of those performances against the Pelicans, who everybody's scared to death of. I think they can have one of those performances against uh, uh, Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Once you get into needing two of them, I'm not as sure. Once you talk about having that first game, which will be emotional if against the if, if it's against the Warriors or the Lakers, I, I don't know that you can win that one and then win another one mm. to get to the playoffs. That in, in the ninth. But you give me one, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll I'll take them in one. I'm I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. I I I feel the same way in that they can they can win a, a game. Mm -hmm. They can win a game. I don't think they can win a series as presently constituted. Normally coming back and all this other stuff. But they they can win a game to get in there, and that's why it's so vital to get to that seven eight or stay in the seven eight, I yeah, should say, yeah. and not fall back to the nine ten. Because much like you just said, I don't know if they can do it twice. Like say you win nine, all right, now win another one to get into the playoffs. I don't know. That's tough. That's tough, man. But the the whole thing, I just don't I don't believe that this team. Once again, I don't know if they should take 58 threes. I don't know if De'Aaron should take 17 threes. Mm. You know, that's a little excessive. But they don't – what's the play? What's the play? That's mm -hmm. how everybody – stop chucking up threes. Stop shooting threes. What's the play? Just w call the play right now. Be Mike Brown. Be like, nope, don't take the three. We running this to get this action. They don't have those type of guys out there on the floor. So do you feel like they didn't – and we don't have the game running in front of us. Do you feel – that they did not pass up shots inside the paint to spray out to three? I think, like, I, like you said, we don't have it in front of us right now. But I don't I don't think they passed up good looks inside for threes. There's a difference. You can go to the bucket, draw defense on you. So, so what that means to me is I'm going to the bucket, I'm drawing defense, they're about to defend whatever shot I'm about to take 10 feet out or get into the bucket. There's hands all over the place. They have left the guys open for me to spray it out. I don't think they, nah, you got the layup or you got the floater, knock that down. Now nah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to kick it out to Keon for three. I don't think that but there were, But there were also some plays where, and this is I think where a lot of people's frustration are, was with Domas. Domas, certainly one of, the strongest dudes in the entire league. Mm -hmm. We've seen Domas work Chet before. Mm -hmm. Work him now. You, he he was in position on multiple occasions to do something on his own, mm -hmm. and he didn't because Keon was there. And part of me looks at it like that might have been by design. Mm -hmm. 
there's somewhere Keegan was there. I don't think that was his by design. I think that was that that, that was defenses collapsing in in in, in Domas seeing something. But I feel like Domas could have been more aggressive offensively. That's fair. of course it's not my body taking the punishment. Yeah, that's fair. I don't know what he felt like going into that game, but we've seen him work chat before. Yeah. And there's got to be a point in the third quarter if you're Oklahoma City, you're Mark Dagnall. You're going to Chet. You're going to 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 your guys in the in the front court saying, "Don't Domas is looking to pass. Mm. Play that. Domas is not trying to score. They're trying to find that three. Play that. Mm -hmm. And that's what they. The other thing, I there, it's somewhere in here. I I be taking these notes and don't know where they went. Here they are. Um, was it twenty of fifty eight? They were eight of eighteen in the first quarter. That was crazy. Do the math. That's a crazy number. 20 of 58. 8 of 18 in quarter number one. Mm. That's crazy. That's a crazy number. 18 threes the in eight, one quarter. The 8 of 18 <laughs> is crazy. The next three quarters are pretty crazy themselves. Yeah. In two two different types of crazies right there. Yeah. Two different types of crazies. And all I all I say to that game, once again, I'll reiterate and say 58 is a lot. I probably, I, I've said this a number of different times about the game of basketball and the way it's played in general right now. Take away five of those threes, three attempts, and just throw the ball to Domas on the block or, hell, Harrison on the block since they want him to be, you know, a guy to create. Keegan on the block. Just clear out a side. Go old school. De'Aaron's entering the, the, the ball to the, the Keegan on the block and let him post up. It's not the way the game is played by anybody anymore, it feels like. But take five threes away and give me five of those uh, offensive possessions. Mm -hmm. I'd rather do that. But at the same time, I'm just, I'm just, I just want to know what's the, what everybody can say, stop shooting threes. Where are we getting better looks at? Where are we getting better looks? I challenge everybody to, My, to, to be a better mind. Like, where are we getting better looks and better positions. It's, it's not as simple as that, but like, I mean, just general NBA, your $40 million man can't take seven shots. Your two guys, top guys, all NBA, not all-star, all NBA, paid like it too. They have to take you home every game at least. And if they don't, like if they say, so don't must and um, Fox go off, Lyles doesn't have it, Kings didn't have it. That's where the monk stuff comes in or whatever. They didn't have it. The guy stepped up. Your $40 million man only took seven shots yesterday. Got to take more shots. If he hits his shots. average, the Kings win. If he hits his point average on the season, even there's three points less, they win. I, don't, I mean, I don't, wrong. I don't have nothing to say about, about that. He's got to take more than seven shots in that situation. I just don't think – I look at this group and, and, and now – and, and can I answer your question, though, about yeah. what's the play? Like, Mike, Jordy, Jay, draw a play. Draw a play that gets you a shot at the free throw line extended. A clean look, whether that's for Keegan or whether that's for De'Aaron. There's probably not a long list of guys you can go to in that situation, but draw that play. Get a look. Try to create something else. Talking about touch the paint and spray. Touch the paint and spray. It ain't working. It's I, like you were – it felt like at the end they were praying that the three fell. Like – this is our only shot. We have to keep doing this. We can't deviate from this. This is our only chance to win this game is to shoot this three and hope it falls. And I believe I think it's the only chance. I don't think you're getting like so, when, when have we so ever that's but fair. when have we ever seen those other guys get those other shots? You don't see that. That's not in their game. I wish Keegan would do a better job of attacking and have a little bit more of um so the something Kings, he can do in the mid mid range, but he hasn't shown that in 80 some odd games now or two seasons. So this team has nothing other than guys who can catch passes out of the paint and shoot threes. This group, outside of De'Aaron and outside of yeah, yeah and, and we'll leave Malik out of the conversation because he's hurt. Yes. Yeah, this group, yeah, that's what they got. Well, this this then then so again in the conversation, we're but they, talking but look, they play defense better. This goes back to what I said a long time ago, man. They got a score to win. That is the bottom line. Well, now wait a minute, that's not fair either. Because in that conversation, we were talking about the complete Sacramento Kings team. This team has to score even more. Or they don't, they don't, they they don't, like you you mentioned it earlier, they play better defense. Mm -hmm. They're not good enough defensively 
to be able to win these. This 100. version of the team yeah, isn't good enough that, defensively. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So that's where that's where kind of the 58 threes come from. Because we still got to find a way to get to to 115. We got to find a way. And I don't know if a, Keegan won't attack the basket with enough force to get to the line. Harrison fumbles the ball all over the place. Keon, that's not really his game. When have we ever seen him do that? Davion does it from time to time, but he's still kind of small going into the basket. Fox, yeah, but now we asking Fox to beat Lou Dort and to help every single time. No. I wish he'd shoot the midi a little bit more than the three. Like maybe take away three or four of those threes and and try to get to the mid range. Sure. I'm not saying everybody is wrong with how to do that. No, I I think what the bulk of people are asking is what Jesse's asking. Domas got to go back to work. That, but the other the other thing about that is when have we when have we seen what I We've asked seen Domas, Domas work against Chet Holmgren? It's usually pick and roll. And maybe maybe this says, hey, get out of your 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 normal way of going about it. Get on the block or something like that. That's what I propose. That's what I hope mm-hmm. happens. Mm-hmm. We hadn't seen that all year. It's not his game. His game is a as a finisher on the pick and roll type things, offensive boards. That's where he gets a lot of his buckets. And if they're keeping him off the offensive boards and he don't have nobody to run the pick and roll game with, you might get seven shot attempts. He was nine of fourteen in that loss. In February, it's 14 shot attempts. It's twice as many as he took. Where is he getting the shots from, though, is what I'm saying. I'm looking at a box score, man. I don't know. <laughs> Can I get all you're saying, Blake? Like, that's like, just the standard of it. 14 shots again. Yeah, it's hey, your All-NBA hey, hey, center. Hey. Just hit your averages, bro. It's a standard. You are that kind of player. Like, that just comes look, with it. Look, he's been a machine. And and I don't mm-hmm. want that to get lost. Uh, oh, crap. Sorry. I just looked We've at the time, Jesse. I, 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 don't, I don't want it to get lost. He, he's been a machine. The unfortunate part for Domas is, hey, look, man, I get I get your asses kicked. This ain't the time. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> it's not the time of year that you can have seven shot attempts in a game. I, I you got three games you. left, bro. Yeah, you, you, you've got to you, you you've got a muscle. You've you've got to go go to go to Doug Christie. Ask for the 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 the, the what's it the, the the seaweed bath that he to <laughs> give get the Doug DC. Give Domas the seaweed uh, bath recipe that you have. Mm-hmm. Give him one of those. Give him some of your apple cider vinegar. Call in everybody mm-hmm. to get you through these next three games because that can't happen again. If you're telling me that's the version of Domas we get tomorrow, King's lost. If that's mm-hmm. the Domas we get on, on, on Friday, King's lost. Yeah. And when there's someone here to potentially pick up the slack, that that works. But – that person's not here, especially, I mean, I don't want to take away from Trey Lyles. Trey Lyles has been playing very, very, very well. Mm-hmm. But, you know, last night was a tough night for him. Mm-hmm. And Trey is going to score in a very, very different way than Malik is. And I feel like tomorrow's game is going to be frustratingly similar mm. because the Pelicans – while I do believe the Kings can beat the Pelicans. And if you told me right now, hey, the Kings are definitely getting a seven or eight spot, I'd say lose tomorrow. Save that (laughs) win against the Pelicans for later in case you need it. But I'm concerned that they're going to limit, dump that, they're going to attempt to limit Domas, Mm -hmm. and we're going to, we could potentially see a similar game in terms of, who has the ability to create on the offensive end, as we saw last night. Mm -hmm. There's going to have to be a mind, either either a mindset adjustment or there's going to have to be someone stepping up and it, and it's Keegan is, is, is one we've seen Keegan create Mm -hmm. not to the level of Malik or De'Aaron. I'm not saying that, but he can create Mm -hmm. HB can hit the mid range too. These guys got to find a different level or HB don't hit the mid range. And he, he does other good things. Like last night, he did a good job of getting to the foul line. Like he, like I don't think he had this great game, but I can accept that game from HB last night. Ten points. He got to the foul line. One of eight. The eight is what I'm looking at. At least he got him up. So I can I can accept that game. I and mean, I wouldn't even say that's a great game, but I can accept that. But there's not a lot of variance in his game. It's either I got you three or he does. At least this, he got to the basket. Yeah, he does this thing where he kind of gets to the basket nonchalant you know maybe he has some finishes stuff like that his game last night didn't didn't bother me well he's the only goddamn player on the team that got to the foul line so yeah there's that i didn't i didn't pick the tough time to miss 
free throws, but mm. still. Uh, let's get to these phones, man. We want to hear from you. 916-909-1320. Uh, uh, start with our man, Herbert. Herbert, what's going on, brother? Hey, what's up, Devo? What's up, KC? Herbert, what up, dog? What's happening? Hey, hey, just a few points on the uh, on the game last night. Uh, I think, man, we've been seeing this all year with the King. Um, they just can't close games. Um, we already know that. When it gets in the last two minutes, it looks like everybody gets tight, starts deferring, and no, re- nobody really has that. That De- De'Aaron has it sometimes, and-, and Monk has it. And when they're together, like sometimes they'll handle it. But for the most part, Kings just don't have it, man. Um, they either uh, toward the end of the game, they they always do something wild, turnover off your leg. Uh, De'Aaron fumble out of back, you know, something cra- it's always like something crazy in that last two minutes. And Kings just they, they did enough to win last night, I think. And, and you, you basically you shot yourself out the game, you, 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 and, and you shot OKC back in the game by shooting all those threes. That was crazy. That remind you know what that reminded me of when uh Harden was on the Rockets and they had the Warriors beat in that game, I think it was game six or game five. And they shot all those threes in the second half, and the Warriors came back and beat them. The uh, I'll, I'll push back against the, the close losses are going to stand out more than the close wins right now because mm-hmm. everyone's frustrated. They did, you know, win a tight game against Orlando this year. They won a they, bunch of tight games. They've 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 executed late at times. Again, I understand Phoenix stands out, Milwaukee stands out. I understand mm-hmm. these twenty point blown twenty point leads stand out. I think we we get a we use a little too much hyperbole mm-hmm. uh, after losses because I, I don't think it's this team can close. They've won a couple of tight games against Orlando. Didn't they have one that went to overtime? Yeah, Malik, one of them. Malik, one, Malik one of them went to overtime. The other one didn't. Yeah, Malik had an unbelievable game. They were both close. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were both close. Um, let's get to. I think it's Coach JT here. Coach, what's happening, baby? Coach, Yo, how come you man, only come I'm hang out when I'm not here, man? man? Hey, man, hey, man, don't let me go there. You champagne and campaigning, man. I mean, that's what Kenny be man. telling people. Uh, you know, Ken- his feet <laughs> kicked a- up, you know, <laughs> on an island somewhere. My you know God, what I mean? boy, Kenny just be out here <laughs> telling stories. Real quick, though, man, Casey, uh, D-Lo, I got to – Kenny, we talked about it on Friday, man. But, however, I know you these threes, Kenny, you hyping on that a little bit. However, last night, I'm watching. I'm breaking it down. I legitimately saw some bonus and other guys kicking out chances to draw fouls and shoot free throws to shoot threes to me that's a live ball turnover man like my guy just said who left but they shot him out the game i believe and i need for our man some bonus please 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 i gotta agree with my guy jesse you're getting paid big bucks your numbers gotta go up no if ands buts about it right now your partner did it where was he at last night we get 20 from sabonis man that's a win no matter how we look at it we need more protection out of that big guy right now i don't disagree i don't disagree with any of that um i'm i'm just i'm I'm telling you and everybody else, like I'm looking at Sabonis the other day from um, the Clippers game. I just pulled up a random game, but just looking up all these clips, his shot attempts, they're all like off pick and roll or somebody setting him up around the basket. He is, he's not give him the ball and let him go to work. And that's where you say Mike Brown, Jordy, Jay, you know, draw up something where somebody can set up Domas or whatever the case may be. But his 20 points per game, it's not, oh, man, we shot too many threes. Let's get the ball to Domas and let him go to work. That's mm-hmm. not how he plays. And expecting him and to or the Kings to play like that 79 games into the season, That's I don't think that's realistic. He gets a lot of his stuff off of offensive boards and pick and roll. The guy that he runs pick and roll with the most is gone. Yeah. That's tough though. Like if that's the case, like that's what it comes down to though. Like, like, like you get what I'm saying though. Like, it's just he needs the others to get him going. Like, no, I, like, I, not, I, not, I like not it, literally, but like, but you know what I'm saying though. Like, like yeah, still, like agree. there's, there's no. Then Monty's got to fix that in the offseason. Then not moving some bonus or whatever. But you got to get someone else who can get you those buckets. You do have like to that. get somebody else to get you some buckets. And this, like, so you got to work around that. Basically, this is then. this is what this is what I talk about. No, like, he. I think he has to adjust it. He, he can't be Kyle Shanahan. Hmm. What what happens with what, what happens when when something happens in the first quarter with your with your boy Kyle? He panics, hmm. especially when it's some something, something changes. How, how, how do we adjust? How do we change? Hmm. Domas has to be able to adjust and change. Hey, you know what? It's against my nature to be aggressive and shoot 20 times a game. I've got to shoot 20 times a game 
because I don't have my two guard or my other two guard. I have to change something. It's cool. Domas can operate the way he operates when everybody's available. When they're not available, you've got to adjust. I'm not mad at that. I'll, the only thing I'll, I'll, I'll say towards that is, you know, you want you want Sabonis forcing things up against Chet in a double team, or do you want a wide open Keegan three? Honestly, I'll live and die with my stars any day. I don't understand that. But if it comes if there's down two to guys lost, on Sabonis and, and, he, and he's forcing it up, and what's, it, what's the whole story here? Like, <laughs> are they twenty or fifty eight when that three is going up? Because if that's so, the case, okay. Then, but does, if it's the fourth quarter, if it's let's just do this. It, the, 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 the percentage doesn't even matter mm -hmm. it, unless Keegan is cooking. It's a different story. But if if it's the fourth quarter, it, it, let's just use last night's situation. Now, give me the Domas play. I don't know, man. Like, so we'll just go 105, 105, whatever the case may be, a minute to go. And we're going to pick and roll with Domas. He has the ball. Chet is there. Jay Williams is there, kind of digging as well. And he leaves Keegan open for a three. We're not going to shoot that because they've shot 57 threes already. That's all I'm saying. It's like you can't. But I, I I agree with you that I want him. I want to agree with both of you guys that I want him to be more aggressive. But. You got to look at the got to look at the, the 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 way the game is. Sometimes him or anybody else going up against two defenders is the right decision, right? Like I'd rather you force it and see what we can get. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes kick it out to that open guy and let's get a wide open look. Let's get good kid dad city in here. He's ruined the album for me. But it's our man Sean. <laughs> Sean, what's up, baby? Yo, um, man, I don't want to parrot everything that's been said, but I do think that there's something built into the king psychology where not getting calls prevents them from going to the cup when they really need to. Um, and maybe that starts with De'Aaron not, not getting downhill. But there have been times when it looks like they touch the paint just to throw the ball to the corner. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and I saw that late with Keon. Even when he touched the paint, he might have had a layup there. Not, not quite like Ben Simmons under the basket, but he had a shot at it, and he deferred a couple times. So I, I, I think that either it's them not getting those calls or – really just baked in that they have to spray when they touch the paint that's preventing them from finishing uh, these close games. It's not a bad point, man. I appreciate you, good kid, Dad City. It's not a bad point at all. I, and and I'm not even saying it to say, like, that's how it should be and they shouldn't work through that. I think they should work through that if that's the case. But I think there is something, maybe even specifically specifically with De'Aaron of, like, I'm going to go to the paint. I'm going to end up getting hammered. I'm It's going to mess up the shot. Like, it's going to be an empty possession. Like. I, I, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go to the cup. I'm gonna. I'm gonna pull up from three. Once again, not saying that's what it should be. Somebody should address that. Somebody said you got to keep going. You got to. You got to keep going. You got to keep attacking the basket. You can't settle over the case, mate. Whatever the case may be. But I do wonder if that plays into because they don't get. I don't know why it isn't, but they don't get that same type of treatment when they go to the basket a lot mm -hmm. of the time. No, I agree with you. I feel like that just comes out of composure at that point. Like, if that is the case, we don't know. But you're letting the refs dictate your game at that point. Let's get Steven. I don't want Steven to have to keep waiting. 916-909-1320. Steven, appreciate you holding, man. What's going on, brother? Hey, what's going on, fellas? What's up, man? Hey, I got, like, probably a million topics I want to hit. But, I, you know, I, you know, Jesse, go cut me off when you got to cut me off, man. It's all good, <laughs> um, baby. Cook, cook. Keep cooking, baby. So who the Hooper play, the first thing I want to say, we was talking about Davion's drive to the basket, right? This is an easy Hooper play. You, you use the ball to protect you, and it's a right-hand layup on the other side, reverse layup. You do not stop for a left-handed float shot in the middle of the key with somebody who's seven foot three trailing you. That's an easy block, first of all. We have done nothing to help De'Aaron Fox all season in these clutch moments because you're seeing everybody throw body after body after on him. They're trapping him on everything. So, yeah, he is settling because that's the cleanest look that he can get. And to be real, he's shooting, to me, as good from the three-point line as he is from the mid-range this year. And that's a that's a drop-off, but it's factual. The problem that we have right now is that Domas is unwilling to shoot what the defense is giving him. He will not take a 15-, 18-footer. He does this bogus ball fake, up fake, that he's never going to shoot the ball and in the biggest moments, it's what he's been doing. And it is killing spacing, and it's killing this team. And if you're going to take seven shots in, a, in the biggest game of the year, 
is giving me is validating all the crap that people have been saying about him where they don't give him respect and they don't give him the like his just due that we've defended as Kings fans we defended him all season but now you're seeing March roll around and April roll around it's the same crap this is it's the same playoff stuff where his numbers are dipping because he's unwilling to step up and take the shots that the defense is giving him and it's just like the the, uh, the the kick out to Keegan, it was like, I think, three seconds on the shot clock when he, like, sprays it out to Keegan, who was defended. He's not even open. You're just like, you're passing up a place where you're four feet from the basket, and then, like, with Chet right there, and you can't do it. And I said, it's, it's disheartening for one of your, your all-star players, your all-NBA center, to be unwilling to put himself out there and go and be dominant. Nah, I, I I don't have any beef with that. We'll, okay. we'll we'll come back and we'll we'll revisit that. Stephen, we appreciate you. Uh, we'll come back. There's obviously a lot more to talk about. It's Stephen and Casey brought to you by Sky River Casino on Sacramento Sports Leader, ESPN 1320. No, no, no he did. No, it was fine. That was perfect. It was perfect. I know we're a little late, but that was that was perfect. Uh, Dilo and Casey dot com. I see you, Lori. Appreciate you. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't just ruin somebody's surprise. But Easter. No, we're past Easter. What? what? I didn't even know how well, it could be somebody's birthday. Well, yeah. Yes, true. Okay. I don't disagree, King's Muse. Yeah, man. Sabonis, Sabonis got to you got to have a better game in, in that situation. You got to have a better game. It's just the standard that comes with being that guy on the team. Yeah. Jesse's been saying it all day. I don't disagree. He's got to have a better game, man. Got to at least have a more aggressive game offensively. If he was two or fourteen. Maybe people wouldn't have as much of a problem with it, but yeah, two or seven, eight. I don't think they would. Well, it's yeah. like the thing with HB. It's like go one of whatever, take ten shots, twelve shots. Like it's like we get frustrated when he goes one of four or zero oh of two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Has Giannis been dealing? If you guys know, has he been dealing with calf or Achilles? Did he did he sit out yeah, for an Achilles at all this year? He's had a couple couple games. I was thinking about that um, this morning. Yeah. Did they did they ever get any word on that? Uh, he's, yeah, he's good. I yeah. mean, there's no structural damage. It's good for what it for a calf, yeah, I guess. Right. He's no there's no structural damage to the Achilles. Uh, but now it's just uh, it's just monitoring stuff now. But I also remember them telling me Kevin Durant was cool, so who knows? Am I bugging? There, I think there's 40 WNBA games in on the season. season. Yeah. Caitlin's got 38 of them. Indiana got 36. 36. Wow. 36 on national TV. <laughs> That's yeah. OD. I don't know if I want to see Indiana that much. That's OD. I'll watch Clayton Clark and Aaliyah Boston, right? They got her out there. That's a, that's a, they better be good. Because the thing, it's the same thing as Wimby. Hey, we saw for a little while, a little while, but they weren't no good. They should, they should, and I guess they do. They should have the ability to kind of maneuver those games a little bit. You see Wemby's new logo? Yeah, it's fire. Yeah, that's dope. That shit is dope. That is fire. I got to say, everyone that's been involved has handled his season like just perfectly. He's going rookie of the year. All the endorsement stuff is working out. Logos are clean. Yeah, yeah. He 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 cooking. He cooking. He he ready. I think he ready for a big second season. Like everything included, like the 
endorsements, the shoes, all that other stuff. Like, he about to. Zay, we're not talking today. We're just going to show up for the game and play as well as we can, and hopefully we come away with the dub. I might have the the yips, bro. I, I might. <laughs> you know you know what it, what it really is? Oh. <laughs> you're <laughs> that would be correct your your boss got me excited about something there was, there was yeah there was a second part to our conversation yesterday after the stupid part yeah there's 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 something there's something bubbling bubbling it's Yo, like turn the mics off right now i don't care that we're on the radio I need... <laughs> hey nah there's there's there, hey i there's something this Things are happening, nah, fellas. Things, things are happening. Wait, 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 916 nah, nine, 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 nah, nah, <laughs> nah there's, 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 there's things happening around Northern California. No, 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 no. There's, there's things happening around Northern California that, um, you could have a chance to be a part of, man. And I'm, I'm excited about, I might not be, might not be, but, um, things may or may not be happening. I'm, I may, I may, if you hear me, <laughs> see if y'all could put this together if y'all hear me start talking real nice about joe Lakeup moving forward <laughs> y'all y'all could expect an announcement on the way <laughs> ah it's pretty interesting uh, uh, here, again let's see if y'all can piece all this puzzle together the wnba schedule just uh got released in 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 the indiana pacers got or the Indiana Fever got 36, mm. 36 nationally televised games. <laughs> Caitlin Clark going to be all over the television this summer. <laughs> uh, I'm excited for it. <laughs> Appreciate you. <Uncle> Lo- <laughs> Shout out Uncle Looney. Appreciate you, buddy. Appreciate you. Uh, 916-909-1320. No, I, the, there's a W franchise on the way. Mm. Which means there's some media possibilities for the W franchise, yeah. and that could be uh, that could be some exciting stuff uh, ahead for for a lot of people. Yeah, uh, for a lot of people. Huh? Uh, just just man, just early conversations. Just they ain't even real conversations. Right. But man, I'd love to be back Shut involved with the W. Shout NBA. out Uncle Joe. But, well, he ain't there yet. <laughs> well, hold, hold on now. Be my well, pal Joe. He, he cut. Yeah, he, 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 he's 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 my he's 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 uh. He's acquaintance Joe right now. He ain't no Uncle Joe yet. He's he's acquaintance Joe. He gets the head nod when they walk past in the hallways right now. Yeah, yeah. We, we haven't gotten to the hey Joe. We haven't gotten to that status yet. Not yet. Uh, let's get Zell in here. Nine one six nine zero nine thirteen twenty. Young Zell, what up, baby? Congratulations, Zell. We haven't got a chance to yeah, talk, man. To you, man. Congratulations. Hey, I appreciate it, y'all. I appreciate it, man. It's, I'm excited. I can't wait, man. It's a blessing. No, no doubt. No yes, doubt. Indeed. What's up, uh, man? Man, you know, you could tell him like the dean, man, I'm up here just the last night I'm yelling at the TV, wife yelling at the TV, I heard baby Joyce screaming through the stomach, all that, <laughs> man. It was it's just like and I ain't gonna lie, Casey, man, you kinda scaring me because you, you said something that I was making sense. You said a lot of his Domas' shots, you know, is coming off them pick and rolls and playmaking for other people mm-hmm. for forty million a year. To me that sounded like Clint Capella. And I think Domas is way better than Clint Capella, but he was always not. He Chris Paul always set him up. As soon as he didn't have Chris Paul, who was he? He was nobody. That's a lot of money to be paying somebody that can well, only score when they get set up by somebody. Well, the the other thing, the other point to that, though, Zell, um, to dispel any Clint Capella thoughts, is Sabonis is one of the best passers in the league. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, like. Let's just say, friends, like we're all upset with Sabonis taking seven shots. Like we don't think that's enough, or whatever the case may be. But off of, I I don't have it in front of me. But say he got three more assists off of three pointers. Now we're talking about double double streak uh, continues. Sabonis got what he what he end up with. I don't I don't have it in front of me. Assist wise, assist wise, he finished with I think it was five. He did. He finished with five. He finished with eight, thirteen, and five. Yeah. So if he and gets, five turnovers, which was a that's tough. That was too. a big issue. Yeah, that's tough too. But I mean, his shot creation for others that that's not what Capella is. And Capella don't rebound as well, um, and he doesn't score as well either. But I mean, that's that that's that's part of that's part of Sabonis's game. I, I like he got the money because he got the money. Like you're not. Um, 
the alternative to that. Say like, oh, we don't want to pay Sabonis that. We're not spending them $40 million, whatever the case may be. What, what you going to do with it? Like you're going to go get who yeah. with that $40 million I'm glad to you do said the that. things that you want a big man to do. You you want a big man to be Joel and B. Like, yeah. all right, go go find you another Joel and B and, and spend him $40. And when you find him, tell me where you find him because he don't exist to me right now. I um I'm glad you brought that up because it made me there's a lot of thinking ahead last night mm. and the you know potential reality of the Kings not making the playoffs. And the Kings not making the playoffs obviously would be frustrating for a variety of different reasons. Uh, but one people really hang their hat on, and one that I've said openly, make the playoffs lose. I don't care. It 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 gets the transaction with Atlanta complete hypothetically, let's say the slide from Sacramento continues. Let's say things don't go the Kings way. That means they keep the pick. Mm -hmm. And that means the transaction with Atlanta is not yet complete. And that's my question because let's work it the other way. Cause I don't know that people, I don't, I don't know if people smell what the rock is cooking right there. So let's try this again. <laughs> let's say the Kings do make the playoffs. And the transaction is complete. And I'll ask this to James when he joins us at three. And because we look at it like, oh, there's this treasure trove of picks, you know, coming up that they have to deal with. Okay, now we're getting to the to the root of the answer. Mm -hmm. You have a bunch of picks in the future that you could deal. Okay, for who? Like we do this every effing year. It's it's let's rewind a week. This is what we do at WrestleMania. We book WrestleMania in our head with these over the top, outrageous ideas. And this guy is going to debut and this guy is going to run in and the glass is going to shatter and this is going to happen. And the streak is going to end and all of this different stuff. And it's a little sprinkle of some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. We do the same thing in free agency every year. We do the same thing at the trade deadline every year. The Kings, they got the, they got a, they can go get Siakam. They can go get OG. They can go get Dame Lillard. They can go get, uh, all right, that's going to happen. And I'll ask anyone who says, Hey, why not? You, you, okay. Based on what, like what history tells you that that's going to happen. Other than that guy coming to visit on Friday, other than the guy we're hosting the speaker series for, mm -hmm. On 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 Saturday at the Guild Theater. Tickets available at eventbrite.com. Search Chris Weber. Use the promo code ESPN1320. Other than Chris Weber. And the All-Pro Center on the roster right now. What are we talking about? We build these scenarios up that are all completely fictitious. Would you like Monty to have a completely blank slate to work with? Sure. Absolutely. Sure but you're working yourself into a shoot here if you think he's just going to be able to magically make a deal just because the picks are available. Mm -hmm. I want them to make the playoffs for a variety of reasons. One of the main reasons is to end the conversation about the Atlanta transaction. Mm -hmm. But I'm also not entering this offseason like they're going to make this big, grand sweeping move with Harrison Barnes, Kevin Herter, and this treasure trove of picks. Mm -hmm. I'm not of that belief. I'm expecting Monty McNair to do something to make this Sacramento Kings team better. But I'm not hanging my hat on whatever people think is going to happen with these draft picks that could become available if the Kings make the playoffs and this Atlanta transaction is finally over with. I agree. I understand. I agree 100% with what you're saying. Like you said, would I want that to be the case? Absolutely, because that's a, that's a better setup and a better scenario for you to work with. But I, I've said a long time, and there's – you know, a joke in the chat, I keep bringing it up or whatever the case may be. You're going to have to get, I think, because Harrison, Herter, Davion, that's not enough to go land you Giannis when he wants out, right? Like, you're going to have to get somebody with with some warts with some that may not be ideal, that may not be the perfect situation if you want a needle mover. And that's where I talk about a guy like Zach Levine. A lot of people don't like him because they don't like his money or whatever the case may be. Zach, Le Zach, Zach Levine would solve a problem we had last night. You wouldn't have had to take 58 threes 
because you have a shot creator. I think a lot of you're you're right. I think fair or unfair, Kings fans' concern with Zach Levine is if he was a Sacramento King, the Kings would be in the same exact position they are right now because he wouldn't be playing. Fair, fair and again, yeah. and again, whether that's fair or not, mm-hmm. and I don't, I don't know that it is, mm-hmm. but I think that would be a lot of fans' concern. Yeah, and and I understand that. But first order you know, of business you, this off season, by the way, is Malik Monk. Whatever else happens after that, happens absolutely. after that. But first order of business is Malik Monk. Absolutely. Um, we'll we'll come back. Okay, we are coming back. We're not leaving. I just wanted <laughs> to make sure we're 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 going to get caught up, get back on track. Uh, James Ham joins us. Uh, more Kings basketball ahead. More of your phone calls as well. I see Kamara on hold. 916-909-1320. Steelo and KC brought to you by Sky River Casino and Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. E- eating the whole thing, though. Yes, you have a shot creator and a monk who's missing, but the problem is if he goes down, like we're seeing right now, you can't just be void of anybody that can do anything outside of Fox. Um, Keegan, so far hasn't consistently shown that he's that type of shot creator. Um, maybe the third year, you know, things really change. I, I'm I'm not sure, but, uh, and I don't really have a whole lot of problem with, I don't have any problem with Keegan's game last night or as of late. He's tried to step it up and be more aggressive shooting right now. His, his game is, you know, hitting those threes and things of that nature, but, um, you know, he, He's around, I don't know the average, but around 16, 18, to 19 shot attempts a game, you know, since Monk has been out. That's what we're asking for. So, you know, you just said it on Friday. Paul George is the one. He, he definitely the one. He's definitely the one. And your your best hope there is you can convince the Clippers on the sign and trade situation. And Paul George isn't without warts either. He's older. He's going to ask for a lot of money. Um, he has injury concerns himself. He shot him with the dart. <laughs> Kurt Angle, top five funniest wrestler ever. He he's funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's he's he has great personality. Did you ever see the the TikTok or reel or whatever it was of him eating spaghetti with I think his wife? And he cut the spaghetti with some scissors. No. I think he, I have seen that. He's recording the thing. He has the camera right in front of him. And he he like his his wife's coming over to him and he's rolling out the spaghetti and he cuts them with scissors right in front of her. <laughs> and she goes, Oh my God, you can't be that lazy. You 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 and he goes, What? What's the problem? He's recording the whole thing. It's funny. <laughs> Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle up there. Kurt Angle up there. This is a great question. I just saw this trending on on Twitter. Why has WrestleMania 41 not been announced? That is a good question. Maybe there's some some things they're trying to finalize. Maybe. Kenny can't even go. I see (laughs) see Minnesota rumors. I see Las Vegas rumors. Stop putting stuff in Minnesota, bro. The, The... The... Good news about that is it will be this time of year, and they're in a dome. It's indoors, yeah. But yeah, like people go to WrestleMania weekend, like you're walking around and stuff. So like that's that. the that's the thing that I think has kept them out of Minnesota, though. Mm. Like mm. Philadelphia, it's Philadelphia still. Like New right. York, there's a million things to do. Um, you know, Florida, there's a variety of things you could do in Florida. L- Las Vegas is obviously Las Vegas. They've tried to make it like destinations for a week. Mm-hmm. Because WrestleMania is now a week long. Uh, I don't know that Minnesota. <laughs> I don't know. Hey guys, Going to Minnesota for the week. You want to hit I the don't... Great Mall for the fifth time this week? <laughs> yeah, you might run into Brock Lesnar, too. I don't, I don't know. Ron. Oh, I think he's in Canada. He Minnesota, might be in Canada. a cool spot, though. I've been to Minnesota. I haven't. I mean, I've flown. It's, it's a great airport. It's like, it's like, it's a phenomenal airport. It's like Sacramento. Like, I, I don't know if people are clamoring to, that don't live here or clamoring to come to Sacramento. But what I do? So like Sacramento is cool. That was a and that was actually a Ben. Time. We're in a commercial, man. Calm down. What you doing? It's a commercial break. Ben's talking to someone out where yeah, these Goofy. guys aren't kings. I'm talking about some dude <laughs> shooting some wrestler with tranquilizers now. Now yeah, he did shoot him with a tranquilizer, man. That's funny. <laughs> you mad at me? Well, I guess you could. Maybe you could see a live edition of AEW at the mall. <laughs> Them, you and fifty other people. 
Well, you know, that's where the first Nitro was. I was about to say, didn't they have a Nitro The Mall there? of America. That's right outside first. Hogan's pasta shop, yeah. Well, it's a, it's a bit... It, uh, uh, AEW is the CM Punk stuff tonight. The CM Punk WWE wrestler. It, it, AEW, they're airing the, 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 the fight. What fight? Oh, that, the, that's been a that's been really? AEW's thing that they've been promoting all week is that they're going to air the security footage of <laughs> CM Punk getting in a fight with Jack Perry. <laughs> I didn't like know that. Idea. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's that's a trick. Yeah, they said Tony Tony Khan was really pissed off about the, and I guess I would be too if CM Punk called me an idiot on a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be upset too. But I guess they're they're this is this is this is their gimmick for the night. You know how we say Twitter is in real life. I feel like Tony Khan doesn't know that. Yeah. Well, that also wasn't Twitter, though. That was Punk saying. But, like, you're answering because of, like, everyone so does interviews. To, everyone does interviews. But you're Jesse's, answering because people are lighting you up on Twitter. To Jesse's point, like, he does. It, 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 Tony does have strong Vince Russo vibes mm -hmm. in that it does feel like they do a lot for the Internet. Mm -hmm. And I know I, there is no greater example that the Internet is not real life than CM Punk in WWE. He made a reference to fighting his coworkers and no one got it. He made that reference in front of 20,000 wrestling fans. Crickets. They're not as tuned in as you think they are, especially WWE fans. Right. A lot of them are still kids. Right. A lot of them are, I mean, some of them are grown ass men walking around with championship belts, sure. <laughs> but like no one, they're not, they're not, it's, it's still a smaller percentage than you think. The internet wrestling community is not 80, 90, or a hundred percent of the wrestling community. The, the, and I feel like that's who they book for sometimes. To me, the stupid thing about what Tony Khan is doing with this is like airing it as a part of a show. Mm -hmm. Just put that crap on, on your, on Twitter. Just post it. Yeah. That's it. Like, what, what are we well, doing? in, in that vein though, he's trying to get a re he's trying to get a reaction out of it. Like, I can't fault him for that. Put it on your show. Just, you better be sure this is going to get the reaction you want. And not the, re because the reaction it's gotten hasn't been good. Mm. Well, there's also an aspect. Stop trying to, like, compete with the WWE and stuff like that. Like, do your own thing. Just be you. Yeah, build yourself yeah, just up. Just be you. Yeah, yeah build just be you. Live now, show or anything like the, that. the other aspect that before Ben gets mad at us. And Ben's, he's but, into uh, us. <laughs> He's pissed off at me. We was talking to a commercial break. He got mad at me. As if, as if you're watching that interview and hearing Punk break that down the way he broke it down, which you can't even really prove in the security footage. But if you're like, oh, that is not how that. Well, if he out. punches Jack Perry, it but proves he, that he's a liar. But but Punk also said that, like the whole gist of that interview was, I tried to tell you for a long time, yeah, yeah, yeah. handle right. it a certain way right. before I handle it. Right. And if he just says, if it just shows him handling it the way yep. he told you he was going to handle it. Yeah. I don't, that doesn't dispel the interview that he just had. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm with Spectre a little bit. I think it's a swerve or something. Like <laughs> there's no way, like you're really going to play that. That's, no, I gonna, think they are. Yeah, I think they are. It's going to be, uh, the, the fake, uh, fake razor, and fake diesel. <laughs> some goofy or something like, like this was eight months ago. Right. Yeah. Uh, the boys, yeah. Hey, fake razor WWE, fake Jim diesel. Ross, they had me. They did I it. Said, oh, I knew they weren't gonna leave. Let's yeah. go. Let's go. What's <laughs> the eyes of Kanko? That's the thing, too. Punk did say in that interview, I did choke him out a little bit. Mm. All right. Let's get Kamara in here. 916-909-1320. What's up, Kamara? What's going on, fellas? What's happening, baby? What up, man? Hey, Kamara, Kamara, real quick, real quick. Oh, hey, did yeah. you did you hear what Joe yeah. said? Did you hear what Joe Button said? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Absolutely, there's a nuclear I don't, bomb coming. I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I'm, just, I need to hear it for myself. I'm not yeah. gonna take it from anybody else. Yeah. But he said it's about to turn up. Yeah, Candace Owens told him a nuclear <laughs> bomb is on the way. Uh, touche. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, touche. I mean, listen, listen. Uh, let me just. This is not the reason I called, but to that point, though, Kenny, um, I, I don't care what nuclear bomb that. You know, OVO is saying, I'm I'm going to stand on this until uh, proven otherwise. When the dust settles, you know, Kung Fu Kenny's going to come out. I, I'm not going to argue say. with that. I don't. I, I, I don't know. I just guy. I just know. I just know. Joe of all people said, "You heard it's about to pop off." 
listen, it's about to pop off, but I come from Kenny. That's that's the guy for me. He's I'm always been the guy. That. And you know, you know what I mean? But um on a much more depressing note, <laughs> last night I was sitting in my house watching the game and I was rubbing my head and uh yes, yelling at the TV. My wife was like, What's wrong? It was like six minutes left. They're down by one. They had just gotten their fourth rebound in a row from mm. missing a wide open three. Mm. And I said to myself, you're down by one. Why the hell are you jacking up threes with 15 seconds on the shot clock and you did it three straight times? Did none of you decide, let's see if we can get a better shot? And I, my problem with that is that where is the intelligence on this team? Where is Mike Brown calling the timeout, reassess, doing something, calling out, whatever? And that's my issue. I don't know what's going to happen to the plan. I don't know what's going to happen. But my doubts with this team all year is, like, them not recognizing what's happening around them. This is, like, the second time on the road trip they've lost a 20-point game, 20-point yeah. league, whatever. It's the NBA. That happens. But this year, it just seems like the game gets away from them. Yeah, I think it gets away from them, Kamara. By the way, like just just everyone caught it. We'll just, <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I'm yeah, relax, yeah, pal. No, yeah, it's, it's just, Jesse threw a flag in there. We we caught it. Just so everyone's aware, integrity is intact. <laughs> Pass interference. That's 45 we, yards we, down the field. We caught it. <laughs> that particular play, I think, is the one that bugs everyone the most. It does. It, it was a. Uh, it was. Uh, it was a. Uh, was it five shots? I think it was four. Four shots. Yeah. And they were all threes, and they came away with nothing. And that's tough. And that's, and that's frustrating. We talked about that a couple of games ago. I don't remember what game it was where they were battling. They got possession after possession after possession. It was like God, you got to get something out of this. You've been on this side of the court for you know sixty five seconds, mm -hmm. and I think De'Aaron might have drawn a foul. He did. He he. I know he went to the basket somewhere and tried to try to get something going there. I think he got a foul, but. The the only thing I'll say about that is the goal, the goal every time down is to get a good shot, good wide open look. Mm -hmm. They're all good wide open looks. And any coach will tell you, or a lot of coaches, maybe, maybe things have changed or whatever, but they'll tell you when's the best time to get a wide open three off an offensive rebound and kick out. And that's what happened. They got offensive rebounds kicked it out for wide open threes and they just missed it. Once again, my the the only thing I'll say about you know Kamara and people who feel like hey, stop shooting the threes. So what's the what's the play in in that particular moment? You get the offense rebound and you and you kick it out, they miss the threes. In that particular moment, like what do we what do you what do you want? What are you sure that is going to be a better look than that? Like kicking it out, hey, stop, stop shooting the threes. Let's run the offense. Let the defense get set, and what pick and roll, like some type of. Damn but I, I, I just feel, I feel like we're, we're getting open. Look, my my thing has always been, and it's been consistent. Maybe this is just my POV, and I'm stuck in or whatever. The open look, wide open looks, look whatever wherever it's coming from, in the paint, mid range three or whatever. The goal for me every time down is to get wide open looks. That let me know. That lets me know the offense is working the way it's supposed to. And they got four open looks there and missed them. Okay. I'd argue it's up to your staff and your team to come up with a play that gets you something in the paint or could get you to the foul line or like run a play. Because you say the open threes. Or what the you know my, my offense is working the way that it's supposed to be working. Mm -hmm. It's completely fair. That's what you hope. Mm -hmm. From a Mark Dagnall standpoint, at that point in the game, again, yeah, not talking about the first quarter, I'm talking about the fourth. Mark Dagnall may look at it like this is working exactly the way we drew it up. G give him one. Because mm -hmm. by the fourth quarter, by the fourth quarter, you have to be confident they're not taking it to the basket. Mm -hmm. So let's make sure we're in position to rebound. Let's make sure they don't try to work through Domas. 
And if that's an open three for Keon, hey, salute, career night. Mm -hmm. If it's an open three for Keegan, which is probably the one that you don't, you don't, you don't want to give that one up. Harrison, all right. De'Aaron, De'Aaron going to keep shooting. Him. All right, let's see. You got the legs to keep doing this. Okay. But I don't, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what Mark Dagnall's strategy was last night. I'm not arguing that the looks were open, but to Kamara's point, I think that's going to be, or not to Kamara's point, but to Kamara's instance, I think that's going to be the moment in the game that people are going to remember when they talk about this Oklahoma City game. It's going to be the one that drives them crazy. I would, I would. Fair, f- the, fair or not. And you, you may, you may be correct. And I'll, I'll not Might flip be. this uh, on you, but on everybody else out there. What is the, the frustrating the most frustrating part of the Kings defense. What does everybody get upset with? What is, what is the, the thing that the, the team, the coaches were talking about three point defense. Yes. Like, so no, it's run them off the line. It's do all that get out there, contest. And no matter who they play, Mm -hmm. I think it's not to let leave wide open shots, but that's what the Kings would want to do to Oklahoma city. No, they wouldn't. No, they wouldn't. The Kings wouldn't want to run. They wouldn't, they, they, that's my point. They wouldn't want to run them off the line. They would not want to allow wide open shots uh-huh. as opposed to like you're saying and other people are saying like, yeah, they're giving you that shot for a reason. Probably not. They mm-hmm. probably don't want a wide open three. That's, that's part of the reason why they, you know, you, you take advantage of those opportunities so much because they're probably defending against that. Now, to your point, Maybe they were saying, hey, let's, you know, mind trick them into taking these threes because we really don't want Sabonis to get going. That's what we can't handle or Fox getting in a lane or mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. So maybe we'll leave these open for them to shoot. But, but my thought is that's not that's not anything the Kings have ever done. But that ties into what you were saying earlier, though, mm-hmm. like about not letting De'Aaron and Doma because they're the only two that can do it. So if we take that away, let them keep shooting these threes. Percentage yeah. wise, and and I understand, I I completely understand what you're saying. Percentage wise, they, they, okay, they it, gonna hit it, one it, of the next three, and it, it it could be the case. But my thought as a, as a coach would be, and you're the only way, Keon, Harrison, all these guys are gonna score is if you give them open looks, because if we're guarding them, they're not skilled enough to get by our defense or finish around contact. Mm. They're not like what what's if I'm looking at. Keon, Davion, and Harrison, where are they going to get their points? Going up against uh, Jalen Williams you said one-on-one? Ke- Keon, Keon uh, Harrison, and who? And Davion. Yeah, you're not. At what? that stage, in the, you're not going to get the points. Well, you I'm said saying, where are they going to get their points? They're but, not. But I'm saying, I'm saying, like, where's the easiest way for them? Trying to go, trying to beat Jalen Williams to the cup or a wide open three? Where yeah. would they, where would they get to the, to the, get their points from? Is a three. Yeah. And that's, that's my point. Like, that's. They, I don't think they were trying to leave those guys open because that's the only way those guys are going to score. If we're playing good defense and we're locking up, Harrison Barnes ain't taking Jalen Williams to the cup and scoring. None of them dudes are. I'm not skilled enough on this stupid. Oh, here it is. I, I, I wanted to pull up. Oh, boy, this this is going to be a brutal reel. Uh-oh. I, I figured out how to pull up just the missed threes. Oh. So it's gonna be a long. It's gonna be a long reel. <laughs> well, they missed ten threes in the four. Oh, for the game, or you did it for the whole game? I, I did it for the whole game. Oh yeah. So it just starts at the beginning. Goodness gracious! Um, you might not. Yeah. Have, you might not is, have enough memory. Is on it, that is it paint? <laughs> <laughs> first two, but for, first two missed threes were paint touches. Dribble handoff to HB uh, in the Domas. Domas touch pass out to De'Aaron. The third missed three was another paint touch. I. I I don't know. On those paint touches, so while you're looking at it, on those paint touches, mm-hmm. do you think there's an opportunity for them to finish? So De'Aaron's, excuse me, the, the one De'Aaron just shot, on don't, the, the Domas play was like a tip pass. Mm-hmm. It like it, it, He never, it wasn't even a secure ball. It just like came to him. He tipped it out to De'Aaron. De'Aaron took the shot. It was actually a great pass. It was a great look. This is the first quarter. Uh, this is the first quarter shot he's taken here. Uh, if I get a little bit more skilled in this, I'm because uh, now it's showing me Oklahoma City's mysteries, which, <laughs> buddy, I don't care about your <laughs> mysteries. Uh, here, here, here's the next one. Um, 
transition. De'Aaron, Keegan, Keegan to Keon. Paint touch, De'Aaron. Domas, paint touch, under the rim, guarded by two guys, out to Keon. Mm. Missed it in the corner. Again, these are all first quarter. And I'm, um, I'm, they're all, all, I mean, I, we just reeled off four of them that were paint touches. Yeah. That that last one, that would have been a tough one for, I mean, Domas could have gone up, could have gotten ugly. It feels like everything is running through Domas, but they're keeping two bodies close to him. There's another, uh, uh, it wasn't a paint touch. Domas was at the wing. To Davion, top mm. of the key, missed. Yeah. And, the and, offense is still running through Domas. Like he's touching the ball on Every single possession, mm-hmm. uh, it just it, it does not look. He didn't touch it on that one. Pause. It just doesn't look like he was looking to do anything with it. And and that, and so now I'm looking in the fourth quarter, mm-hmm. and so that's where it gets really ugly, a lot right? of them. A lot of these are not Doma so far. You know what I mean? It's not him getting that ball late. Some of it is dribble handoff. Like there's a couple of dribble handoffs. Uh, Domas got a long rebound, offensive rebound, kicked it out to De'Aaron for for an open three, and that that didn't work. But what's what's stopped a little bit is the paint touches into the threes, a little bit. Mm. That stopped. You know, it's a little bit more off the bounce. Um, they're not necessarily paint touches; they're driving kicks. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know the. the the defense, the defense has stepped up a little bit on OKC as well. Then a little bit of that you got to give credit to them for for as well. We've seen a couple of offensive rebounds, one from Domas, one from Alex Lynn, uh, that got thrown out. Um, again, but w- as was the case with Domas a minute ago, Alex Lynn caught the ball under the basket, multiple guys around him going up, like just go up with the ball. That would have been tough. That would have been tough. Mm-hmm. Um, Davion had position on a couple of these. You know, Davion did, did, did the did the the dribble gimmick where you where you get in front of the the second defender and kind of like you almost box them out, but you have the ball in your hand. Yeah, yeah. He had, but he found Trey in the corner again. And and I guess this is your point. Maybe 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 watching all of this film right now is making your point. They're not bad shots. De'Aaron took one that's a little bit you know forgettable. But none of these, and I'm still, now we're, we're still in the first half. The Kings are up nine at this point. None of them are bad looks. And uh, even in that fourth quarter where I just looked at them, they had, they had maybe two or three that you'd want back. Like the one that uh, the caller talked about and said Domas got, was, was going through the lane with three seconds on the shot clock and kicked mm-hmm. it out to Keegan. Yeah, probably Domas go up with that as well. I'm not sure what that shot would look like. But Keegan wasn't necessarily open, you know, at the end of the shot clock. Um, so they had one or two like that, um, some off the bounce or whatever the case may be. But for the most part, I mean, it's it's good looks. It's good looks, I thought. Bottom line is we're just missing Arkansas's new biggest fan. <laughs> you ain't see Malik's tweet? Oh, no, 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 no. I thought you. <laughs> no, Malik. Malik's all about Arkansas now. <laughs> he's all about Arkansas right now. He didn't left his alliances yeah. to Kentucky. Well, he, he he took his alliances with his coach. Yeah, well, that's his hometown too. Yeah, he or took, home state. Yeah, he's he from Arkansas. He so. took his alliances with his coach. Yeah. Um this is not fun to watch back at all. <laughs> Especially when it's isolated because people people love to watch draft picks and like highlights. You're like, oh, this guy's so good. Yeah, yeah get this program, watch all the bad plays back. Our guy Tony Harvey says, y'all know there were a couple of times where Keegan passed up a wide open two, stepped back to take a three. As Jill Adge, she pointed it out. Mm. Um, he did do that. I would like Keegan to take get to the cup a little bit more off those DHOs from Sabonis. It looks like he's, he's uh, hunting for the threes mm. a little bit more than trying to turn that corner the way Kevin Herter used to do a really good job of. And, and get into the paint, get to the lane, you know, maybe a 15-footer. i like to see him do that a little bit more. Um, Keon's being aggressive, or excuse me, Keegan's being aggressive, though. So, you know, I, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to go too crazy uh, on Keegan Murray because he's being aggressive, he's getting them up, second-year guy. Just like last night, I'm not going to go too crazy on, on Harrison Barnes. 
statistically he didn't have the greatest game, but at least he took the eight shots. You know what I mean? He took the eight shots, got to the line. Uh, I'll take it. Maybe I'm creating a low bar for him, but I'll I'll take that. It's fine. This is – I don't know how to evaluate this. It's tough because the Kings at this moment right now are up 51-36, but they were back-to-back plays where De- De'Aaron, De'Aaron mm. is in the paint where we've seen De'Aaron a thousand times stop, pop, as as Jerry Reynolds would say, Mm. bucket right there. Paint, spray out. Mm. Same spot on the floor, too. Mm. I mean, the look is there, and this is when the three was falling for them. Again, it's 51-36 at this point. Transition three, Harrison Barnes over to De'Aaron. Good look, wide open. Mm. Missed it. Missed it. I don't know how you reconcile the three-point shot like the 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 open look that you have versus the lower percentage shot that it is. Right. And 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 I guess my argument as well is like just to make people feel better, would you rather take a contested two or an open three? That's kind of what it comes down to a lot of the time. A, a contested tough two that they kick out for the three. Would you rather But keep where's that? the contested two? Are you ten feet away? 10 to 15 feet away. I don't know. That's what, and, and I, you see I, it, that's I, where I, a I lot of know. these are coming from, right? Because they're they're getting in the paint, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? And they're yeah, getting in there. Yeah. But they're, they're not saying it's an impossible shot. You know, maybe, you know, if you get no, creative, you can do it. No, especially these De'Aaron ones. They're, you know, you can maybe get them up or something like that, but there are two or three Thunder around that potential shot attempt. One thing I want to watch here, and I can, I can isolate this even further, is De'Aaron – and it happened twice in a row. That's why it's standing out. Mm-hmm. De'Aaron, it felt like when he was driving, was looking to pass. Like he knew, he knew what the defense was going to do. That's a credit to him. Mm-hmm. But he knew what the defense was going to do. Therefore, he knew what he was going to do. His intention was to never hit a mid-range shot. Mm-hmm. His intention was never to get all the way to the basket. His intention was to draw the defender and hit the corner. Because that's, Mike talks about that all of the time. Mm-hmm. It was a corner three on, on both of those possessions. We talked about it a minute ago when it was 51, 36, it was, both of those were corner threes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now we're here into the third where it will turn into a bloodbath. <laughs> In fact, I'm just going to hit stop on this. It's real. Cause this, this won't be, this won't be fun to translate onto the radio. This, <laughs> this will get pretty rocky. What were their numbers in the third quarter? I know, it, I know it was bad. Yeah, it was tough. It was tough. Three of 13. I actually thought three, it was worse. Three of 14 in the fourth quarter. On the other hand, the Oklahoma City Thunder were five of 10 mm. in the third. Mm. I was trying to be quick and get to the fourth quarter, but I couldn't. Two of two in the third. Two of two. In Oklahoma the City. Yeah, they were two of two. Yeah. Well, you know, and they started to get, um, they started to get the benefit of the doubt of the whistles. Like it's, it, it is one thing that, you know, nobody wants to cry about or anything else like that. But I, I jokingly talked about it last yesterday with you. But I think there's some realization to it. Uh, Mike Brown talked about it a little bit last week. Kings got to flop a little bit more. Mm. De'Aaron's got to fall well, to the ground a little bit more. Sabonis has to fall to the ground a little bit more. We saw that last night with uh, with SGA. I mean, 20, 20 foul shots for for one player. That's a lot. That's a lot, and you compare that with the fact that uh, I think by the time SGA had taken his 11th and 12th free throws, Fox still hadn't taken any. And it was just like, man, I always go back to as physical as OKC is on the defensive end and what they had to do, dig down to get into that game. They're not fouling at all, and the Kings are continuously fouling? Well, I, I, I think to be fair, they're not fouling De'Aaron. Because there wasn't a massive discrepancy in free throws. No, not it's just, for the team. Yeah. yeah, it's just that SGA had 20. Fox had. That's I think, crazy. I think Fox in his, ended up with four. And he took his first ones in the fourth. In the fourth. Yeah. Um, in the fourth quarter, the Kings did take 10 free throws. Mm-hmm. Oklahoma City took 14. So, again, the discrepancy isn't massive. Um, I thought both coaches uh, did a phenomenal job of exercising the worst possible ways to use challenges. <laughs> but I guess that's a 
<laughs> I guess that's for another time. Uh, we'll come back. Um, Ramsey, I see you. I think that's TC right there, 916-909-1320. Uh, we'll come back. We'll talk more Kings uh, basketball. I'm gonna. I, I. I. Can I guess the subject Ramsey wants to talk about? Oh yeah, yeah. I think we're. Both we, we we know what it is. That needs right? to be part of the game too. That needs to be a game when Ramsey called. Guess the subject. Okay. But we know this one. This is it's easy. Tara. Yeah. He's calling. He's calling yeah. to talk about Tara. This is like me versus Jesse and, and pocket watches. Wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. We got to go to break. Kenny just dropped like that. <laughs> <laughs> play a clean game over here drew down i'm running up the rocky steps right now that's what we're doing I did have I didn't realize it till KSFM started and I was like closing out tabs. I did have a second I or not a second, it was the original one that I did have one planned for yesterday that we can go to today. Yeah, we got we gotta run a game today. We gotta we got Jesse. Jesse is struggling in there. He hears pocket watching, man. His heart starts racing a little bit. I'm like the Denver Nuggets before um, the regular season ended. We're just having a bad streak right now. Oh, it's tough. I got you. Norm, what if I say that um, it's dumb to have a statue of a actor of a movie character? Do I get back in? <laughs> Scuba, I, I I see you, bro. Not, I don't have any desire to talk about Ben McLemore. He doesn't play here. He doesn't live here. I don't know the details of his situation outside the articles that are out there. He needs to get his own shit together, man. I don't have no. I don't have anything to offer that conversation. I see you, Dr. David. That's funny. Got the whole chatty house hyping you up. Man. I need a dub so bad. Man. <sighs> Shut up, Jordan. Smart ass. Jordan Meeks ain't never messaged something that wasn't a smart ass. Nicole, Mr. C. No, what, what happened to Mr. C? Oh, he passed away? No. He did. Oh, man. oh no. Wow. Damn. RIP, Mr. Wow. C. Wow. He was with us too. He was with us in New York. Mm. Wow. Maybe, yeah, maybe I get to play one of the staff or pocket watchers. I need the dub. <laughs> Tracy Chapman, that, that album, that whole album, the first one is insane. It's really good. Like she, yeah, she got bangers for real. I'm glad she got some love this year. Uh, he's just a super baby face. That's all it is. I think he. I think now that the this this part is behind him, he's he's. I think he'll he got to get a little. You know, you don't you don't want to be too Cena ish. Get a get a little a little bit edgier. But. I don't remember if we mentioned it, but that was like the first time in a while. I was like, oh yeah, we got like the top baby face guy. Like, yeah, like let yeah. like you know like just the moment. Yep. Top yep. top top bad guy versus top good guy. Yeah. I 
Hey, shout out to Mr. C, man. Nicole just alerted us to the he passed away. Mr. C, legendary DJ, dropped Big's mixtape. Uh, worked with Big Daddy Kane. Yeah, man. Uh, was working with our company at 94.7 in New York. Uh, a legit radio legend. A legit hip-hop legend. Mm. Uh, sad to see that, man. 57 years old. Absolutely sad to see Mr. C pass away. It really is, man. RRP, man. To the, to the legend. Yes, to the indeed. legend. Yes, indeed. 916-909-1320. Uh, let's get TC and Ramsey are both on hold. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with TC because I think I know where Ramsey's going. TC, what's going on, man? Man, what's up with my two brothers before we get started? What up, TC? Uh, oh, man, just vibing. Jesse, you know, in the back. What's up with the homie, bro? Hey, um, so look, it's go ahead. No, Ain't no, nobody... you're cooking. You're cooking. You're cooking. Okay. Hey, no, so it's, it's frustrating, Kenny. So what we're trying to say is, Kenny, it's, it's, I say it all the time. It's about the threes. I, honestly, we're not a great three-point shooting team, period. With Monk, our herder, like, we're cool. We're not like the Warriors in their run. So, like, shooting 63s a game, bro, should be out. Like, Mike, they got to figure that out, bro. Like, when it's falling, it's cool. But even when it's falling, bro, you still got to have, like, a counter. Like, if you think you're going to just live by, like, let's put up 73s a game and hope we shoot 40%, and that's how we're going to beat you? No, bro, you're, we're going to be stuck in the same position we're in right now. Period. Domas, bro, you need to be more aggressive, bro. We don't want to keep hearing about that. Keegan, you got to be more aggressive, dog. Like, as far as, like, a whole team, though. But my my, my problem, Kenny, seriously, I hear you what you're saying, bro. But the threes have to stop, dog. Like, you have to have a counter. Your question was, will you go to? Well, go to a pick and roll, bro. Go to the paint. That's why you wasn't getting no calls down the stretch. Everybody talking about Chase, free throws. If the referees are looking at, like, man, these guys want to shoot 100 threes a game. We're not going to give y'all no calls. If y'all start going to the basket, maybe we'll start thinking about giving Fox a call. Maybe we'll give Domas a call. But if y'all want to sit and touch the paint, and spray out like Mike like to do, we're not going to call. Listen, we're not going to call those calls, bro. Like, Mike, you got to get a hold on this this whole spray. You got to, like, know how to decipher that, bro. Like, I love Mike, but look, hey, the threes ain't falling. We got to do this. Like, you got to have a counter. You can't just, hey, bro, hey, I don't care. We're going to put up a 70. If we hit, we hit. If we don't, we don't. Like, no, bro, we're going to be stuck in this same predicament trying to fight the status of the plan, bro. That's ridiculous, man. That three-point BS is ridiculous, dog. I don't care what nobody say. I love that's all I got. Uh, we, we love y'all. <laughs> we got a bro count on this one. That was scoreboard, scoreboard, bro. Man, that, that, that. Woo. We need, we need a bro count brought to you by. Well, dude wipes. <laughs> I don't remember. They sponsored one of the matches at WrestleMania. It's the bro count brought to you by dude wipes. They responded to my tweet. Oh, the, what they say. Sorry, bro. I said the. I said the the match by match. Uh, I said the match by match. Uh, advertisers has, has gotten to the point of distracting. Yeah. And dude wipes respond. Sorry, bro. I said it's all right. You were still better than Wingstop. Uh, I bet you. I bet you. Uh, there wasn't as many bros in that call as Kings Threes, though. It was close. That. You close. That. It was close. It was close. Let's Mike get Brown the... thinks you could have got more, more more bros off though on that call. <laughs> oh, that would that's that's it. That's it. That's an unfair line too, because he didn't say we should have shot more three. Nah, more open we, shots. He said more open shots. I don't know what that can consist of. But uh, Jesse, not a lot, a lot of people last night were like, "Really? You take fifty eight threes? You thought you should have took more?" Well, I don't know if he necessarily meant open three. Let's get the Hall of Famer in here. Ramsey, what's going on, man? Not not too much. Unfortunate news, as you said, with Mr. C. And, yes, you are you are correct in what I want to talk about. <laughs> Let's celebrate people while they're here. And we got to celebrate the career of Tara Vanderbeer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Glad, first and foremost, I'm glad she got a chip a couple years before she retired. Yeah. Because it, it, it would have been – there would have been, honestly, a little bit of void if she, if she wouldn't have got a chip. If she wouldn't have got that chip a couple of years ago. It would have been like she's been there, she got a chip, but you need it was almost like you need another one. But my my other my other hope is while she had a great career, I know they have people in line. I hope the Stanford program, women's program stays stays on par with where they've been 
for years with Tara and just continue that success and continue continue to have that program rolling, even though they're going into the, to the ACC starting next year. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a good call, Ramsey. There's obviously some changes coming forward for Stanford. How they handle the loss of Tara Vanderveer will be really interesting because it's such a unique school, right? It's Stanford, and regard whether whether it's football or it's women's basketball or it's men's basketball or it's a sport athletics are second Mm -hmm. like at stanford you're a legit student athlete there's a few schools where you're a student athlete and stanford's one of those um if you went to obviously stanford is amazing school but a lot of the appeal of that program was Tara. And I think Ramsey's right. They do have a succession. I think they have a plan in place that we'll see here executed really, really soon. Um, I, I'm confident they'll maintain uh, the, 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 the level of recruiting and so on and so forth. Uh, but Tara is, is one of those really unique coaches. We talked about, you, you know, yesterday, she's in that upper echelon, you know, Gino and Pat kind of stand alone. Mm-hmm. And then there's Mulkey. There's Tara, and now there's Dawn Staley uh, with three championships. She has 14 Final Four appearances. I was really surprised she retired simply because I thought it was going to be a race to who retired first, Gino or Tara. And I didn't think she was going to retire because now four games in the next season, Gino's going to become the all-time wins leader in, in, in college basketball. I, I, you're right about it's, that. It's 1,216 yeah. to 1,213. <laughs> she, it was really just a matter of who was going to retire first. Yeah, and at least she 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 got that experience. She got the you know the mm-hmm. celebration of, of being mm-hmm. all time wins leader. I think this says a lot more to me about how bad that move to the yeah. ACC is. Yeah, and you talk, talk about, about Tara Vanderveer yep. leaving. You talk about Cameron Brink. Uh, entering the transfer portal yep. and saying simply, I didn't come here to go across the country. Mm-hmm. I think, I think. <laughs> you gotta say something about that though. Yeah. How funny these universities are, how they used to talk about it's the kids, it's the kids, it's mm-hmm. the kids. Now you're flying these kids from California to where? Somewhere to Rutgers? Yeah. What? I'm sorry? Mm-hmm. Oh, but it's about the kid. Oh, it's about their finals. Mm-hmm. It's about their exams. All right, dog. Whatever, whatever you say. I'd like to whatever helps you sleep at night. I I, I remember, um, I think I said his name. If I didn't before, I'll say it this time. And sorry if I'm not supposed to, <laughs> but I, what Coach Katz told me the other day, I think that's really real. I think I think the Pac-12 will come back together. Maybe not twelve, mm. maybe not ten, maybe not eight, or maybe at eight. But these schools uh, can 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 you? So elaborate so, on that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so I was talking to Coach Katz there after one of the um, NCAA post games we did it with CBS 13. I really don't remember if you said this on the air, but you definitely I said it told on the me. air. I don't know if I said Coach Katz's name, but oh, well. now I did. Wow. wow <laughs> well, it's, it's K- not a- Kenny Caraway, just you know, <laughs> gatekeeper of sources over here. But uh, he talked. We talked about because it was one of the last Pac-12 teams that got eliminated or whatever. And I was like, man, I can't believe that it's over. Yeah. And he said, I know it's crazy. And he said, you know, one of the things he's hearing though, is he's hearing a lot of people believe he said, Washington and Oregon state kept, they kept something maybe kept the name pac 12 or they kept something because they believe they'll be able to get the band back together. So to speak at some point, because these schools like Cal, like Stanford, mm-hmm will go to these conferences and see it's not everything it's cracked up to be. Mm. And they're all, he said, there's already rumblings that they're getting like the short end of the stick when it comes to scheduling <laughs> and, you know, they're getting treated badly and it's not what they were promised yeah. when they said they were going to join. And that just keeps staying in my head. And you see, you know, these players out here saying, man, I'm not going to Stanford, you know, they're in the ACC and then, or not, you know, that's a Stanford, but Cal and, Arizona is going to be in this Arizona state going into the big 12. I think they're going to have a hard time recruiting. You know what I mean? Why are some of these kids going to go to Stanford when they can go to NC state? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if you got kids that aren't like, I didn't sign up to go to Stanford. So, you know, my family could never see me over there and all this other stuff. Right. Why? 
I think a lot of these teams are going to uh, a lot of these schools, excuse me, are going to see it's not so rosy. It's not so the grass isn't so greener on the other side. And I think they're going to get together. I said, maybe not all 12. I think they're going to get a pack eight together at some point. I don't know if that's five, seven, 10 years down the road, but I do see it coming back because it seems like it's a bad deal for a lot of these. If you're not USC or Washington and Oregon, doesn't seem like you're going to get treated fairly in these other conferences. Mm. So, mm. I sure hope so, though. Uh, a couple of other NBA notes. Um, lots of news out of the Bucks Celtics game last night. Man. Uh, none bigger than Giannis leaving the game with a strained calf muscle in the third quarter. Uh, Woj reported very early this morning, uh, no structural damage uh, to the Achilles. It's intact. Take that for whatever you want. Um, and I, I, I guess they're just going to monitor it now. I mean, I don't even know. I mean, he, I guess he has a strained calf. I get he has an injury. Yeah. So he has a strained calf. Like, all right. So what's next? Like we're, we're, we're resting. Cause there's, there's days left in the season. They're a playoff team. So they'll have a full week off or week ish off. He's better by then. Are we talking a return in the middle of the first round? Are we talking a return in the second? Like, what are we talking about with here? And it feels like with the extremely fragile state of the Milwaukee Bucks, this this could be a this could be a really rough time for Milwaukee. Mm. It feels like bad decisions are on the horizon for everybody involved. Unless, you, of course, what, what you what think. You, what you're alluding to. What you're alluding to. Rushing him back. I don't, Which, think, you, I don't think you can rush Giannis back. Well, that's 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 what I was going to say. That was that was my next remark. You seem to think Giannis might be about over this thing in Milwaukee. That's what I'm hearing. Ex- I don't know. Extension I, I haven't bought into that completely. But I, a, 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 extension be damned. Four years left. Wouldn't be new. The guy on his team just did it. Mm-hmm. Um, if that's accurate, yeah, you can't rush on us back. Well, I was even saying you can't, like, you can't force run it. Not like you can't do it because it's a bad look. I don't think you have the power. Anybody in Milwaukee has the power. To, no, to force like Giannis gonna do what he want to do. No, I'll, I'll and at, if Giannis ain't comfortable, but, you ain't guilting him. But at the same time, if Giannis want to play. True, that true. probably means he's a little more invested than we might think or the streets might be talking about. <laughs> he's a little more invested in the idea of Milwaukee winning and specifically the idea of Milwaukee winning this year. Yeah. There's a good chance they get bounced in the first, I think. It's, I don't they I might know, they might get caught no up with Giannis, Philly. With no Giannis, yes. even with, I'd say. Nah, hell no. If you catch Philly, I could see Philly getting them. No. Here's the other thing, though. People, like, people talk, but here's people talk a, little, a little too crazy about Milwaukee right but now. Here's, a little too crazy. here's the thing, though. He's not going to be healthy. Mm. He might play, but he's not going to be healthy, mm. and that's going to be against Joe. Mm. That's different. Now, of course, how healthy is Joe? I don't know, man. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. And it, it, Like, Joel versus Cleveland? That's one thing, mm. but Joel versus Giannis, mm. that's that's a different monster. Yeah, um, I don't know that. I, I don't know. It's it's just another. It's just another really interesting storyline. You look over at the East, and you've got this Giannis situation. You obviously got the Joel situation. It's been lingering here for a little bit. J- J- Julius isn't going to play for the New York Knicks. I don't think OG Ananobi is going to play for the New York Knicks. So you got that team. Cleveland's been a disaster for no goddamn reason did you see that that stat that was floating around i think last week about they're like i forgot what, it, what jesse did you see it they're like 29 and 29 outside of that 17 and one streak i didn't even see that oh, it, was wow. some, it was something crazy that basically said they had that crazy hot they? streak it would well, other that, than that they that just wouldn't have been a 500 team at best the 29 works out 
what was it 17 and one yeah it would have to so it would <laughs> might actually be worse yeah because they're 46 like and 33 yeah, so it would ago. be so they've lost three, they've lost three in a row that. so uh you said 29 and 29 i think it would be 29 and 32 two it'd be 29 and 32 because it was 17 and one mm. it'd be 29 and 32 mm. outside of that streak and then as some some people were talking oh. about like Yikes. I didn't really look into it, but they were like, if you really look at that streak, it was, it, it, you play who you play, but it was Pistons, Hornets. Very Chicago Bulls-ish from yeah, a few years ago. Yeah, it wasn't. Oh. It took down some top teams, but it wasn't like they was like just beating all the world beaters. Well, it's, they did beat Washington twice. <laughs> wow. Okay, wait. They beat All Milwaukee. Right. They beat Milwaukee twice. So they beat Washington twice. They beat this is the start of the streak. Right. They beat Washington twice, San Antonio, <laughs> Brooklyn, Chicago. <laughs> then they beat Milwaukee. Then they beat Atlanta, Orlando. Then they lost to Milwaukee. Then they beat Milwaukee. Uh-huh. Then they beat the Clippers, oh, Detroit. Look at that next Mem- <laughs> oh my God. The Clippers, <laughs> the Pistons, oh the Grizzlies, oh. the Spurs. They come back. They beat Sacramento. Then they beat the Wizards, the Nets, and the Raptors before losing to the 76ers. Jeez. They lost to the 76ers twice in like four days. Let's see here. And then they beat Washington again. How many freaking times yeah, did they come play on. They Washington? Them like nine times. Let's see here. One, two, wow. three, That's four. Wow. That's tough. That's uh, tough. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of those 17 wins were against. Toronto, Brooklyn, Washington. So here's the, here's the, here's frauds. Wait a minute though. Wait a minute. Here's the flip side to that. Okay. They end the season with Memphis, the Pacers and the Hornets. That's the end of their season. Well, they'll go two and one. It seems like, well, they've lost three in a row. They have lost 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 four or five. They've lost a lot actually lately. They came out West and got their ass beat. (laughs) I can't even do this. They this beat map. Utah. But it, they, they're like three and three, four, five, six. They're like three Eight? and 11 in their last. Oh, God. It's where you go up there. Jeez. So was Milwaukee just the biggest threat to Boston by default in the East? That's, that, that was my point yesterday. I don't Very think, well. Yeah. I don't think yeah. any of those other teams. Well, this was also before Giannis. But um, – I don't, I don't. New York is injured. If, if OG or Julius was there, I'd feel different about New York, but but they're not. They got to not. Yeah, they're not. Orlando. I don't think so either. I don't think so either. What about your boy? Tyrese. That is my boy. Um, Nah, they don't play enough defense. They don't play. They do. They do too much. Just up and down. Like you can, what was the question? Being an offensive minded team, but they do too much. What was the question? I saw the Bucks, the biggest threat to the Celtics out east by default. I think the answer is yes. I'm not as good as this as you guys are. Where would the Pacers meet the Celtics? The second round? Right now, it'd be the conference because they're the six. I could see that. I could see that. I hope so. I hope you're right. I hope you're right. <laughs> That's Boston and four easy. I can they would see have that. to beat they would have to beat uh let's just say for argument's sake, Orlando and Milwaukee to get to the conference. Yeah, right now it would be right 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 now today it'd be New York. New York. Right, because it's three versus six, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah it'd be yeah, New York. I don't know where yeah, New York it, it'd be Orlando New York. Was. Yeah, right now New York is three, Orlando is four. four. I do this the right way. Right now, Milwaukee's two. New York is three. It's a game difference. Mm -hmm. New York uh, is three. Orlando's four. It's a game difference. Cleveland's right there. Them and Orlando can switch spots probably based on who's playing and who's not. Then you got the Pacers, a half game behind that. The the Pacers could very, very realistically finish high as fourth. It's not crazy to think they could finish third. Mm -hmm. Who does New York finish the season against? You know, the Celtics, the Nets, and the Bulls. The Pacers finished the season against. They got two games left against Cleveland and uh, Atlanta. Pacers get to the conference finals. Kings fans, go ahead and shut off Twitter. 
Oh, yeah. Well, no, yeah. see, you know, the yes. thing about this, Well, because you know they're not going to tell the whole story. Yeah, well, they, hi- they hi- hi- we're hibernating right now with the, the, with, um, the Pacers. The, the, and and, and yeah. they, they really That's hibernating because we're well, hibernating right now. Yep. They, they really hibernating because yep. their boy was uh, got a little dicey a little bit. In the yeah. middle of the Big game last night against Toronto, though. He had 30. Mm-hmm. Um, but this, uh, so we really hadn't had this issue before because the Kings hadn't been, you know, good or in playoff contention. Last night, I'm watching Inside the NBA, and or the that's actually not Inside the NBA. It's called the NBA TNT Post Game Show no. when it's Shaq, Candace, and Jalen. It's not Inside the NBA. It's definitely good, not. Good, good branding by them to, to split the brands yeah, up there a yeah. little bit. Um, but it was the first time I got a little pissed off about the landscape of the NBA. Look at them records in the East, second through seventh. Oh. And we out here struggling. We mm-hmm. out here fighting for our lives mm-hmm. to stay out of nine and ten. Yeah. And it, it really could be the two seed. What? At 45 and 35. Mm-hmm. And I ain't fire. Meanwhile, the Kings. And I ain't fire. Kings are 45 and 34. And we fighting for our lives to, to just get seven and eight. And I ain't fire. Thank you, T.O. Maybe beat Charlotte next time. The, Maybe just the, the Eastern Conference. This is a joke. This happens well, all the time. To, to be fair, I admit and this is the first time I've really had a dog in a fight because the Kings. Weren't why? Good, so why? Like, why? Why are dogs fighting? Sometimes it's the dogs. The dogs were roughhousing. To, <laughs> to be fair, at forty-five and thirty-four, the Kings would they'd still be in the plane. They'd be seven. Yeah, but you could you, you seventh with the possibility of second. Like yeah, I get yeah. it, but. No, I, I get it. Like now, we ain't even really looking at six. No, we're not. It's on fire. All of a sudden, Dallas is the greatest team that ever Jeez. existed. Oh, hey, did you is see? Is the Luca MVP talk gained any steam whatsoever? Or is it still Jokic's? I think it's. I think it's just Jokic. It, it's whoever Jesus finishes number one between Christ. the Thunder and Jokic. Probably. I do. I do think. Uh, I, I. And I love the fact of like, um, you know, people are like ah, I got to wait for this last week. All right. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> sure that, you do. That's the problem right sure there. Sure you do. That, that one game on Sunday may change your well, whole thought. Poor Jason Tatum lost his MVP <laughs> chances on a three-game stretch. Obliterated. In January or whatever it was. That, uh, Brad, Someone Brian, take Brian Winhurst's vote from him. Yeah, I'm glad Brian Winhurst is the <laughs> shot caller for this he, as well. He's the, he's, like, he's, the, he's the guy who says the quiet stuff out loud that every other voter is like, Jesus Christ, will you shut <laughs> up? Will you please stop talking on your stupid little podcast? The um, the thing I will say is I always said SGA is the the front runner um, for MVP for me if he can keep the one seed. I will say I think Ant Man should should get some real consideration for what he's been able to do since Cat has gone out. Not let that team free fall, and if they get the one seed. I, look, right now, the fact that they're they're in the consideration for the one has me in consideration for him being I don't, MVP. I don't have a problem with that. I, I'll co-sign any of this. Ant-Man, Luca, whatever y'all want, until someone offers me an explanation why Jason Tatum's not in the conversation. Yeah. Until then. I understand that. I understand. I don't know, expectations, I guess. Like, they're holding the last six years against them. Yeah, I understand. Hey, before we go to break, uh, real quick, did you get... Uh, <laughs> Should I? Uh, yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> did, you, did, you see, did you see that Bulls play yesterday? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, how could you not? Go take a lap. Drummond and whoever else that was. Poor Drummond got hurt in that game, so I didn't want to bring it up. The, too uh, but that was <laughs> crazy. The. Uh... It was bump, bump, dun, dun, That was hilarious. <laughs> Sorry, Manny. It was funny. We'll come back. Can you imagine getting dunked on on your own, um, own attempt? Go, oh, go world. <laughs> Steve and Casey here on ESPN 1320. WCW just sent me a message that said, man, you guys made Kyle come back from his vacation early? I was like, I didn't know he was back. Said didn't wasn't he hosting? I was like, no. And then he sent me a screenshot of Biederman hosting. It's like, yeah, all right, all right, that's pretty funny. 
That's pretty funny. Hey, 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 hey. It's the 13th round. Shout out to my people over at the Dope Ones. Shout out to Jordan Brand. You know what I mean? And shout out to Cola Seamoss. You already know the vibes over there. And we got a little news here. We got a little news. You know, some some big time contenders changing affiliations, changing promotions. As Jerron Boots Ennis announced this morning that he's signing with Matchroom and the Zone. He's going to be with Eddie Hearn and, um, you know, in hopes of, of furthering his career. The, the, um, the, the misnomer about Jerron Boots in this before was that he was a PBC fighter. He wasn't signed to Al Heyman to PBC. He was a Showtime fighter. So now that Showtime um, is done with their boxing, essentially he kind of always was a free agent or something like that, but essentially he was looking for a broadcasting home. And um, I guess he felt his own and, and matchroom was the way to go. Maybe he can get a fight with Connor Ben. Maybe he can get a fight with Devin Haney down the road. So, Hey, Jerron Boots in is, is, he's that dude. He is next top five pound for pound. And I think at some point in his career, he's going to be the number one fighter in the world. He's going to be the number one fighter in the world. He is the truth. I hope that Eddie Hearn knows what he's doing with them over at Matchroom. I hope the zone knows what they're doing with them over on that, on that platform, but he's the truth. And the, the reality of the situation is, Whatever needs to happen to see him in the ring, that's that's what needs to happen. So if he's going to be active over there with Matchroom in the zone, I'm all for it, man. Shout out to Boots. He's next. Check that dude out, man. Jerron Boots in his now with Matchroom and the zone. That's the 13th round. Terrence Crawford was fighting tomato cans his entire career, beat Spence, and now we're just never going to fight again, huh? Look, I'm going to tell you this, Dr. David and everybody else. Terrence Buck Crawford, he's number one pound for pound. Um, best fighter in the world. He deserves all the credit in the world for beating Errol Spence the way that he did. Let's be perfectly clear. Boots ain't getting starched by nobody. There ain't nobody that's starching Boots. They may beat him. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying he's unbeatable. Ain't nobody starching that man. He got everything. He's got the total package. Pause. He's got it all. Ain't nobody starching boots. That ain't happening. I'll tell you that for sure. Collins, we play on. <laughs> we can some change till De um Haney and uh, Garcia. Mm. Oh, that's gonna be it's gonna be a good look. They said that's gonna be at times too. I was talking to to Joe. And he's like, yeah, we got we got Haney and uh Haney and Boots. I'll be around on Saturday. Right, I don't know where I'm Haney watching and... it. Actually, I think I'm about to figure that out. I'm gonna have the kids. You got the link. Well, true. This is true. I tell you what, if Ryan wins though, he's a mega star. Like he will launch. He will be like I don't know. I don't want to be too too extreme, but he'll be right there with Tank, like right after. He would he would he he'd be up there. Um you want to talk about getting starched though. <laughs> I think David about to. That uh, Devin about to beat his ass. I can see it. I mean, I never really thought highly of Brian as a boxer, anyways. Devin about to beat the brakes off of him. Let's steal one for my guy Kyle Madsen. Brian Garcia is the Michael Jordan of Raleigh Romero's. <laughs> Hey. 
Hey, I, I feel like this is a um I feel like this is something that happened this week, maybe last night. I don't feel like I just completely missed it. You tell me though. Kings Pelicans tomorrow's on TNT. TNT exclusive. I feel like that might have been like last night they said, all right, we're gonna put this on TNT because it has some implications. I don't think I don't Somebody let me know when they announced it. I think that. they announced it earlier in the week. Like maybe a few days ago. Well, you know what that means. Just like a 20-point lead. <laughs> the wind just evaporated. Somebody asked in the chat, they said if the Kings won a TNT game, I think they're like one they, and four. They, they beat they, the Warriors. Um, that might be the only one. Last year, they never lost. National never TV lost. Kings last season were the best team yeah. of all time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they were the Bill Russell the Celtics. One. Yeah. Yeah. Kyle Some... says it's been scheduled on TNT for a while. <laughs> Maybe I did just miss it. I don't know. I didn't think so. Maybe I started blocking it out of my mind. Yeah. I don't know, man. What? I have some rumors out there. I want to get back to the Kings. I want to ask you a oh, question. R- real quick before the rumors. Uh, you're going to the game on Friday, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Let me see the start time. Is it seven thirty? That actually will help. That's actually okay this time. That's actually okay this time. I'm you go. Gonna you gonna to make that, that move out to the the heights real quick? I was gonna do that before on Friday. Yeah. What's that? That's the the going away the goodbye joint. I, I was gonna try and put oh it real quick and then slide. I out. I I gotta. It's tough. Know, well, it's tough. Yeah. There's there's a lot I'm trying to deal I with. I might have to Friday. figure something else out. I might be, yeah. Yeah. I might I'm, I'm I'm I'm. I don't think I could do both. I might be able to do one, and I'm not 100% confident I could do one. Mm. Um, but my plan is to be at the game. Gotcha. Uh, there's only two left, so my plan is to yeah. be there uh, Friday and then, of course, Sunday. Yeah. Um, oh, you know, let's, let's go. You know, it ain't even really nothing to get hyped up about at this point. You know, how you're I'm still doing. under 500. You see what I'm doing? I'm uh, two games under. Well, it's versus nothing. Jesse. I don't, why do we always got this caveat? Just say my say my schedule. Do we talk about the the Kings Conference record right now? No, actually, we, just we say do. What the record is. We did, we, we did for a week because they might have had a three way tie. <laughs> There's some rumors out there involving this individual. This will be an interesting one. We're going to do total money, including the years left. Hey, why are we switching up now? Now, now that old KC out here cooking, now we switching up the rules. Ah, I got to say, we don't feel great right now. We just did right. this. Yes, I'd right. like to point out, we just did this yesterday, and you won. I thought you both of you were rather embarrassing in your well, performances. Well, I played it safe. I played it safe. I didn't want to get into a scenario where, you know, you had to start doing math. So I, I know that ain't it. Who's the player, let man? Just, let me just be right here, man. Let me just be right here. <laughs> Calm down, pal. Hey, we're stressing. We're stressing. I need this dub. I need it. <laughs> it's Trey Young. Oh. It's Trey Young. He's played six seasons in the NBA. He has three guaranteed years left on his contract. Trey Young, of course, is the former number five overall pick in the NBA draft, 2018. You might remember that. And the peak money he will earn will be in the 26-27 season, where he will earn $48.9 million. I think he'll be doing, earning that on the Spurs, too. Just throwing that out there. Mm. 48 Point nine million dollars, and that is what's sparking the Trey Young conversation. Is the rumors uh, that are surrounding Trey Young? That will be his ninth season in the NBA. Twenty six, twenty seven will be his ninth season. Trey Young, forty eight point nine million dollars will be his peak earnings in the final year of that contract. The former number five overall pick at Oklahoma. Trey Young's career earnings are what? We're going to go $266 million. We're going to go $266 million for Jesse Tapia, who desperately needs a victory. With the opportunity to go 9-12 and 12 right here. Kenny Caraway, 
Nine NBA seasons for Trey Young. $48.9 million is his peak earnings coming up in the 26-27 season. Go ahead and put these shades on, man, because, you know, I want this for the photo op, you know, after I get this W. <laughs> after I get this W, I'm going to say 226 million. Two hundred and twenty-six million dollars. Give me a second, cause I have to do math here. Please, hold on. I'm not. This is this a win for you, boy. I, it's a win. No, we we, we need know, it. We, we need a moment. Cooking. We, we need a moment. We still cooking out here. This baby. might be. <laughs> we still cooking, baby. This might be the closest pocket watching. In it's, history. It's definitely a dub for your boy. <laughs> Jesse is sick to his stomach right now. Oh, I am. Yeah, we're feeling we're feeling. As horrible. I do the math. I'm literally just watching you um calculate it right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 241,295,349. A difference of fifteen million dollars in change. Any Caraway wins. Come on, man. Again. Come on. Hey, 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 hey. Don't say it like that. I need some more excitement in first, your voice when you all. announce me as the winner again. Try it again. Sir, who are you talking to? I'm listening. I'm waiting. Try it again. With his ninth victory of the season. Any Caraway moves to nine and twelve. But, but no, Jesse I'm not Jackson. nine and twelve. I'm eleven and twelve. I'm one game under. I'm cooking right now. All right, and I demand the respect of the way that you announce my victory. Try it again. I got nothing to say, bro. I can tell you something right now. Your boy <laughs> has lost his goddamn mind. I got nothing to say. We could, they're saying I got the yips the, in the chat. You're, Deuce you're, in the chat saying I have the yips. It's not oh, wrong. Man. We're struggling. You hit that music, is, and I'm just kind of just, oh, my gosh. Bro, the look on your face has changed. This is real. Like, man, he's like, yesterday. Like, oh, you must be mad because the Celtics lost, and you lost Pocket Watch. I don't care. Give a damn about the Celtics right now. We are reeling with Pocket Watchers right now. I don't know the last time you won. Dude, it was before last week. I went over his last week, this and I've already over his now. This is a boy, cook it out here. You are putting up a Jinder Mahal like record. Hey, don't disrespect me. I'm still, I'm still above five hundred. That's going. Hey, that's going. That's going. That what is this Wednesday? That's gone by Friday. It's we're going the, into hey, next week with a new leader. The tough part this, too is I get like where Kenny was coming from, like when he was losing, he'd be like always asking for pocket watching games. I want to play again. I need a dub so bad right now. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell you guys. I'm gonna tell you guys the, uh, the 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 issue, and it, it's it's a big issue. It's, Jesse knows now. I know now. Having to go first is a killer. I don't even think it's that. My guess has been ass. But see, and see, I almost I almost tricked this one off because Jesse said two sixty something. I was like, he ain't make more than two sixty. All I need to do is be close, and I almost said like two forty. I thought he really made like two fifteen. I was like, just don't. I was trying not to get it into a calculate situation. So I was like, I know he didn't make more than 260, so I ain't going over. It's going to be 220. Keep it safe. Our guy I didn't e know he made 240. I thought it was more like 250. Our guy e e in the chat throws in a good point. I mean, this kind of coincided. My struggles have coincided with the Kings as of late. Well, stop shooting so many threes. You're right. You know what? I'm getting paid so much damn money. I need to get more shots up. Jesse's on the verge of blowing a 20-point lead. <laughs> Jesse's on the verge. Look, look, look what they're doing to me in the chat. I got to change my last name if I lose. Bro, your your pops is in here. I got to change my last name. Your, your your dad is in the chat. This is. Dude says you look like you look. You're out here looking like Sabonis. Oh no! I'm getting paid too much to be playing like this. Oh no! Man, this oh, is tragic. Man. This hey. is tragic. And the thing about it is. I'm not letting off the gas. Oh man. I'm they not letting him, off the gas they call at him any Jesse Barnes, though. Bro, y'all hit me with Jinder Mahal and Harrison Barnes. That's not nice. <laughs> Bro, the great Kali about to come out and help you get a victory. I still haven't paid off why he showed up, too. Oh, no, man. it was a one-off. He just showed up for the Punjabi prison match and disappeared. <laughs> Playing like the Dolphins in December, damn it. Man. Well, we are later in the PWL season. Yeah, we, we are. are a little later. 
This Only ain't September no more. If I didn't have that nine game losing streak twice, I would have made playoffs. <laughs> where um where when does the season end? In August, right? August first. Yeah. August first. Yeah, we're cooking right now. No denying it. Now that now that I no denying it. I am the, the head of the table. You talk to me like that again, though. <laughs> now well look, I am the head of the table here I'm in the PWL. Like I'm gonna treat that dude who lives down the street from me. <laughs> Used to. <laughs> uh, the stupid ass house ain't sold yet <laughs> now that i am the head of the table in the pwl mm-hmm. now that i am the tribal chief in the pwl i demand that these expanse and franchises be let into this league well let's hold on a second because okay. there is that you check the standings. we can have a game still, today no you, no no, 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 no. hold on hold on hold on you check the standings at number one it still says the boston Tapias. I do want to be well. Bruno San Martino has the all-time title. Well, all right, right. you know what? You've so... taken it way too far. <laughs> but Jesse, you look. If if the commissioner lets these teams no. in the way he should, no, 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 no. Jesse could no, have no, no, another no. game today. No, 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 no. Don't switch up the analogy. I'm the final boss. <laughs> if you want to be the tribal chief, I'm the final boss. <laughs> Well, look, just and I haven't had a chance to review the tapes of Je- there's a there's another opponent waiting at three o'clock. I don't know if Jesse could take a defeat at the hands of James Ham today. I, think, I, think we need I to have play. to worry about my players. Hey, James Ham was being I, sneaky too. I think James Ham was playing try, trying to play um, the see, um, I, pocket watches on the insiders earlier. I, I don't, what I, with Biederman? No, yeah, he, he threw a, he threw a pocket watch. Give me the look. No, no, no. no How no. many people <laughs> in this market reference pocket watching a day? <laughs> he showed me that look. I don't know how to play the hockey's, bro. That's funny. Pocket watches is only at D'Lo and Casey Stadium. <laughs> D'Lo and Casey Stadium. Well, like I said, I think that I think that there's an there's an opportunity for you, Jesse, to get back on the good foot today at around three o'clock. No, I'm the head of the table. He's in the league. You got a match. You know what? You're fighting tonight. So I guess Kenny's the commissioner the way he's talking. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he's the commissioner the same way Jack Tunney was the commissioner. Jack Tunney. <laughs> so Sergeant Slaughter over here, Jack Commissioner Tunney. Foley. <laughs> Jack Tunney. I really thought he was the boss. <laughs> Yeah, it's the guy that runs the WWE. What do you mean? <laughs> Wasn't the Rock's daughter the GM for NXT? Like that's her oh, character. Oh, was she? I think, oh, that, was that, she? I think that's her character Simone? now. No, I didn't know that. I haven't watched NXT. It looks great. I just yeah, I only I'm, watched the Shawn Michaels highlights. I'm really well, and they had some last night too. I saw. Them. I, didn't, I didn't see them. She's One of them star. has a crazy finishing move. I, 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 she's a star. I forgot her name, but you know that she's a yeah, star. She's a star. <laughs> I need her on the main roster. Shout out to the heartbreak kid. <laughs> but I do. Does anybody know? Well, I, I thought I was going to go watch it, but I probably won't. Who won? Tricker or Mello? Anybody know? Did they fight this week? Yeah. I thought that was next the, week. I think Saturday. Yeah, that was their takeoff. Oh, the Saturday. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I think it was. I don't know. I think Trick was going to win, but. I thought that's what I saw on Twitter, but I can't remember. I think they haven't. I think they. I think they go again next week. Maybe I read that they, wrong. No, they might. They might. They. I think that. Oh, they saying trick one. Um, I I watched on uh, on Peacock like the eight minute like hype video for them or mm-hmm. whatever. I thought it was pretty good. I was. It had me. It had me interested. I was like, I'll check this out. There, I didn't. But. There, there, there isn't a better production staff on the planet than WWE's production staff. Like I told you, I have feelings about the Gunther Sami Zayn match until that. Video package aired. I was like, Sammy can't lose. Mm. You cannot air that. And then that dude go out there and get beat. Well, the difference between everything is all redacted nonsense is gone now. In fact, yeah. Like it's literally yep. like completely different. Yep. Mm. Yeah. It's That's a facts. it's a whole different company. That is fact. It's a whole different company. Um, and it was a familiar sight for Kings fans last night. Oh. So we've talked about a variety of different things as it pertains to the Kings loss last night. Actually, let's touch on a couple of things. James is going to join us in a heartbeat before we get this is about the Kings, but it's in a roundabout way. Uh, the, I got a, uh, I was texting with the tribal chief last night and, um, you know, 
Aaron's a big Kings fan. He goes season ticket holder and all of that. He's pretty in tune with the team. He was out watching the watching the game somewhere and he was like, Okay, help me out again. What are, what are we rooting for? And I was like, Well, you know, obviously we wanted the Kings to win. That's not really going well for us right now. Let me look up this Clipper Sun score. Oh man. I was I just knew my phone was broke. So I was <laughs> like, Okay, well the ESPN app isn't working. Let me go to this Apple app. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was 42 to 16 when I looked. That was crazy. I was like, what? Man. Uh, 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 yeah, that was the that was nuts. The other crazy part about that game is I think we're like maybe eight minutes to go. Didn't the Suns get it to eleven or nine? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they wound up losing by uh, it, it wasn't like you look at the final score, you don't think anything crazy about it. Mm-hmm. They wound up losing, but I think it was less than 20. Did you hear? Um, no, you didn't hear because you were handling some other business. I didn't I didn't know this. Chris Biederman, who was on the insiders, he said it during the handoff. But Mark Dagnall had talked about um, like last night was a 27 point swing from the Kings being up 20 to losing seven. Right. Mm-hmm. 27 point swing. Mm-hmm. And I forgot how Chris worded it. But Mark Dagnall had said something to the effect of. There's like, there's an average twenty point swing in every NBA game. Yeah, I can see that up ten down. I never, 10. yeah, I, I never thought about it that way. Sure. And we, you know, obviously, it's not going to make anybody feel better about losing a twenty point lead. But it, like, the, the whole point was those things happen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. You mm-hmm. just weathering it is mm-hmm. how you avoid losses and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And the Kings, for at least four times, haven't been able to weather it to hold on to the win. But right. um, I, I just, I had never heard that. I had never, I guess crazy. Like it's 20 point swing on average, every game in the NBA. Yeah. Yeah. I hadn't heard it articulated from a coach before, but you could certainly see it. Like no one blinks at 10 point leads mm-hmm. um, or them being eliminated. Right. So right. Uh, yeah, that's it. That, 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 that'd be an interesting study. That's, that's, that is interesting. Uh, but the Clippers, um, shout out to Russell Westbrook, triple double number one ninety nine nice. uh, from a guy who started yesterday. I think it was uh, fifteen plus fifteen plus fifteen plus. Also, uh, I in that one. Draymond's. You know what I did? Oh, don't do that. Draymond played well yesterday. He did play well. He was um, he was hitting Warriors. He, I, <laughs> he was. <laughs> but some of our friends get a little too excited <laughs> when that happens. Like I saw a post that said the Traymond Green show. <laughs> I'm gonna forget um in the finals, Draymond Green in game six. It's a jumper and Warrior fans like, see, see, this is why you play him. <laughs> What's the line and what is it? Little big league when the yeah. dude hits the single yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you're getting excited off that single, that tells you everything you need to know. Yeah, but did, did not J- Draymond played very well played yesterday. Really well, and the Warriors uh got the victory over the Lakers 134. 120 so what that means right now is the kings are still half a game up on the los angeles lakers uh they're one game up on the golden state warriors uh and then of course they've got um the pelicans coming up tomorrow and the sun's coming up on friday i don't know what the scenario is i think the kings would still have the tiebreaker in this obviously they got to win all three Mm -hmm. Um, I thought the Pelicans would have to lose all three, but they might be able to win one as long as it's not against Sacramento. Mm-hmm. And as long as Phoenix finishes with the same record, mm-hmm. if Phoenix, New Orleans and Sacramento finish with the same record, I think that favors Sacramento. Mm-hmm. Um, but you need things to kind of go south for New Orleans beginning tomorrow night at the Golden One Center yeah. on TNT. On so, TNT. There's that. Um, one of the things that, you know, I've been thinking about since last night and, you know, for those just tuning in, I, I haven't destroyed the Kings like much of the rest of the city has done for losing that game last night. It's definitely frustrating. It's definitely upsetting <clears throat> that they lost that game. But uh, my whole premise and, and they weren't perfect. Like, do I want them taking 58 threes? No. You know, did they turn the ball over, you know, late? Yes. This is a bonus should he have been more aggressive absolutely all this it wasn't a perfect game that's not where my premise was but i did think that team played their ass off last night i thought they they battled and competed 
and they made too many mistakes or whatever that they weren't able to overcome, you know, that, that game last night. But I, I thought I thought they played really hard and they they really got after it to try to salvage that four game road trip and, and make it two two. And they just weren't able to do it. But one of the thoughts I had um after watching that game was man, they just they don't they don't have enough is presently constituted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They are missing Malik Monk and I put Kevin Herter in there in a yep. major, major way. Yep. I know, you know, maybe they should have uh you know got gotten they definitely should have gotten more from Sabonis. Um, maybe they shouldn't have took 58 threes, all this other stuff, but you get 33 from De'Aaron, you get 26 from Keon, you get Davion putting up, you know, eight. Harrison gave you 10, Keegan gave you what you get, and you can only get 105 points. Mm-hmm. Like, and even even if they like say Sabonis gives you another 10, so he has 18, like you like fighting and clawing to get to 115. Mm-hmm. Like they just and it and it it's representative of uh, what's been going on. I think Will Z said like the last 10 games or so, you know, they have struggled to score well and not all 10 games are without Malik Monk, but I think all 10 are without Kevin Herter, mm -hmm. but um, they are, yeah. You know, they, they just, they offensively. And one of the things that came out of that game Mm -hmm. as well, Damien and Jesse is they had some slip ups. Say it again. Sabonis didn't play well. They shot too many threes, turn the ball over and over. What that said to me is they can't have any slip ups. I agree with you yeah, on that. We talked about that. They can't have they have perfect. to play a perfect. That's that's a lot perfect. to ask. Well, go ahead, Jesse. Oh no, I was just saying I agree with Kenny on that. They're they're kind of hanging on by a string. Like you can't you can't afford a Sabonis game like that or anything like that. Yeah, and and I think that's the the point we were trying to make earlier. You're talking about the offense there a second ago, 105. Mm-hmm. This is the second, and, 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 and it shouldn't take too long to find this. I think it was New York, but I'm going to take a quick peek. Uh, it was. It was New York. Um, this is the second time, and I'll take a – yeah, not, not, nothing there with the Celtics. Uh, Nets don't really matter. They got the win. But actually, you could fact that you could, you could do the net. You could do the Nets too. You talk about the, the scoring. Mm-hmm. I mentioned the Nets. What was the other one? The Knicks. Last night's the same thing. They scored 60-plus in the first half. They scored, it looks like it was a, a, about 60 mm-hmm. against the Nets. It was over, 65 against the Nets. Finished with 107. Uh, the Knicks, they scored 60 mm-hmm. in the first half. Um, finished with 109. Just for fun, let's look at the Clippers. Um, Clippers is about 56. Mm-hmm. The second half is kicking their ass. Mm. So we talk about the the, the the firepower of Malik and, and, and Kevin Herter. They're, 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 there's just not enough there, whether it's the, the three-point shooting or ways to score. And that was our big argument with Malik Monk, right? The mm. different ways to score. They're scoring in the first half. And it's not a half split where it's like, oh, they were really bad in the first half, but good in the second half. And all of those games I just mentioned, there's 60-plus points, or in the one case, 56. 60-plus points. In the first half, and it trails off dramatically in the second. Mm-hmm. Halftime hits, and everything goes to hell. Mm-hmm. What do you attribute that to? I attribute that to that's the Is way fatigue. Well, I adjustments think from the other team a little bit, and I also think that's that's how the NBA game goes. Defense picks up as the game goes along, and you talk that about definitely looks quarter. to be the case and, in the fourth quarter and, and things of that nature. Because think about it like this: like it's mm-hmm. routine nowadays for somebody to score 70 and a half right in the first half mm-hmm. there's mm-hmm. a reason people don't average 140 points a game because mm-hmm. because the the game changes like people get a little bit more locked in in that second game the game slows down a little bit more in that second half and that's one of the things i think happens with these kings as of late in that mm-hmm. second half and that also goes to all right now the ways to score and the ability to score um you know, gets a little bit more limited in that mm-hmm. second half, specifically in that fourth quarter. So that's that's kind of what I attribute it to. We'll come back. Uh, James Ham is going to join us. We'll talk a lot more Kings basketball. A couple of other NBA notes I want to just touch on really, really quick uh, before James joins us. That's coming up here. It's the one KC brought to you by Sky River Casino on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320.
Giants got some runs on the board today. I get them one here. Yeah, Scooter, I definitely think fatigue is at least a little bit of a factor. But uh oh. I'm always I always get a little nervous when I see Dr. David tweets pop up. Bro, I got hit with the Bruno San Martino Photoshop. Oh no. Oh man, that's tough. That's tough. Sold out the garden and no one cared. Damn, Jesse. Anyone going to the Chris Weber speaker series on uh, Friday? Uh, sorry, Saturday. Tickets are available at eventbrite.com. Search Chris Weber. Come see us. I got to get Zay's. Zay made us a little logo. I got to get it on the screen here. Got to post the link for those tickets again, too. Oh, uh, yeah, that wouldn't hurt, Zay. That wouldn't hurt. Um, it's just my first and last name at me.com. That's my email. I could probably put together the graphic a little easier if it's emailed. But we'll see. I didn't see what type of file it was. We'll, we'll get that up there. Sorry, Jess. We had to get through Monday before we started talking about it. And then it was a really late, excuse me, it was a really late ask. But I think it's going to be a great event anyways. I, I'm a big fan of Chris Weber. Man, you're not lying. Those dudes are sorry now. Mm. I hate to see it. Got to get Jesse out of this. Oh, there you go, Jess. That's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. Hmm. See what the last two minute report says. Cool little question from JV. What do you think it should start? If I wanted to start WWE like it was a TV show, what year should I start? Mm. Kind of. I'd say ninety-seven. Yeah, I'm about to say attitude era. Ninety-seven is pretty fire. I think ninety-seven is a great, great year. You don't need to see Mabel versus Diesel <laughs> in ninety-five. There's some really good Bret Hart, Owen Hart stuff in like ninety-four. But like ninety seven, the start of ninety seven, you get you get like the emergence of Stone Cold Steve Austin. You could actually you could start in ninety six. Wow. You get the boyhood dream comes true. You you get like in October, you get uh uh Brett versus uh Austin, and that kind of is what propels Austin there. You're For I was yeah. saying before they obliterated it to hell. Um, I used to be my favorite thing going on WWE Network and like watching how feud started and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Their their um the WrestleMania rewind thing was really good. Like where they would before they show the match, they would give you like 30 minutes of how you got to this point. And and um you can't do the the whole year. So I, I agree with you, it's 97, but Hulk Macho Elizabeth works today. Mm -hmm. Like that. Yep. That shit was 
fire. Yeah, because Hogan was snaking his girl. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and you guys were cheering him for that. Yeah, Hogan, Hogan, Hogan in 2024 would be a little bitch. Like he a little snake. Oh, Hogan in 2024 booing him like he's Roman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for real. Got his hand on Miss Elizabeth's ass. Like, yo, what the <laughs> hell is going on here? Uh, Nation Rock was 97. Nation Rock started, I think, in the summer of 97. 96, Rocky Maivia debuted in November of 96. That's Blue Tripper right there. Hey, eh? Blue Tripper. That's die, right. Rocky, die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the funny thing about Nation Rock, too, is he didn't... That's the gratitude I get from you pieces of crap. For about, what, what would you say, about a month or two? He didn't come in like that on on the nation he was just kind of there didn't really do much no 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 that was that right That's there the gratitude I get that was that was his first crap. night i thought he like i was affiliated with him before mm -mm. before he started talking. no nah, he was hurt no he uh <laughs> no way i'm not finishing that story <laughs> rocky got hurt he like hurt his acl tore his acl injured his acl whatever disappeared for a little while when they brought him back to tv he came in. It You're was. Right. I think it was. Yeah. I think it was Farouk versus. It was Farouk versus somebody. I was gonna say Ahmed. It wasn't Ahmed. It was Farouk versus somebody. And Rock came in, hits him with the rock bottom, yeah. and then does the does I the do nation pose right. with him. You're right. And then it was a week later he hit us with. That's the, the gratitude I get from you pieces of crap. Guy, right? And I don't know why he sounds like this. That's the gratitude I get from you pieces of crap. Die, Rocky, <laughs> die. That is correct. That's, that, that, there you go, Warren. That's right. It was Farouk versus Chains. Oh, snap. <laughs> He's oh, right. Snap. He had Chains with the rock bottom. Oh, man. I'll never forget the uh, the Nation versus Los Bariquas uh, feud. Savio Vega. Mm. Who else was on the roster? I don't remember any of the Los Bariquas except for Savio Vega. Yeah, it was, but it was somebody else that we... For some reason, I remember DOA, which was Chains eight ball and crush and then crush. yeah i don't i don't i don't remember there was who one was. other person that now I'm, i don't now feel I'm, like it, he was known i think savio was the most famous savio is definitely the most famous. but there was the nation the heart foundation dx doa yeah they were all at the same time let me see factions uh maybe yeah maybe yeah i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at these what are their names? You got their names, or are you just looking at pictures? <laughs> well, I've, I've got um, Jose. Was Jose Estrada? Was that is that his name? Damn, I can't believe. Oh, here we go. Savio Vega. Yep. Jose Estrada Jr. Okay. Good, yeah. good, good stuff. I don't know the third one. Jesus Castillo and Miguel Perez. Oh, there was four of them. Yeah. All right. Was Jose Estrada Umaga's manager for a bit? That was. Armando wasn't his name Armando. Okay, yeah, I might be getting to mixed up then. Umaga was nasty boy. What did his yeah, Umaga, Umaga was, was bad. Crazy. Umaga was bad. One of these guys are it's like super hairy. <laughs> Hair on his shoulders and everything. No. no. <laughs> oh man. Well, good news, guys. The last two minute report is out. And with 125 left, it turns out it turns out uh, Chet Holmgren um, actually touched the ball before it went out of bounds, and it should have been the Kings' call. They got that one wrong. Yeah. NBA saved my bad. Mm. Uh, good news: uh, Shea Gildress Alexander did in fact travel mm. uh, on that play with uh, one minute and 18 seconds left. That was a uh, crazy travel. NBA says my bad, um, <laughs> and that's about it. That was a crazy travel. That was a that was, he, NBA he got the pivot two, and then did the dream shake like. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, they only acknowledged the travel once. They didn't go. He actually traveled twice, but we're just going to give you the one. Um, yeah, the NBA uh, messed up two calls that favored the Oklahoma City Thunder mm. in the final one minute and twenty five seconds of that game. Ah, <sighs> well, I don't know what the correct way is to use a challenge, but man, I'm not sure last night was it. Didn't they uh, both use the challenge fairly early? No, they, that, I think it was, I think they both used it in either, I think they both used it in the fourth, but it was like earlier in the fourth. I thought, or, or it could I have thought been the third. I thought Mike's was real early. Oh, maybe he did. 
Oh, he did. He I used remember, it. We were here. Yeah, because we I were here when he used it. There was a call that went the king's way, and yep. Katie was like, "Yeah, too bad he doesn't have his challenge anymore." Yeah, and it was like early third quarter. Mike used it. Mike used it. It was a. It was. It was a. The it was the Domas foul on Chet mm. that, like, I guess maybe you could have made an argument. Mm. I don't know that I would have used it right there. Mm. It was a tough. It, it was one of those ones where it's like I see what they see. I don't think they're overturning. Right. It, it right. was one of those. That's the question. You, to me, you got to ask a lot of the times when you're making it, these challenges. Like, yeah, you may be right. It wasn't a foul. Right. But are they going to overturn it? And the tough one is Chet. You probably could have gotten. The, the the Shea one wasn't even called. There was nothing you could do about the Shea travel. It wasn't that like was crazy. there was no, there was nothing to review. Yeah. So you just, nothing happens there. Uh, Giants get a win. San Francisco Giants just went final, beat the Nationals 7-1. to one. Good for them. They avoid the sweep at the hands of the Nationals. Need it. Much need a win. 7-1. to one. Put up some, put up some runs today. Put up some runs, yeah. yeah. Uh, a couple of quick things we didn't touch on. James is going to join us here in just a heartbeat. We mentioned the um, Bucks Celtics game story out of uh, obviously is Giannis Antetokounmpo, uh, no structural damage to the uh, Achilles there. Um, Bucks say uh, this from Shams that Giannis will miss the remaining three games of the season, and receive daily treatment and evaluation on the calf strain. Uh, no surprise there. Uh, the question is when is he going to come back? Mm-hmm. Um, Patrick Beverly started yesterday, 20 points, 10 rebounds. Good for Pat Bev. <laughs> Good for him. Uh, and Good they played game. a 48-minute game where the two teams only shot two free throws. That was crazy that is to see. very much a record. That is – these refs, I don't know what they're doing half the time, bro. I really don't, man. Like, I don't – how does that happen? For context, was it was it 30? What was the number last night? Uh, 26, 31 for context, the Kings and Thunder featured 57, (laughs) 57 free throws in the Thunder Kings game, two, (laughs) two in the Bucks versus Celtics. That's a trip. That is a trip. (laughs) Boy, NBA officials. I don't know. (laughs) Like I and look, I'm trying not to be like I didn't watch that game. Mm-hmm. I had no interest in it. it. It didn't seem like something I needed to see. Um, but that's pretty wild. Yeah, that's pretty wild. I don't think I've never seen that before. No one has. That's that. That's <laughs> never happened. Never before. seen anything close to that though. That was crazy. Two free throw attempts. Uh, and 51 for your boy. We mentioned that a minute ago when you were trying to get um. Ant-Man into the MVP conversation. 51 I points. I think they play the Nuggets tonight or tomorrow or something like it's that. It's tonight, yeah. So Carl Anthony Towns is on his way back, but he is not on his way back tonight. Mm. Uh, tonight will be a battle for first place. Mm. First place in the Western Conference is at stake tonight with the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Denver Nuggets. Ant-Man fizz, fizz, figures out a way to get this, this Timberwolves team to the one seed. I got to take a, a a really serious look at him being the MVP. It's cute. It's yeah, cute. I mean, well, it's rational, but let's be aware of what we're talking about. Them, your boys, who you listen to, them, uh, they, they, them dudes crowned the MVP weeks ago. Well, Hell, it might even be months ago at this point. It might have been months ago at this. Point. Luca's on the hottest team in the league. He's the hottest player on the hottest team in the league. Mm-hmm. Nope. Jason Tatum, they've cleared the Bucks by 15 games. Mm. Nope. Yeah. Ant Man doing what he's doing. Nope. You right. Jokic. You right. All right, man. Jeez. All right, man. You too can be an NBA insider. All you have to do is shove your head firmly up your butt. <laughs> and you can have a vote. <laughs> um James Ham said to join us here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, I don't think we, I, I know we kind of pointed this out. We didn't really elaborate on a career high for Keon Ellis yesterday. I had asked questions headed into last night's game mm-hmm. about how much is Keon willing to do? Like we know Keon has gotten comfortable 
shooting, but you know, six of eight, six of nine. That's a that's a great look for Keon Ellis. Yeah. But when push comes to shove, and they need shooting and they need scores, would he shoot 14, 15, 16, 17 times? Mm-hmm. Well, the answer, uh, it, at least for a night, was emphatically yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was nine of seventeen last night, and perhaps crazier, he was eight of fifteen from three. Keon freaking Ellis shot 15 threes yesterday and hit eight of them. Man, shout out to Keon. I don't know what's more impressive, the eight <laughs> or the 15. Uh, but I asked, eight, will three. he shoot? Mm-hmm. Will he push past that threshold of, okay, I've kind of done my part. This is what I do. Let's get Keegan going. Let's Harrison, go back to De'Aaron, Domas, whatever. Uh, and again, at least for a night. Uh, he did that, and he was a big reason the Kings were in position uh, to win that game late. Absolutely, man. And, you know, he he looks like a guy more and more every game that we had this discussion last week. I don't know if we had it with you, but, you know, that's that's a guy that you can – he can be your starting two guard. You'll be fine. And that may be something that this mm. team is – a question that's answered moving forward, mm. you know. You got Keon at the two. Now you can go and attack other um, question marks that you have on the team, whether it's the four or, you know, you can go get you, you can go get a uh, small forward and move Keegan to the four. Because as much as Keegan, what I've seen from Keegan this year as far as being a little bit more athletic, doing a little bit more and creating his own shot and doing some good stuff, I I, I, I like that. I like that. It's a sign of improvement. But I think at the end of the day, he's still best utilized as a four, as a, as a power forward. And if he can do these things as a power forward, he's a mismatch problem. And, you know, he creates a lot of problems for other teams. Um, if he's doing this at the three, not, not as much. So because of that, I think you answer your question by moving Keegan to the four, and then you can start your search for uh, a small forward or – a really tall guard. Like I had brought up the scenario of Paul George. You know what I'm saying? And the only reason I said that is because there's a lot of people who believe he's going to be, you know, he's going to be a free agent. He's not going to get a deal with the Clippers. And um, the, the Sixers are the betting favor right now. The Kings are second in that in that MGM, you know, whatever. Scenario. For Paul George? For Paul George. They're tied with one other team for second best odds. And I was trying to figure out how that would be. And I said, it would be, maybe you go to the Clippers and you try to work out a trade. You'd be like, he can, he can go to Philly for nothing. Or maybe you could do a sign and trade with us and where you wouldn't be getting anything. Maybe you get a Harrison Herter, Davion, you know, trade package. So you're getting something for, for this guy. Plus you can also, I think the reason why Paul might, you know, maybe he'd be interested in doing it is, that would be a scenario where he could get the extra year of money, right? Because he'd be signing with the Clippers on the sign and trade. So he gets that year as opposed to being a free agent. So it's stuff that we kicked around, but it all kind of stemmed from like Keon because you've got that at the two. Now you move Keegan to the four, Paul George, so to speak, at the three, and you're good as opposed to going into this offseason feeling like you have to look for a two and a four. Mm. I think Keon could be that too. No, it is. There's, there's, there's further conversations there. I think you're listening to. The, I don't think you're wrong. I just uh, there's a lot of talk about Malik Monk today from Demontis Sabonis. Yeah, yeah. Hammer's boy, Michael Scotto, Stilo yeah. and KC here uh, on KIFM West Sacramento, ninety-eight point five FM, KRX QHD two Sacramento, ESPN thirteen twenty. Always live on the free Odyssey app as we welcome in our Kings insider from the Insiders, uh, our man James Ham. James, let's start here. I've been meaning to ask this question to my partner all day, but we're all here together. So let's talk about it. Kings blow another 20-point lead last night. We can go back and forth about what that means and what that entails. And um, Oh, James can't hear us. Oh, no, that's good. James just gave me the universal sign for you stupid idiot. I don't hear you. So I'm, I'm just... I'm waiting for James to get his... James will get his uh, set up here. Something and then it knocked everything loose. It was like this huge buildup and then boom, nothing. No, yeah, the universal sign. Stop talking, idiot. Can't hear you. 
Uh, James, the Kings blow their 420 point lead of the season in, 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 in a game in which they lost. Who, who takes the brunt of the blame for that? Um, you know, like, look, I, I don't worry about 20 point blown losses like that. Like if it was 20 points, like the one that stands out is the sun's loss, right? Where you blew a 20 point lead in the fourth quarter in the final eight minutes of the game. And, and look how big that would be right now. Number one, you, you, you'd be tied with the suns. You'd still only be a game back at the Pelicans and you would already have the season series against the suns. So that one comes back as like, this haunting moment, right? Outside of that, like, I, I don't know. We were talking about this earlier, Kenny. Um, I mean, everyone saw what happened to the in the Clippers and Suns game last night, right? I mean, the Clippers were down, uh, were up 37 to 10 after the first quarter. And it ends up being a, a 13 point game, but they led by, I think that the total was 37 at one point and they held on to win by 13 and it, and it got to single digits that's just kind of the league, right? It's the league now because I think a lot of it's because of the three point shot, just, you know, it's, it's like the haymaker. And then once you hit one, sometimes it becomes infectious. Just like, I think the Kings face the same, the opposite, you know, you miss one, all of a sudden you miss four in a row. And uh, so I don't concern myself so much with that as much as I do with the fact that the Kings just look like, we see their ceiling right now. We saw it. And like, they're a good team, but right now without Malik, I'm just going to say Malik specifically, like Kevin Herter, you can throw in that mix too. But without Malik, this team just isn't deep enough to, to keep, to knock off all the best teams in the league. There are certain teams you can beat, but there are other teams, the Knicks, the Celtics, again, a, a team like OKC, that you just don't have the versatility in the offense. You don't have that second guy to to run into the key or to get things going on the offensive end, to get the the two-man game with going with Demonis Sabonis. Like, I, I mean, I, I want to blame Domas for going two of seven from the field, but I also know that, like, how many easy buckets does Malik Monk get him every single game? And now you make him a back-to-the-basket, have to go and, and go post-move after post-move against like a, a crazy long athletic Chet Holmgren. Like I, I wanted more for sure, but like if Malik Monk is there, there's a good chance that Demonis Sabonis doesn't have six turnovers. There's a good chance that you don't blow that lead. And, you know, I, I just kind of look at this. as It's kind of the way the team is built right now. You two, both of you piss me off sometimes. Oh, I just wait, make wait, sure you wait both just a that. damn just minute. Both what? Of you, both of you get on my nerves sometimes. I just want to make sure you guys know that. Teams lost 20 point leads more than any other team in the league. And either, yeah, it happens. It's more uh, than any team in the happens. league, is it? And lost? Yeah. That's the number we had. Okay. But what what is it? Like, how many times have they lost a 20 point lead? Four. Four. That's it? Four times they've lost? They've lost oh, okay. So, they're and, they're and what? Yeah. Okay. And second Twice place. In the is... last five days, James. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, look, I, at this point, like, really? I don't think they're good enough like that. It's harsh, but we see the ceiling. This was the the group of games you looked at. You thought, man, you got, we talked about that first set of eight games, right? And you got to go, you got to go seven and one. You got to go six and two. They don't do that. They go five and three. And I mean, that's not like a death blow, but realistically it's the one or the two games that you don't have right now that totally matter. I mean, if you didn't blow two of those games throughout the season, you're even if if the Colby Jones tip in goes in, they're with three games left in the season, they're down one game to the Pelicans for the six seed. That's a big deal. And so I don't know, like this, it's becoming like a game of inches, right? Like we're we're watching this play out in like a kind of a negative way, though. Like this team is just kind of run into a brick wall and trying to climb over that brick wall without your your second or third best player or maybe third best player is just nearly impossible. And, and again, I like Colby Jones, um, but you didn't play him all season and all of a sudden he's got to play meaningful minutes. It worked one game. It didn't work the second game. Um, there, He's, you know, that's kind of the situation that Mike Brown is in. Like, how do I find a way to steal 
six minutes here with somebody that, you know, that I can hide, but get through. And that's not a good way to live when you're, you're three games away from the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. It really is tough. What, what do you, um, what do you think of the 58 threes took last night? Like, what is your interpretation of that? Why they took so many? Is it good or bad? Like, what, what's your thoughts about that? Yeah, I mean, first of all, that's what OKC gave you. And and I think that that's, you know, it's probably not a great thing to just play into somebody's hands. Um, but, you know, I don't know. This team is kind of built that way. It's who they are. And I would like to have seen them get into the key and, and get more baskets at the rim and, you know, get more shot attempts at the rim and all that. But every time they fed Sabonis, he turned the ball over. Every time, like, he tried to make a move in the post, they sent two or three guys at him. This is, it's a, it's part of a larger issue that the Kings have right now is that their spacing has gone to hell in a handbasket because they lost two of their shooters and, and really their secondary, uh, playmaker, their, their secondary primary playmaker. Um, so, so I, I think the 58 three is, it's, it's more of like a symptom. Um, you know, I think we know what the problem is. The problem is that they just right now they can't space the floor and, and they're, they're being forced to play somebody else's game. And that's because of sort of the depth of, of what they have right now. And it's tough. What do you think about Keon Ellis's performance last night? Um, not necessarily the, the, the percentage in which he hit the threes. I think the thing that impressed me the most and maybe even to a certain degree caught me off guard a little bit hammer was his willingness to take all of those shots. That's one of the things we had a huge question mark about is when push came to shove, would, Keon be willing to shoot the ball 14 times, 15 times, 16 times, 17 times. And last night, and I believe last night was the first time he did that and he did it with very little hesitation. And I think it paid off for him. Unfortunately, some of the other guys weren't connecting uh, the way you'd want to, but what were your impressions of Keon Ellis last night? Yeah, I, I absolutely thought he was brilliant. It wasn't just the the scoring. So he finishes with a career high 26, but he had seven rebound, rebounds. He had five assists. He had three blocks. Like, he just gave you everything he had. And I, I've said this before. I really do believe that this is an aud audition for Keon Ellis for next season. And I, I don't know if it's an audition for him to be in the rotation or if it's an audition for him to be the starting shooting guard next to De'Aaron Fox. But if he's going to be a player who doesn't fear the shot, who takes that shot all the time, then, like, why not? Because everything else he gives you is really good. He's super active on the defensive end. He's super long. He gets a ton of deflections. He he gets a bunch of steals. Like he brings a really good energy to the court. He brings an energy right off the bounce, which is not something that the Kings are usually that they usually have with their starting lineup. Like he gives you a ton. And I don't know that it's going to work out that he's going to be the starter next year. Uh, the Kings could go back to Kevin Herter. They could also go out and shop for a different shooting guard uh, on free agency or, or through trade. Um, but at the same time, I kind of look at this as like, it's the one bright spot. And I, I do think like Chris Biederman said this earlier, like Keon Ellis is turning into the, the brightest spot of this season. Like when we get done with this season and we start looking at like the postmortem, you can circle Keon Ellis and say, man, you went from not only having, uh, a guy that you really didn't know what he had, uh, you know, how he could develop to a guy who's forced into uh, a role and, and finds a way to thrive. Now, in order for him to impact the game the way that, uh, that a Kevin Herter does or a Keegan Murray does, it can't just be one game like this. He has to keep shooting it like this for the next three games for sure. But if he gets an opportunity, if this somehow this team does make the playoffs, this is who he has to be. He has to establish himself as a shooter in the league, as a guy who will take eight threes or seven threes a game. Whenever he's open, he's taking them. And if he can do that, it will open the spacing back up. Because as of right now, teams are still like, okay, well, we're going to let you beat us. You know, I mean, they're just basically saying, if Harrison Barnes, you go ahead and shoot. We don't care at this point. You know, they're saying, even Trey Lyles, right? Go ahead, go ahead and shoot. We, we're going to leave you open. We're going to stop Fox and we're going to stop Sabonis. But if you have that type of shooter in your starting lineup that 
isn't the same type of shooter that Herter is. He isn't the same type of creator that that Herter is. But what he is is a player that you always have to track and you always have to leave a body with. And that's how you create that spacing. So I think it's a huge moment for him. And, and like hats off to him. Like that, like, you know how hard it is to walk into a game against OKC knowing that you've got to get a win in order to stay in the playoff chase and like all of this pressure and this this guy who went undrafted is out there like, okay, I got you. Eight three-pointers, eight threes, like holy cow. And then you have other players on this team who are going one for seven, one for eight, just disappearing in, in one of the biggest games the Kings have had. It shows you that this is a guy you probably want to ride with. You, you talk about like um, what the what the teams are doing to the Kings, kind of you know closing the lane up and saying, "Hey, if you beat us from three, we'll tip our hat." How do you combat that if you're the Kings? You know, I, I keep going to the fifty-eight threes, but a lot of people you you did a whole show about it. I know they were upset about fifty-eight three pointers last night. How do you combat that if you're if they're giving you wide open looks from three and they aren't necessarily going down? Like, how do you combat that if you're the Kings? Okay, well, like, let's just, like, look at the the four threes that they missed right in a row. Every single one of those were good shots. You'll take them. And not only that, but you have to take them. Like, you throw up a three. I think it was Davion shot the first one. Trey bounced. Lyles, two Davions, and a... And a Harrison Barnes. All of them. That's a goddamn... That's one <laughs> possession. That's, that's Wide incredible. open wide open you can't tell them to stop and i think what mike said in post game i think it probably should alarm some people but at the same time he's like hey I, i'm calling a timeout i'm taking guys out because they won't shoot it and he's not talking about at the rim he's like you get an open three shoot it if it i mean they could have shot more and and i think it's it's part of the design of the offense but at the same time like look the only guy who could get to the free throw line was harrison and he couldn't hit anything else. And then eventually, if a guy's not going to hit anything from the outside and you don't even have to defend him out there, you're just going to take three steps back and say, okay, come on in. Like, we'll have Chet waiting for you. And I know that's something else that people, like, why are they shooting all these free throws and why are the Kings shooting no free throws? Well, first of all, the Kings shot 58 threes. That's part of the reason why you didn't shoot nearly as many free throws as they did. But also... Chet does put the fear of God in, in a player going to the basket. Well, like the Chet Kings Holmgren, shot 26 free throws. It was a, it was a difference of five that yeah, what yeah. you're really talking about is De'Aaron versus SGA. That's where the issue lied. Didn't so much lie between the Kings and the thunder. It lied between the two guards where De'Aaron shot like 17 threes. I think it was and got a technical because when he did drive to the basket, the referees turned the other way and yep. those aren't on the last two minute report. Because no, they happened I, to the first 46. I agree, but I'd also tell you, like, the the Thunder are long, they're athletic, they're physical. They keep you away from the key. Their, their defense is very good. And then they also have this guy back there playing keeper. And so, like, it, that's why, I, I mean, I, I don't think it was the design to shoot 58, but I don't think Mike Brown had any problem with them shooting 50, 55, whatever it might have been. Um, it's just that at some point you wish that some of those guys would have hit some of those shots. You think this is the, we were speculating on this earlier because I, I, I think it sounds like we're all in agreement. This, losing Herder and Malik is just too much to overcome and expect them, you know, to be competitive against the better teams uh, in the league or, or, or maybe competitive is the wrong word because they certainly were last night, but expect them to win those games. Do you think this is the plan going forward? Like, hey, open three. Yep. Paint touch, open three. Paint touch. If we can get 58 60 in the next game, we're going to get 58 to 60 versus New Orleans. We're going to get 50 to 60 versus versus Phoenix. We'll, we'll do what we got to do. But do you think that's that's the idea? We've lost the shot creation of Malik Monk. Uh, they're, they're zeroing in on De'Aaron. I don't know what Domas is doing. You mentioned one of eight, one of seven. You didn't mention two of seven. Like, yeah. is that is that Mike? Is this, is this what we're looking at tomorrow night? Well, I'm just going to tell you that against a good defensive team, that's who they want to make you into. So, I mean, that's the problem. Like, you can only do so much. Like, you know, 
like we can talk about like in football terms, if you go up against a team that doesn't have a bunch of pass rushers, but have stacked their, their front seven with nothing but run stopping defensive linemen and defensive tackles and a bunch of linebackers that are widely known to just crush everybody who's running. You got to throw the ball. Don't you? I mean, it's kind of what it is. Like, you can't just expect to keep running into a brick wall and to have something work out for you. You got to play around it. And, you know, I would like to tell you that the Kings have a bunch of options here, but they don't, they don't have secondary and, and third options. Again, people forget that, that Kevin Herter is a very good creator as well. Like in the starting group, it's Fox as your primary creator. It's Domas as your offensive hub. And your secondary creator is not Harrison Barnes, who averages like one assist a game. And it's not Keegan Murray, who averages around one or two assists a game. It's Kevin Herter. So it's not just Monk. And and I think that, you know, while we all can look at what's happened with Herter this season and say he's had a, a really, really poor season, he's averaging 10 points a game. You can look at the other stats and he's still not that bad as a rebounder. He's still not that bad as an assist guy. And you do miss him. And if you look at last year's team, like Herter was your third leading scorer and Monk was like your fifth leading scorer. You get to this year, they're still two of your top six guys. You know, one of them is one of your top three guys. Like, I don't know. There are not a lot of teams in the league that can just recover like that. And I think the one team that we're seeing that that's been able to kind of stay the course, even though they had a, like a dramatic injury is Minnesota. And I'm really surprised because I didn't think Minnesota could score without Carl Anthony Towns. I don't love Towns as a player, but that doesn't change the fact that he averages like 23, 24 points a game. You take that away and everybody else kind of stepped up. I just don't think With the Kings respect, have that's one guy. Yeah, it's one guy. Lost one guy. And, and and like to go with that analogy a little bit more, it's, it's a little disingenuous because Cat is better than anybody, any of these two guys. But it's like if Minnesota lost Cat and Nas Reed. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. That right. Like? yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Nas but I would Reed's say sixth man of the year, clearly, because well, you know, Malik Monk doesn't. Just done. Malik, Malik just Monk done. doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. I, I would definitely say, mind. though, but look at how they're built besides that. Mike Connolly isn't a scorer anymore. And, and uh, Jade McDaniels averaging 10 points a game and Rudy Gobert is not a threat at all, but they were able to find guys that step into a role and start scoring. I like really the Kings have a, a this exposed their depth problem. And it was it, a one position where you had multiple guys that you didn't think it would expose it on, but there it is. Well, it was Nas. Nas was the guy who stepped in. Like, well, well, Cat averaging 22. Nas came in and averaged like 18. But the, the, but the thing is, we keep talking about scoring, scoring, scoring. And I mean, I mean, I mean, that's fair, but that's not Minnesota's thing. Not that they don't score. Obviously, it's top seed in the West, but I'm saying that's not how they make the. That's not how they eat. They eat on the defensive end. And is it fair? Not, not meant to be shade. Isn't Cat the worst defender of that group? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's just it's just you take a you take an offensive player that are by the way that has might have the face of the league on the team you take an offensive player off a team that eats on the defensive side of the ball versus taking two offensive guys off a team that survives off the offensive side of the ball like we were talking about this earlier Ham the, the Kings are playing significantly better on the defensive end they're not good enough in their current state to win games on the defensive end. You still need something from the offensive end, and unfortunately, uh, that's it. And that's sitting in some dope clothing on the on the sideline. No, I I I totally agree. I mean, that's the problem the Kings have. It's it's not even that you need another score. I don't even know, like fully, if Kevin Herter were healthy, and like you had last year's Kevin Herter, I still don't even know if that would help the Kings as much as. If you had another guy who was a pick and roll ball handler that could that can go and create, and that's what they're they're really missing. It's again, it's the three or four easy buckets that Demonis Sabonis gets every game, where Monk drops a, a pocket pass to him, hits him right in the gut, and he goes right through somebody and up to the rim because he's too strong and he's too close, and you just don't have that. And like Fox can only be out on the court so long. And you're not just asking Fox to be what Malik is. Malik is a scorer first, 
but he's also a guy who's averaging five assists a game. There's a big difference between a guy averaging 15 points and five assists and a guy who's averaging 26 and a half, 27 and five assists. The guy with this average in 26, 27, his role is to score first and only, and then dish out when he can. The other guy, it's to score and to dish out. And there's just a different nuance there. And not having both of them right now, it hurts. I mean, it does. I, I like again, Davion, I think, has played extremely well. He's just not that guy. He's not, he's not the assist guy. He's not the pocket pass guy. He's he can draw and he can kick, but he's not getting you that two-man game that we're we're so used to with Malik. And it's just it's really made the the Kings offense bland. And it's also allowed teams to just absolutely attack, attack Sabonis. He's the guy, in my opinion, that has really lost out in this whole Malik Monk injury outside of Monk not being there and, and the team overall. But it's Sabonis who just can't be himself because you don't have this other element, this other attack angle that's happening. To that point about uh, Fox, I remember last night I'm watching the, watching the game and, um, and I think it was late in the third quarter or whatever. It was later in the third quarter because Fox had gotten mad that a foul was called on him. He went back and, you know, didn't get a foul call, but he went to the bucket or whatever the case may be. And I was like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I was like, yeah, Fox, you know, we might need him to go the whole way, the rest of the way here. And then right when I say that, well, look, (laughs) right when I say that, Katie goes, yeah, and Fox hasn't been out at all in this third quarter. I'm like, God damn, like, this I'm gonna ask this guy to play the whole second half, lead the team in scoring, and create for everybody. Didn't what well, he? But and then he sat to start I the think, fourth yeah, he when sat. he got the technical foul. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. But at that time, there's like three, four minutes left. I'm like, yeah, Fox might need to go the rest of the way, not even knowing he's already played the entire yeah. third quarter, and it's just, it's just a lot on everybody. It's a, it's a lot of weight on everybody to step up their game, and that's what you ask. You know what I'm saying? People go down. Mm-hmm. You know that's that's what you ask. But uh, we talked about it as well ham where you know essentially this team has to be it feels like and especially with these at least these next two games i don't know about the last game but these next two games they got to be perfect they didn't play a horrible game last night but they weren't perfect and they lost yeah i get what you're saying and to the point with fox i mean you know fox played 44 minutes against the celtics on the second night of a back-to-back like hey man it's all hands on deck and and the goal to get to the playoffs it supersedes everything at this point. And I don't even know what they got left when they get to the playoffs. If they somehow do get there, like how much care. do they have? Yeah. How much do they have Let's left in the there. tank? Yeah. They're not no, good I, yeah. enough. See, that's the thing, James, like, and, and, and I'm, we're, we're going to talk about this when, when, when we get back. Cause I have feelings about them in a seven, eight spot in the plan. I have feelings about them over the course of the next two games. I have different feelings in a nine ten spot, so we'll 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 talk about all that. I want to m- mention our man Scooter nine one six real quick. He says, uh, "I absolutely hate that Domas has brought his lunch pail off season, even when he even when no one else did. He had one bad game, and we're going to pile on. That's a bad look. That's fine, Scooter. You can absolutely feel that way. We went over this earlier. I'll say it again for you. He can't. It's unfortunate, and you're a hundred percent right. It's not fair. He can't have a bad game right now. De'Aaron can't have a bad game." Domas can't have a bad game. And I think we learned last night, maybe Trey Lyles can't have, there might be two or three other guys that can't have a bad game. It sucks, a bad game. but it is the unfortunate nature of where the Sacramento Kings are in this season right now. We'll come back. A lot more to talk with James Ham about here on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. Yeah, I mean that's a pretty wild spin, Scout Recycle. That is a wild spin what? on your part. Yeah, that Scout is not Recycle even remotely close. That bro, you're you were just work. about to get lit up, that's, bro. That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. I think Scout's trolling. That's pretty funny. Yeah. I hope you're I hope you're joking there. I think he's joking. He has yeah. to be joking. He has to be. Yeah. I mean, look, if if nobody know the Kings do one thing in the first half. They 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 get a big lead. They play extremely well. Um, you know they they do everything they can do to get to to play well in the first half. They go into the locker room. The other team makes adjustments to take away whatever it is their one dimensional offense is doing at that time. And then when you get to the second half, it's it's a different game. 
and the kings don't have a different way to to attack i've lost my phone it's around me somewhere oh i'm gonna grab my phone hey i'm on the air <laughs> I got to keep KSFM pulled up. I forgot to edit the playlist, and we talked for a long time in the three o'clock hour. I just got to keep an eye on it, make sure everything goes to break on time. I got so caught up with fixing Tasha's show, I forgot to. Make I'll, sure I'll tell you more later. In good shape. All right, bye. <sighs> We're calling about your cars. I love when I get those voicemails. We're calling about well, your car in the warranty. My son calling to talk basketball, like, bro. But I had just sent him on my way home. There was a horrible accident on 80 right past Newcastle. Mm. Like, I drove by, there's a car upside down, and ambulance is pulling him out from underneath. Like, oh, geez. It wasn't a good scene at Goodness all Jesus. and so i was telling my son hey don't go that way home you got to go auburn Folsom." so he decides to call me i'm like okay maybe he doesn't know where he's going no he wanted to talk basketball no it's all cool <laughs> runs in the family yeah he's like you're on he break can, right now aren't you and I'm he, like, he, can, <laughs> he, can, he can fill in for you on uh he can be be ham and ham on thursday that's right um oh he's a he's a basketball junkie No, it was not Rasheed Rice in, in Sacramento. Zabo. <laughs> Man, that was crazy. <laughs> it's funny, my my youngest could care less. He likes to go to a game here and there, but he could care less about basketball. Does Mrs. Ham like basketball? Yeah. Yeah, she she does. I mean, at this point, I think after this many years, she just kind of tolerates it. But yeah, she was not happy with them last night when they lost. She's like, how did they lose? And I'm like, it's complicated. <laughs> it's complicated. Yeah, it's a good team. Right. It's a good team that all they do is attack, 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 attack the middle of your defense and and get every single call known to man. So, um, the pug is doing okay, Sal. The corgi is still being a problem. That's crazy. They talk about trading up for JJ McCarthy. They didn't see that coming. The guy they didn't let throw in the national championship, right? <laughs> Highlights look good. Yeah, hey, hell yeah. That was a hell of a dime across the middle. Highlights look good. I watched this guy all year. He's he's a good quarterback. He's never nobody I thought you'd trade up for. I thought he'd be like a third round QB. Hmm. Eric Bischoff. AEW was falling off a fucking cliff. Oh, if anyone knows it, it's him. <laughs> well, he's like, oh, I've seen this before. <laughs> I've seen this before. Are we going to do pocket watching? John Poles has a good question there. No, no. Wait, are we? No. Oh. No, Je No. James has been, uh, 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 Kenny has been trying to push this. I'm trying to help Jesse James now. versus Jesse pocket watching. Like, James uh, needs, we, he needs a game. You know, look, at our, look at our guy in here. He's not well. <laughs> He's not okay. The stupid camera out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> Did he get beat earlier? Yeah. Oh yeah. no. It's <laughs> not going well. Hey man. It's not going well. He needs well. games. James needs games as well. You know what I'm no, saying? You're trying to legitimize your victories when the final boss wasn't around. They I think I've played three I'm times left. and I've beat you all three times. I definitely haven't played three times. You only played one. I time. have two on, on record. No, I believe he I believe we have two on record with James. Yeah. At least. But I, I, to be fair, we're back, James. I don't factor those into the loss total. If you'd like me to. Hey, 
I'm 11 and 12. I know that much. I'm not going to let anybody tell me that. You're 9 and 12. <laughs> but also, if you want to factor in all of these exhibition games, we can. 11 and 12. So when the season ends, not, 11 do we 12. get a playoffs? Is just whoever has the best record at the end of the season is the champ. No, can I just, can I also English point out, can I also about? point out, yeah, you're, so you're only counting the wins. You're not counting the loss. It's like one loss. So it'd be like 11 and 13. Cheating years. again. Right Cheating what? again. What? What? The integrity. Right the great right game that right I love you have ruined. I don't know when I'm losing again. Jesse going to Austin 97 with the camera, though, during the commercial <laughs> break was an all-time moment. Get that camera out of my face. Jesse's not doing well. Send your thoughts and prayers uh, at Jay Tapia. <laughs> what, what's the number? 03? Yeah, underscore 03. Yeah. 03. Well, oh, there we go. Uh, uh, Broke-ass Baron Corbin out here living in Vegas now. That's me. That, that is absolutely you. Of course, when was the last time we saw Baron Corbin? Wow. And he's on NXT right now, so you just say, wait. You just wait. Something, didn't he do something over the weekend? He introduced or he said something. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't he put Brown Breaker over yesterday. <laughs> James, your thoughts on Baron Corbin and Brown Breaker? <laughs> I have no idea who either of those people are. That's okay. That's, That's right. Okay. Um, we said this before the break. Do you have anything to, uh, uh, about Domas, the, the two of seven, and 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 um, you know the 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 remark about Domas was completely fair. Like he has busted his ass all year. The sixty-one, you know, game double double streak came to an end last night. And it, it, you know, he's had bad games during the streak. This was just clearly the worst. This was the one where it really feels like he is not in a groove. Uh, but it also felt like he he was looking to distribute. He wasn't trying to rack up his assist total. He was doing what he always does. He was trying to make the best the best play for when he was out there on the floor. But there are a a, a, a few, and I'm not going to say like you know, there's a dozen, but there were a handful of plays, Hammer, where it felt like. Eh, Moss probably could have worked right there. You know, he, he, he probably could have done something in the black, could have, could have done something in the post, could have done something in the paint, but he looked to go elsewhere. They did swarm him. Anytime that ball came off the rim, they were around Domas as much as they were around the ball. Um, but it was, it was, uh, it was a tough night for Domas. Yeah. To be honest with you, I, I think he got to the point where the six turnovers got in his head. And so every time he did try to make that move, uh, most of those turnovers did not come on passes. It's not like he was throwing the ball into the third row. Uh, every time he went to make a move, everybody is swiping down on the ball. And so, like, look, I, I think it was it was probably, like, of the, the six he had, maybe one or two were offensive fouls, and, like, three or four were him just turning the ball over, trying to make a move to get to the basket. So those don't count as shot attempts, but they were probably – headed towards field goal attempts and like, look, he, he knows he's got to be better. He he's got to be as frustrated as anyone. Um, I kind of think that losing the streak might be a good thing, like not having that hanging out there. And let's be honest. If, if the Kings hit their shots, Domas would have had like, like 23 assists, not five. Like there were so many wide open threes that they missed. And at some point, you know, you really can't blame him for whatever happened. Uh, you know, again, he's got to be better in that situation. He's got to score against Chet. He's got to just push him underneath the basket like he has so many other times. He's got to be nastier on the offensive end. The, the assist is one thing. He only has so much control over that. He's got to be yeah. nastier on the offensive end. Yeah, I agree. But again, if if you turn the ball over so many times when you're trying to make that move, eventually you start to feel like you're hurting your team mm -hmm. that way. Fair enough. And so I get it. Fair enough. Somebody called in earlier and talked about how the Kings – as a whole may look at the fact that, um, you know, they don't seem to get the same type of respect, the same type of whistle, and maybe it keeps them from attacking the basket uh, just free of mind. You know what I mean? And if that's the case, I mean, they, they can't let that dictate their game. They've, they've got to do, they've got to make the best play every time, regardless of whether or not they think they're, is a whistle coming if they get fouled. But do you see that from this team? Do you think that's um, possibly accurate, that the fact that they don't feel like they're going to get the call if they go to the basket affects their shot selection a little bit? Yeah, I, I do. I think that that's probably why you saw, what was it, 17, 18 three-point attempts from Fox last night, 17. He had 12 field goal attempts inside of 
three point line. But at the same time, I, I think I think for Fox, like Fox doesn't want to play the game. And I get it, right? Like Kyle's word, the foul grifter, right? I, I think it's like a perfect term. And, you know, the ultimate foul grifter was probably Kevin Martin. He probably started this trend and then it passed to James Harden and then it just keeps passing to Trey Young and now it's passing to Shea Gilgis Alexander. If you're De'Aaron Fox, so I think it's okay to not want to do that, to not want to be that guy, to throw your head back every time and 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 yell and scream and act like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just got fouled. Luka Doncic, same thing. Like there there is something that you can say to about that. Like, okay, that it's okay to not be that guy. But you also can't complain when you go inside and you get hit and you don't make a demonstrative move to show that you got hit. And you can't just get a, like angry at the officials all the time about the fact that you don't get calls. And so I would like to have seen Fox not settle for like two or three of those extra threes that he took and have taken it to the to the rim, um, you know, pulled up in the mid range, done something different. Uh, but again, it's the heat of the moment and all of the weight is on him. You know, he, it's not like, it's not like he can't look at a box score while he's sitting there or, or see, uh, like the scoreboard where it shows that, you know, Harrison Barnes is one of eight and that, that Demonis Sabonis is two of seven. I mean, we got the craziest stat I I'd ever seen in that game was we got to two minutes left in the half and Keegan Murray hit a three. That was the first bucket. That wasn't from De'Aaron Fox, Keon Ellis, or Davion Mitchell. The first bucket. The the rest of the dudes at that point were 0 for 14. So what have you what are you supposed to do if you're De'Aaron Fox? And and again, I know he gets angry and he gets frustrated with the officials. I'm actually going to say this, like uh, you know, I, I like Mike, um, but at some point, Mike needs. We got it. No, oh, Mike. Mike did that. You can't convince me otherwise. That Mike Brown cut that off, bro. Wow, that is a that is a a a a, hand, a very concerned, a very very concerned James Ham here on the screen. Mike Brown, whatever, whatever. Mike Brown point, needs to rip the head off an of, of an official. Just unload and scream and yell and go nuts. And, and if you get tossed, you get tossed. Let Jordy Fernandez coach out the game. At least get one tech. But man. I Mike get has that. to, and, and a lot of times, like I, I agree with that. Like, but what does that really do? It's the game. It's the game that they don't want to play. Is it too you late? Know? Well, I, I don't know. Within a game, if you yell and scream at an official and lose it, and either get tossed or get come really close to it, defending your guys, there, there is a point where like an official might do something different. You know, mm -hmm. we see it all the time. We see makeup calls all the time. Like mm -hmm. we can't act like these things don't happen. Right. So I, I know you. people like they, when I say stuff about the officials, it's like, man, I, I don't want to see LeBron James in the playoffs in a play in, in a one game play in. I don't. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to see mm -hmm. Steph Curry because Steph Curry is going to hit every magical shot that you ever believe that no one could hit. It's like the worst game of horse you've ever played. And then when he doesn't hit that shot, he's going to get every foul call. And then the same with LeBron. LeBron's either going to run you over and dunk on you the final five minutes of the game on every single possession, or he's going to stand at the free throw line and shoot the ball. That's the game. And the Kings aren't going to get that. It doesn't matter what they do. And it whether, whether they were shooting 16 threes or they were shooting 58, they're still not going to get the same whistle. And so, uh, you know, I, I hate to like, be brutally honest about it, but that the NBA is a star driven league. They love their stars. They love their big cities. Okay. You got to beat a team. And, you know, again, with, with regards to like, like Shay is now he's a deer and Fox of last season. Like he's a media darling. He's the baby of, of everyone's super excited to either. He's going to win the MVP or he's going to come in second place, you know? And, and again, like, I don't think his game is all that appealing to watch. It's just, just one herky jerky move after another, trying to get to the free throw line. Aaron and Fox is he good? Is yeah, he's. Last year. I do not think oh. Aaron Fox was a media darling at all last year. Oh, they love Shea. They love Shea for 
since the trade, at least uh, since the trade. Yeah, they've always looked. That's been there. Yeah, but man, he was a all everyone talked about was him being the clutch player of the year. They yeah, almost begrudgingly. Like, they, 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 they did it because oh, Jerry West award, yeah. uh, whatever it was. Good for him. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. not, I mean, to your point, James, though, like, yeah, I, I, it's commendable that Fox wants to play a stand up game. But my question, Billy, what, what has that gotten you? And gotten you anywhere? You, then we'll use it in this context as well. The game is the game. And you're going to have to fall. You're going to have to, Accentuate contact. I hate it. I hate it all. Is that like, gonna work though? Like Domas bleeds. But Domas don't, 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 like, don't fall. Domas don't fall. I, I got I mean a little tongue in cheek, but I'm serious. Like you gotta start hitting the deck. You gotta man. start falling. You gotta jump into people, fall on the ground, and do all this. One thing that they do that I hate that never works, Harrison does it and so uh Fox does it, is they'll go to the hole and they'll get hit on the arm. They'll lose the ball and they'll like throw their arms up mm-hmm. and keep running. Mm-hmm. And they almost never get the call. Mm-hmm. If you get hit on the arm and you go flailing and fall, you know who does it a little bit, who kind of gets to the line a little bit when he does it is Malik. Malik will play the game a little bit and yeah. he'll go falling and he'll go fumbling into the, the first row and all this other stuff. What you what they're doing now and the way they go, but I see the distinct difference between how they try to be stand up you know, when they get hit and all this other stuff and other people, and it hasn't gotten you anywhere. You know what I mean? It's getting it's getting you out free throwed 20 to four in a game. Got to try something else because it's not like you're not getting fouled. You are getting fouled. You are getting hit. But just looking at them and the occasional yell for a technical, that's not, it's not getting you the points. It's not getting you the, them FTAs. Well, that and I would tell you that Fox is very snarky. So when he does say something, number one, he uses profanity without any question. And number two, it's got a it's got a an edge to it. Like he he likes to cut deep. Like that's who he is. He's sarcastic and he's got a he's he's cocky and he's got a very, very like snark to him. So I understand getting technicals. Um, but I also think, you know, he, it's kind of it's kind of like Jerry Maguire like the Rod Tidwell moment where like he won't dance. He, he he like, that's what they have to do. They have to figure out, they have to have that moment where they have to like put on an act a little bit. And it's lame that that's part of the game. But again, that's how, that's how he got paid because he got up and he danced. It's, it's part of the game. It's, it's what makes Luca Luca and James Harden and, and SGA. No one is looking around at the, uh, at the MVP voting and saying, Oh, I wonder how did he get all of those points per game? They're not all they're looking at is the points per game. They're not looking at the fact that he got to the free throw line so many more times than anyone else. And it's, it's part of the, the part of the NBA game, part of the NBA culture. And if you don't want to play it, that's fine, but just don't complain when you don't, when you don't get the calls. Hammer, what's the most like likely Dump that. I'm going to try that again. Hey, James Ham, what's the most likely path to the playoffs in your mind for the Sacramento Kings? Um, I mean, just like, first of all, you win three games and you, you have a chance to still climb to two up to six. Um, I think the most likely is to find a way to win two out of three and pray that the Suns lose two out of three and tie the Suns for the seventh and eighth, beat the Suns to make it into the play-in, uh, to to make it into the seventh spot. Mm. Uh, I don't know that you want, again, if if you lose the seven-eight game, it's going to be really tough. It's going to be really tough to play a nine-ten game. And, and again, like, uh, normally I would say the Kings would have a really good shot because I think they're a much better team than the Lakers. And I think that, you know, they're a better team than the Warriors, but again, we're talking about a team that that's had your number and who has so much more experience and everything else. The difference is the Kings don't have Malik. So unless they yeah. somehow have Malik and I, and I know that Chris Biederman hinted at it uh, on today's show that, you know, maybe Malik thinks he can make it back for the plan. Um, and that, that would be tremendous. Uh, but I also like Malik needs to do what's best for him. 
um, he's like a free agent. Pretty, like we went from four weeks to a, what a week and a half, two weeks. It's been I think two weeks. It's been a while. I, I can't remember what date he got hurt. But... You're talking two and you're half talking half next week. Weeks. You're talking Tuesday, right? Or potentially Wednesday? Yeah. And then potentially Thursday and then potentially Friday. Like, well, he he got hurt in the first Dallas game, and the first Dallas game was it was on a Friday. So this Friday will be two weeks, and the game will be Wednesday, two two, Tuesday. Or Wednesday. Oh, the the twenty ninth is the game he got hurt. I thought he got hurt in the first Dallas game. No, the second one that Friday. It was the Friday night one because it was. The worst Friday injury. To, yeah, it was the worst Friday ever. Yeah, that's back. Oh, yeah, I, gotcha, I, gotcha. I don't, I don't like the Kings tomorrow. I don't like the Kings Friday. Probably don't even like the Kings Sunday. But in a one-off at seven or eight, I can see that. I can see them advancing that way. Once you get into nine and ten and having to win multiple playoff games, in like in a row, that's where I struggle. That's where I like that. Like James, you said, well, the Kings are better than the Warriors. I don't think that they are. This Kings, mm, I don't yeah. think they're better than the Warriors. I don't think without they're Malik, than... the Kings might be the worst team in the bottom four right now of 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 the playing picture because of the circumstances. But if you just have a half and a half like you had last night, you mean three quarters instead of two? Yeah, you might be able to walk away with a win in that game, or Instead of 20 of 58, it's 17 of 40, 30. Yeah, I can see them winning that game. Okay, so I'm with you. I, I do think you're probably right that the Kings are probably, of the group, they're probably the worst team. But I'd also tell you that like the Warriors have a better defensive rating than the Kings uh, since the All-Star break. But outside of that, the Kings are a much better defensive team than almost any one of those teams. And and so like that's where when the game slows down and it's playoffs and the breaks are longer and De'Aaron Fox doesn't have to go out there and play every, you know, he can play 40 minutes, but it's 40 minutes over, you know, two hours and something, not an hour and 45 something that that does matter. Right. So um, like, I, I don't know, I, I think that they've got a shot. I'm not going to put this team to bed just yet. I just kind of have that feeling that, you know, we, we know what their ceiling is. That's what I said earlier. Like we just all of a sudden, like the harsh reality that we know what their ceiling is and it's not very good. Like we didn't know what it was. We, we could think we knew what it was, but at this point without Malik, you can kind of see like, Oh, that's not, that's not great. I mean, I, again, I could see them make the playoffs and I could either easily see them getting swept or, Four one, uh, four two, like that's that's kind of where they're at right now because of injury. Yeah, and that's that's the X factor. I mean, I thought I thought this team um, was going to be good enough to get to the six, um, you know, a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. and uh, before Malik went down, that's how I felt about him. But it's it's just tough to. They score. were good enough to get to the six that. 5:30 yesterday. <laughs> hey, it, they're still good enough to get to the six somehow. I mean, that's that's still yeah. sitting there. Yeah. I mean, they, the if all I, these teams tie. The thing I keep coming coming back to, man, is it's just too tough for these these guys to score. You know, they they hit 23s last night. Keon Ellis with a, a career game. Um, you know, even Harrison at least put up some stats. Like it wasn't like he was killing, but he at least he wasn't hitting, but he was able to get to the foul line. All this mm -hmm. other stuff. I know Sabonis didn't play well, but they they had to scratch and claw to get 105. Like it's just okay. it's just too tough for them to score right now. And that's that's what I just can't get past. Okay, yeah, but I I'm gonna like counter with this. It's the same team that built a 20 point lead against Oklahoma City Thunder in the first half. I mean, it is. It's the same team that did the same like they played really well against the Knicks in the first half. Now the fact that they can't make the adjustment because they're they literally, it's like, hey, it's, it's us eight dudes. And what else, like, what else can we do here? I mean, God bless Mike for giving Colby Jones a shot or, or, you know, if he goes back to Chris Duarte or he, he lets Sasha Vazenkov play a couple of minutes here and there, but like, he's so limited in what he can do to change things up at this point. You just have to be better at what you do. And, and you have to be better at what you do without two of your, of your top, 
six rotations, seven rotation guys, and it's not easy. Remember when Luke Walton was coaching, we were petrified at the third quarter? <laughs> kind of feels like that's back right now. Uh, I'm I'm not there yet. I'm not there. I'm not there yet. Well, good for you. <laughs> uh, petrified of the whole game. Well, that's fair enough. That's 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 fair enough. That's that's a shoot too. We were nervous over everything that was going on yesterday in the first couple of minutes of that game. Uh, then the lead got to 15, and we're both like, "Crap, keep it here. Don't let it get much higher. Just keep it right. Nice solid little 14, 15. Nothing to see here. Just keep it moving." Uh, but then they they didn't listen. They got to 20. Oh, stubborn kings. Damn it! Just kept scoring. And then we hmm. up. um well. Basketball tomorrow. That's right. Basketball Friday. I imagine the tone will be quite different Friday if things go uh, our way uh, tomorrow night against the New Orleans Pelicans. At some point, they're going to beat the Pelicans. <laughs> I'm telling you, I don't know if it's tomorrow. I don't know if it's the plan. At some point, they're going to beat the New Orleans Pelicans. The Pelicans might clinch tomorrow if they win. Yeah. Sounds mm. right. Where would uh, let me to, to take a? To, I don't know the. I don't know the makeup of the the, the Pelican Sun situation, so I'll 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 fall back a little bit, but I'd, I'd give them Pelicans would be feeling really good feeling really if they walk out of the Golden really One Center uh, yeah. with a victory, and then they have the Golden State Warriors, I think, on the yeah, second Warriors, night of a back to back, and then Lakers, and it's Suns Clippers again tonight. Suns Clippers again tonight. All right, Kings will move to seven. Is that right, or are they half game back? No, they're a full game back. They're full game. They back. can't move yes. to. They can't move to seven tonight. Can't, Kings can't move anywhere. Can't, they can't go anywhere tonight. That's right. They can't go anywhere tonight. Um, we will well, actually. Let me double check. Is that true? Okay, yeah. The Lakers don't play tonight. Um, we'll be back here tomorrow uh, to get you ready for more Kings basketball, uh, beginning at ten a.m. with the Insiders here on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN thirteen twenty. Vamos Clippers into it, Dome. Hmm. Yeah, I think worst case scenario, you'd really like to at least play the Suns at home. Yeah, doesn't even matter. Yeah. I mean, yes. But boy, that would make the loss thing more. <laughs> uh, Russell Hunt, tomorrow we have Jake Gaden. Hey. Jake in the house. Jake. Yeah. Hey, I thought uh, Biederman was really good today. Shout out to Chris Biederman. Yeah, yeah I, he doesn't a whole lot, but I what I did it was it was good stuff. Yeah, he hasn't uh he hasn't done radio. That was his first yeah. time? Well, I mean he does hits on well, the radio, but yeah, that's what I mean. like, he's yeah, never been in for a whole segment. Yeah. So uh All right, so we're gonna shut down. We got some work to do on the other stations. We will see you guys tomorrow. Uh Jay Cliff, I don't know if you're still in here, bro, but uh happy birthday. Uh, to your son, uh, appreciate all the love you show us, Absolutely. Uh, and happy 18th. Definitely uh, don't look like you should have an 18th. It definitely does not. Christ. Definitely does not. But uh, salute Jay Cliff that that moisturizer you're using is working, brother. Well done. Uh, He's got we'll the butters. <laughs>